podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. Every day I'm hustling, 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 hustling. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm boxingvoice.com. All the guys want, I want what Mayweather got, I want what Mayweather got. You didn't bust your ass like Mayweather. I was trying to fight every fight. I sacrificed a lot. To get to where I got to. What, what, what do you bring to the team? Let's get this on. Let's do it. Where's well, like this? It's, 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 no, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, wait, wait. All right, that's it. Hold on. Every, Bernard, everybody calm down. Man, you know how these bitches is in the sport. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style at all. I sacrificed a lot. Boxingwoods.com To get to where I got to. Boxingwoods.com What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome Back to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. I am your host, Nesta Gibbs. Solo Dolo, Scarface, no Manolo, but I should be having a co-host any moment. But we're going to be here discussing today a two-part topic, man. We're going to be talking about Mauricio Suleiman and the fact that he wants Pitbull Cruz and Devin Haney. So I guess he's counting, uh, you know, Ryan Garcia right on out. And we're going to be talking about the breaking news that, you know, we got last night, according to our sources, that indicated that uh, Morell and Hot Rod, I can't even pronounce his name, you know how that goes, but, you know, indicated to us that Morell was going to be taking on Hot Rod, moving up to 175. So we're going to be talking about that matchup as well. Uh, it's you know, about nine days out, maybe eight days out for Devin Haney and uh, Ryan Garcia. And obviously, as Haney is a topic of conversation uh, because of Mauricio Suleiman, feel free to call in and welcome you to know, Blog Talk discuss, Radio. Uh, the potential matchup between he and Ryan Garcia. So, uh, looks like I think Ringwalk just to start your show now. And, uh, Top of the morning, top of the morning. Your show will go live in five on, seconds. Bro? Four, three, three two, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. That was, been supposed to happen, but hey. What's going yeah, on, good, my bro? Good. Top of the morning. What's up, what's up? Yeah, man, nah. Um, did you hear the news last night or what? About I mean, Morel? the news is... Morel the uh, Hot Rod? Yeah, okay, that's not what I was expecting, but yes, I did hear. Yeah. He I broke mean, the news. It I was like not he, expecting uh, that either. Chasing him. Chasing him, right? Is that the word? I'm pretty sure that's the word he used. Chasing him to 175. Yeah. I mean, but, it, it looks that way, no? Uh, hey, uh, you know, sure. I mean, is there going to be an opportunity? For? Yeah. I mean, shit, for anything that indicate him staying at 75, like, obviously, uh, you know, we got Benavidez fighting for the interim title. You know, there's been indication, at least, of, of him fighting the winner of... Yeah, uh, no, that's the same thing, bro. Better be than Bivol, so that's no, all I'm saying. No, it's the same thing, bro. You know that uh, Mendoza, excuse me, um, Morel is aligned with the WBA and Mendoza, so he's getting an opportunity at a... Uh, interim title as well is what I'm being told. But just for the WBA version of it. Hey, man, that's no problem. I mean, I think uh, so that's probably better than nothing, right? And better than whatever he was going to do at... Uh, 
and let's be real for the time being exactly like this is a better name than uh I mean, I ain't gonna front. I would have loved the Mobili fight, but I think though that fight is hard because of just who Morel is. I mean, didn't he just get a fight announced too? Yeah, I'm probably I'm pretty sure they're keeping him active. I mean, I just seen Stephen Butler's already back, bro. It's like Eye of the Tiger don't play no games, you know. They could have a co promoter or no co promoter. They're gonna keep their guys active one way or another. Uh so yeah, man, I, I wouldn't put it past, you know, M Billy having a fight announced. Uh, I'm just saying that I don't think M. Billy's team would have given Morell a shot, and that's probably the only other, you know, sexy fight to make at 68. So I can see why I move up. You know, it's it's if David's moving up and Canelo ain't fighting nobody, what's really left? You know, I, I get it. Plan is there. You can possibly wait on a Jermall Charlo, but you know, no indications that he's doing any better. We haven't even seen anything from him. So, yeah, I mean, not a bad move uh, on behalf of uh, Team Durrell, for sure. You said Team Durrell. I meant or Morel. Morel. Morel, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know, you're all good. Just making sure, champ. But, yeah, man, look, uh, I think activity is a big thing. I know we talk about it on all the time. Like, oh, would you rather he fight two guys that ain't that good? Or, or three guys that ain't that good, or two big, you know, like we always go through that shit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I feel like him being active is 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 important because, truth be told, outside of that, uh, outside of the armory, I don't think I don't even think he could sell in another venue in Minneapolis. So you know, he got to get his profile up and, and and you know get those accolades up. And my opinion. No? Ah, for sure. I seen Bum Gardner in the gym. She's nothing announced oh, yes, for her sir. yet. I seen her in top ranks, Jim. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, nah, you know they working on the fight. It's looking like Gelato. You yeah. know, obviously they won the purse bid, so it's looking like July. Um, very interesting business, bro. You know, I'm I'm fortunate that she's given me the privilege and the trust, obviously, to be able to learn from her and, and, and kind of just, you know. What do you mean? Yeah, kind of just learn. Uh, I mean, shit, I feel that she should have been in the ring or at least had to sit announced. I just think, like, I don't know. For me, I've just seen the way shit's played out and continues to play out. It's kind of... Kind of eye opening, if I'm being honest. In what way? You're not really telling us anything. You know what played out which way, and what's eye opening about? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh, you know, like the promoter obviously didn't win the purse bid. Cool. Um, not the first time that that happens, though. No, 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 not the first time, but like. And granted, you know, this is like my first time kind of like... It is an undisputed like, champ, though, so I guess that is odd, you know? Yeah, and and then, uh, you know, for me at least, like there's nothing that tells me this, but like from for me, from the out, I'm like, man, it seems like somebody doesn't want this fight to happen, you know? And I just say that because there's been like, cool, we got a venue. Perfect. We got the date. Perfect. Venue comes back. Hey, wait, so wait, there's an opponent? Of course, bro. It's Delphine Persoon. It's a mandatory. Persoon is a common opponent with who? I feel like I've heard that Katie name. Katie Taylor. That that was Katie Taylor's. Uh, to me, that was her first real challenge. That was, uh, man, I want to say on the AJ Ruiz undercard. Uh, you know, very competitive, very tough fight. A lot of action. Um, but yeah, man, so hopefully July, hopefully July, uh, and hopefully that announcement is out soon. Uh, you know, she's in the gym, she's working, uh, you know, for me, I just see it uh, as a lot of fine tuning, obviously being an undisputed world champ, very talented, but, uh, you know, just little adjustments, just small adjustments adding to her game. Um, I think being around... Who do you see her working with more? 
like out of the trainers. Yeah, who she's gravitating to more. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, BH oversee everything, but I would say probably Ramon. That's the Pat man? Yeah. Damn, I was hoping it would have been BDB. Uh, I would, that probably would have been like that second answer. I feel like, like after Ramon, it, it probably is BDB. Um, you know, Ramon just make himself available. So it's like, and then and then BDB is always with champs. So it's like sometimes Dev would be in LA. So BDB would be there, Ramona stay back type shit. Or, uh, but no, definitely BDB though, for sure. Actually, it's funny you say that. Um, you know, BDB always trying to teach somebody. So she had a friend with her in the gym, you know, just chilling. And BDB like, I could teach you the jab. <laughs> Next thing you know, her friend, you know, throwing a jab. You feel me? So, yeah, no, definitely BDB for sure. Uh, so yeah, man, what's your thoughts on Hot Rod as an opponent for Morel? Just told you, I think it's a good, you know, something to stay active. You feel me? Mm. I don't think it's like a huge name, but probably as good or better than the names he would have got right now at sixty eight. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, like, that ain't, you feel me? I mean, it's better than anything he got. Wouldn't it be the best name on his resume? I mean, if it is, that's saying a lot, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I'm not big on the guy. I think he has a lot of, a lot of. A lot of uh, room to grow, and I think this one of those fights that let him grow. For sure, for sure. Um, you know, uh, did you watch his Hot last Rod's fight? Biggest win. Uh, you know what I'm it would have to be Barrera, right? The last fight. I guess because so, of the that name. Was, that was literally that was literally his last fight. Yeah, I mean, he unofficially, unofficially. No, I'm talking about for Hot Rod. Yes. But unofficially, okay, yeah. I would say unofficially, his biggest win is uh, Marcus Brown to most people. Okay. Probably because of the time in their careers. Okay, okay. Look, I mean, definitely, I think the guy that has the biggest wins and fights on his res that will be on Morel's resume. But, you know, Morel got to go in and do his thing. He got to impress. Uh I mean, Hot Rod ain't no Vosdick. You know, Vosdick had uh, Adonis Stevenson in a, you know, in a, in a medical coma, bro. Like, that shit, that shit was frightening to a lot of us. And we know Vosdick is a threat. Now, obviously, you know, better be had him out of the ring for a while. He's been back active. He's been back fighting. But, you know, Vosdick, former world champ, I think, uh, you know, definitely two, three steps above what hot rod is that being no, said you know, another opportunity for morale another opportunity you know for experience and you know just to showcase his skill i know there's been indication it seems like he's gonna headline his own show in minneapolis yep june is uh yeah. what they saying and uh yeah that's that man uh, so you think they could have done better? I think that the only person that they could slide in, and I'm not sure, but I feel like Frank Warren has already come out and put out something saying Yard is not a promotional free agent. But yesterday it was revealed that Yard was a free agent. Whether or not he knew if his contract was up properly or not, I would have to watch that interview with Frank that I didn't have the time to consume. That being said, Yard is still the biggest name, I think. Like, does Vazdek have more uh, accolades than Yard? Yeah, but I think if either of those two men would have announced that fight, uh, they would have been received better. Like, if David was fighting Yard, or if David was fighting Yard, because I mean, they a both named name David. For sure.
I don't I don't know. I don't know that it's something that just like moves the needle. I mean, sure, it's a British. Um sure it's your guy, you know, but uh I don't know, man. I, last like it's sad to say, but like the most recent thing I remember with your or like not even fight, but just anything boxing related is somebody clowning him and your mans and having them like all in all these memes and missing and help me find. And I'm like, damn, is they cool? I don't even know who the fuck it was, to be honest with you. But I'm like, damn, is they cool? Like, what's up with all these memes? Why they going in so hard on, on, on your boy? Mm. Like, they literally have him... Picture, I think it's because of the Buazzi on a milk cart, and I seen that the other day. Yeah. I think it's because of the Buazzi thing. You know, that's a fight that they wanted over there domestically for a while, and uh, you so know, it was Buazzi doing that. I don't know. Uh, I think it's because of that. I just feel like okay, that fight only matters over there. Like you know, what I'm saying I'm not about to be like, oh shit, yo Buazzi. Like it matters over there. It just straight up matters over there. Like, and I don't even know why they care. Like. Why they hounding y'all with that garbage? And I hate to be that disrespectful, but like, my dude, I, 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 I done put my life on the line. I done tried to fight for belts. You, on the other hand, ain't fought for a belt yet. You built your entire name off me. Like, they been talking about Buati y'all for like, legit, let me try not to exaggerate. Tim Boski, if you listening, what? Fuck it. I'm going I'm to have to say the biggest number. I think five, seven years. Seven, five to seven years, bro. I was going to say four to five. <laughs> like, who the fuck gives a fuck about Buatsi and y'all? Not us. Not us. Buatsi might as well be a tap dancer the way he sidesteps. When did he even, step up? Even I don't give a fuck there about you go. Buatsi. And you're the king of Essex. And I'm the king of Essex. And even I, was just gonna I don't say, give a damn. I was just going to say, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I think it's the people. Like, if you have the quality fight, um, you know, people might care, right? Be, and, and I only say that because, I, if I'm not mistaken, more Americans watch the Premier League in Europe then they watch Major League Soccer based here in the United States of America. Like, yeah, it's local. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, teams I can go watch. It's teams I can, you know, uh, literally be a fan of representing my city, but the talent's over there. Level so of it's like, yeah, level of competition. People much rather, at least in this country, and I don't blame them, they much rather watch the Premier League than watch MLS. So can I say something about Buatzi in particular? Now, again, that's, I think you started it, but um, Yard is the one. Yeah, you give him credit. He fought two killers, two known killers. He fought Kovalev, no matter what you think about him, and he fought uh, Baturbiev. Let me say it eloquently, right? I mean, and he's he's garnered the, the cachet, especially in the Baturbiev fight, because Anthony Yard is like, you know what I'm saying? Um, he was a limited fighter, basically mostly based on his athleticism. And if we want to say he performed the best for what it's worth, um, you know, I, I don't like what's happening with, with his situation. I don't know if, if, you know, he's getting bad advisement or if Frank Warren is being petty. Again, I don't know. But what I do know is I would like to see him in other opportunities against other uh, light heavyweights or if he's going to cruiser. I am so not interested in Buatzi because Buatzi reeled me in with standing next to Virgil, Virgil Hunter. Mm -hmm. Stand next to Virgil Hunter. Virgil is so affable. He's such a God-fearing man, such a quiet giant. You sit back and you say, well, all right, we seen what Virgil did with this guy. You know what he's going to do. And it, that just wasn't it. Buatzi was the project that never came to fruition because I forgot after what fight it was, Virgil clearly said the day he said Buatzi wasn't ready, Buatzi ain't never been ready. He ain't never looked ready and he ain't never behaved ready. And never mind, he got into a slug fest with one of his close friends. It was a great bout, but um, there was too much, 
there was too much. Um, Aziz brought more of the fire to that fight because Aziz was the one trying to get named like shit. If my homeboy ain't get all the way up yet, let me take his spot. That's why Aziz was even offered the opportunity. So Buatsi, talk about being a late bloomer. I'm not sure if we'll ever see the flower that he is supposed to be. Mm. So what are your thoughts on uh, David Morrell? Uh, it, it, you know, it was uh, we broke the news yesterday that you know his fight is done with Hot Rod for June. I like that fight. We saw Hot Rod most recently on, um, I think you had mentioned it. We saw most recently on Showbox yeah. and someone said, yo, what about David Morrell? And, and um, I think it's an intriguing fight, number one, because there's still so many questions about Morrell. You know, hate him or love him, whether you think, um, you know, he's the man out in Minneapolis at the Armory, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 2000 strong. He's the man over there. You know, all them Cubans. In, yo, it's more Liberians in Minneapolis than it is Cubans. I know that for a fact. But let me continue on because I still think that Morrell is a great fighter. Um, I just don't know what level he's at. And an unknown, like, remember how uh, Diego Pacheco just had this fight against Sean McCallum and it was kind of like an unknown took you to task? I'm expecting Hot Rod um, to kind of take Morrell to task a bit just to give him some difficulty, to give him a different look. Hot Rod is a pretty tall guy. He can, you know, use his jab and use that to his advantage. But I don't know if he is, um, I don't want to say levels, but I don't know because I think he's had some pretty good competition in his own right. If, if, I haven't looked at his box rec, but um, – I don't know. I don't want to say he's not on Morrell's level because we don't know Morrell, where Morrell is yet, but I do think it's a good fight. I think it's a really good fight. Now, is this on PBC by any chance, or, or is Morrell... Yeah, no, it would be It would okay. be on PBC. Remember that Hot Rod is with ProBox, so, you know, he would be graduating to a PBC fight, and that's kind of their model, right? Uh, they don't. Let's not guys forget, back. though, Ness, I was... I know, I know that you and I never got to... Break the news, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Because uh, it didn't happen. But late last year, there were very serious talks. And I'm pretty sure you and I got this confirmed that, uh, you know, there was consideration of Bivol fighting Hot Rod. Yeah. Of, of it potentially being like, you know, a very small pay-per-view, something to keep them active. You know, obviously, Turkey Alashik stepped in, put Bivol on a day of reckoning, like, six fights below the main event and you know that never took place but hot rod has been mentioned for some of these big fights some of these uh either contending or current world champions things like that so you know it's not a bad fight i feel like you really like the fight huh Nuss? um don't mind it certainly don't mind it uh and uh again you know he got to do something to 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 remain busy uh, and 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 continue building, right? Like he just don't have that name, bro. He got he got no name on his resume to make people care. Look at what you said. Two things: graduation. That's the most appropriate word. He is graduating, and well, hot rod, the, the, hot rod's graduating to, you know, because he's on pro box. Don't get me wrong; it's, he's been on that level with Better Beef and Marcus Brown, but Morell is the one that has a residency on that level you know so he's in he's he's inviting hot rod to his dance no and, and i mean i i still like the word graduation because you know not many remember you can graduate at middle school you graduate from a master's degree you graduate from medical so it's different levels and i think you know with the experience that he's had before coming into this fight makes him even more of a lie dog that's why i mentioned I couldn't remember who, you know, was on his resume or who he had previously faced, but he does bring some experience to the table um, that could, you know, give Morrell some difficulty. Because, again, there's so many things about Morrell I still need to know. Now, one thing about it, a guy like Hot Rod and these quote-unquote unknowns, even though he's known, um, he's got nothing to lose, really. He's got nothing to lose because worst-case scenario is, you know, you go back to Showbox. And you're still a you know a contender if you work yourself up or work yourself through it. But um, I I really do like this fight. And another reason why I probably didn't even say it, which I should have led with. 
who else wants to fight David Morrell? Not not out of fear. I'm just saying whether they don't think it's enough money, whether they don't well, who else is fighting him. Well, I heard he getting paid well. Like well, like close to I'm gonna put it like this. Um Danny, what Johnny Rice wanted to fight Jared. Was it half a mil? I thought he said no less than two fifty. I could have, I could have swore he started a bit higher than that, but I mean, perhaps. But I'm hearing, you know, I'm that's hearing, it. I'm hearing. Regardless, I, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, like, yeah, that was a while ago, bro. My bad, I can't. Because obviously, a quarter million is a vast difference. You yeah, know, so it I'm was, hearing it, it I'm, was it was for sure six figures and well into the six figures, not like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm hearing he, he is almost a half a mil. But this is what I'm saying. A little that's, bit, that's uh, not a. Lo- I mean, uh, I, I don't want to use the word little bit because you know I know the exact number, but I don't, I'm trying not to put it out there. But I'm, you know what I'm for saying? Sure. It's definitely uh, depending who you are. It's almost a half a mil. Depending who you are, is not a half a mil. Is the best I could do. You know what I'm saying? But it's in that range. But even with the business tactics, even if you say he walked in there and he said, yo, I'm starting at a half a mil. Well, I'm talking about, remember, I'm talking about Hot Rod's purse. Okay. Because, you know, this all started from you saying no one wants to fight him. Sure. So he getting paid well to fight him. Because probably they probably got wow. a little bit of extra yeah. bag. Yeah, look, now now wow. it clicked, right? Now it clicked. It ain't the A side that's making the, f- you know, half a mil. He nah, probably nah, is. Yeah, he probably bro, is. I was but... about to say. I was about to say. Nah, bro. He probably get it. Like before you said anything, I was gonna say seven fifty, eight fifty. I'm thinking that's what Morell getting, and you telling us he getting paid good. You saying Hot Rod getting half a mil or close to? Close to half a mil for sure. So, so Hot Rod is going to be one of those ones. I don't know what his language of origin is, but he's going to be one of the ones praising Al Heyman. Um, I guess I would be. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know. We've heard heady, hella, hella shit that uh, Al ain't around, and that Eddie. I, I'm saying Eddie. Um, Louis is the man right now. I mean, I, we've heard that since the pandemic, though, right? That Al been in Ohio with his mother. Hey, yo. Breaking news. Go ahead. Go ahead and play with me. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, no. I, that's why I was asking you, but don't say shit. That's why I'm, at, oh. I'm asking you, but. Let's do it, bro. bro. I could get no, no, them, no. I could get them a deal. Bro, 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 shut up. You, bro, you, you nobody know, say a lot. Nobody know what no, no, I'm no. talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. But then, then you screen share messages on accident. That is true. That is <laughs> nah, true. Nah, I can't you know, even nah, I don't be screen nah, sharing. I don't and know then, what the I fuck mean, we have. I mean, you know how Nes be. You like, we gonna bring I mean in full time. I'm like, bro, shut up. I ain't even set him to offer. Like, wait, hold on. Like, don't y'all you know I me, mean? don't I you know me. Mean? Daddy, and you'd be like, well, since the cat's out the bag anyway, we want to know live on air. Right, right, right. How much should we pay? I mean, like, come on, Chip. Come on, Chip. I'm just saying I can help with that. Hey, <laughs> no, nah, no, nah. bro. I mean, I wouldn't have texted you if I didn't think you could help with that. I like that's the that reason would be for it. Dope. Nah, bro, hold on. And and wait till you get this message. I, I, I mean, we need a group chat so you could be a part of this shit. Oh, because this shit actually pretty fire. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, do you want to actually get to the topic, Ness? Well, I sent it to you because it was a Spanish article with our course, good friend Mauricio Suleiman, who's going to be on the show at 12 o'clock. So we do need a, a huge influx of callers to get us all the way till 12 p.m. Eastern where Mauricio can uh, join. Wow. 
and to help us do that, we know you in the chat. We know you're watching. Give us a thumbs up. Send a super chat. Keep the machine moving. Because I know many of you want to front, confront Mauricio. You have questions to ask him. Right. He's always a, an open book or as, or as transparent as he allows himself to be. So definitely be sure to um, go to your memberships and drop your questions. Damn, yes, sir. Go crazy. drop them questions. Go uh, support. Um, definitely go check out my brother King on me, Hayes and Channel. All the great things he's doing over there. Yeah, I got um, the letter to Clarissa Shields. You know, I didn't take up a whole episode, but if you guys are interested, go ahead and check me out on the championship rounds right here on YouTube, right where you're watching us now. Um, I just had to address a few things. Also talking about this week's huge unification bout. Um, Ellie Scaltney versus um, the Russian chick. I don't want to butcher her name, but she's undefeated. She's 18. Excuse me. She's French. I don't know why I'm thinking Russian. I'm watching too much Rocky. But yeah, she's French. She's 18 and 0 undefeated. That is for uh, unified IBF and WBO titles. And um, yeah, you also got Rhiannon Dixon fighting against Karen Elizabeth Carbajal out of Argentina. Carbajal is only once defeated by Katie Taylor. And uh, this is a vacant uh, 135 um, belt that, that Taylor vacated. So um, you want to see how the 135 landscape in women's boxing is going to play out. You got Caroline Dubois. You got Beaches Ferreira. You got Rhiannon Dixon. Lots of great fighters. So that's what's coming up this weekend. You'll know about all that if you tune into the championship rounds. I'm assuming some of y'all got to update your app on Discord. Uh, like I said, when I went to my app store, there was an update for Discord. Uh, because I'm texting someone personally, it's not working for you. There's people in Discord telling me it's working for them. Uh, I, we all need to go to our app store, Marketplace, if you got an Android. Just check if Discord has an update. There was an update, not only for my phone, but also for my desktop app. So you guys should probably do the same. Um, and I'm having the number checked. If anybody wants to call in and see is, the, is this new number working, feel free. 563-999-3427. That's what happens when you stop using your number. They switch it up on you. But... Danny, if you want to take it away with the Mauricio Suleiman quotes, who will be having on in around 12 o'clock? Yeah, bro. Uh, let me just pull up the article since you want the quotes. I was just going to give you all the cliff notes. You could go with that. So uh, the article in question is a ESPN in Spanish article. Uh, from Mac Resendez, titled Mauricio Suleiman Espera que se concrete pelea Pitbull versus Haney. Uh, Mauricio Suleiman is expecting a concrete fight between Pitbull and Haney. As you read the article, he says, uh, the article does start off by saying, or Mauricio saying, he isn't a promoter. He is not a promoter. Um, that's literally the first quote that they have of his in the article. Um, he then continues by saying that he would love the fight very much. Um, that Pitbull has obviously, uh, you know, accomplished a lot now since becoming world champion and that he's demonstrated to the public, uh, you know, how great of a fighter he is. And that he had also done it against Javante Davis. He said, we at the WBC ordered last year for Pitbull and Haney to take place for the lightweight title. Um, he's accorded. So the quote says, uh, once conversations got started between the platforms and the promotion, we quickly realized that that fight couldn't happen. But at this point, I would love to see Pitbull fight Haney, uh, Mauricio reiterated. Unfortunately, we're not the promoters. We have that limit 
against us pretty much saying there's only so much that we as a sanctioning body can, can do. do yeah because they've they've mandated this fight last year and uh or was it two years ago danny and, and it was and, two years ago and pitbull didn't want it then they mandated pitbull and and isa i mean and and, and shakur and shakur for the final eliminator he didn't want that either then pitbull got the opportunity to fight shakur for the vacant title when Devin vacated and moved up, um, and he chose to not do that also, right? But obviously, you know, he is Mexican. Um, and that belt is a Mexican sanction in body, and I think that's really where this stems from. They've been trying to get him to be a WBC champ for a while now. Uh, yeah, and 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 uh, right here... Um, it says Pitbull. Um, okay. Plata. Is that gold or is that silver? Plata or plomo. So it's... it's, it's no, uh, plata. No, I know, I know. I know. I'm going with the phrase from from uh, from uh, Narcos. But plata or plomo. So it's uh, silver or lead. So plata... Okay. Actually, I'll plata is money. Plata is money for well, Mexicans. No, no, no. Silver. 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 Oh, shit. And yeah, anyway, yeah. and anyway, yeah. and anyway, he's Colombian, not Mexican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, no, it's funny you say that because I just this past weekend saw Griselda mm, for the first time in my life. right? It was great. It was phenomenal. For sure. And, uh, you know, just like you're saying, I was picking up, you know, obviously... On the show, it's Colombians and Cubans yes. for the most part. So, you know, I picked up on a lot of things that I wasn't familiar with. And things like, oh, shit, I've heard Ness say that. Yeah. You feel me? So, uh, but not nah, just like says, that. Like, I bet you that's quick. a Colombian double idiom because I'm telling you, plata is money. Is money. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, and what I was looking for, and which is the literal term, is silver. But the only reason bring that up is because in here it says uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, Mauricio. Mauricio said Pitbull got in the ring as the WBC silver champ, uh, and he has demonstrated always his his big interest and dream into becoming world champ of that green belt. Um, I am very proud of what he has accomplished for the country of Mexico and for the sport of boxing. Uh, and honestly, that's it. All right. Well, everything uh, else, everything else in the article is uh, about Sergei Boachuk. But yeah, so pretty much an interview Mauricio conducted. Um, you know, they asked him about Pitbull and, you know, he made it clear that he would like not just to make the fight between Pitbull and Devin happen, but, you know, get the opportunity for Pitbull Cruz to fight for that Mexican world title. And when I hear that, in some instances, I hear my, my initial instinct is, as you know, I want to say, oh, Pitbull duck, Pitbull duck. But I got to reel it back in and say there were some strategic movements because, um, no, I don't uh, uh, like the fact that he turned down the Devin fight, nor do I like the fact that he turned down the Shakur fight. But obviously, he probably figured to himself he does not want to fight against pure boxers. So I get it. Um, now, if he had fought lesser can't, he opposition... Can't do, he can't do what he do. He can't... Man, we can't do what he do. <laughs> can't do what he do. He can't. So, he need, no, he and need somebody that. gonna be right there to be hit. So, you know... So let me ask you. Is it, I'm just is it trying fair? to say it ain't just Tank. Everybody, That's what I was going to say. And I said that before. No one fights a dude they think they're going to lose to. You want to feel like I can do some things against what I'm seeing. So, again, I just I just wanted to say that because I don't want it to just be Tank ducking uh, 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 if nobody's saying Pitbull ducking because I think that that was good strategic moving a fighter along. And so if I got to say that against Pitbull, you know, go ahead, Ness. Let me get to this call. I hate to cut you, but I'm pretty sure this baby joker and my man always got to go to work. He be sending his counters to get in before he go in. And 
And he's using the phone lines, which is open, except the number was changed. That's what we get for not using it. But if you want to use the phone line, the number to call, 563-999-3427. Hey, what up? What's up, bro? Good morning, fellas. How you guys doing? Street. Top of the morning, Joker. Yo, so, so Morel and, uh, Morel and Hot Rod, bro, this dude is really chasing David up there then. He said that last year, right? That uh, didn't matter where David went, he was gonna follow. So he it seems like he really wants to fight, but we're all too focused on uh, David punking Canelo, and we're not looking at the other David punking the other David. I mean, he gets the same uh, attention Boots get. Bucket. He gets the same attention Boots get. Like we that? wanted to see Crawford Boots, but we wanted to see Earl Boots more. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, for sure. Excuse me, excuse me. I mean, I met no, Earl Crawford more. Yeah, but you know, I, I didn't think this dude was gonna follow him up there at all. And uh, this fight is this good, like uh, uh, King was saying, bro. It's it's, it's a, to me, it's a step up for him to do. Uh, Hot Rod has fought decent competition, bro. I mean, call me crazy, and I think Hot Rod's a at this moment is a, a better opposition than Vosdick is. You know, both Davids are having yeah. the first seventy-five. No, 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 for me. sure. Hot Rod is a for sure, for sure. Hold on, let me let me call you crazy because that's what you are. Because if you didn't watch Hot Rod's last fight, he got hit with a lot of right hands from a forty-four or forty-year-old no, yeah, yeah, Barrera. He did, he did, but, so the fact that you're gonna say that, Barrera, that this is a better opponent, you, that's but like Barrera's, bananas. Barrera's better than the last three guys that Vosdick has fought all put together. No, for he sure. Put all them three guys and Barrera beats the dog shit out of them. For sure. The same night. But th so does Vosdick, though, right? He he beats the last three guys Vosdick mm. for. I don't think Vosdick beats Hot Rod. I don't. I don't ha, okay. David. Okay. <laughs> hey, bro, I Yo, don't, I don't you, know. you, no, I love I it. Like you don't play. The, you don't play. You hate went, David, and you gonna no, make sure you let back, us know. I went back and watched the Vosdick fight with Better Beef and the other ones, and man, he looks good. The last three fights, he don't look good, bro. There's an interview he did like five, six months ago where he said uh, he was officially retired when when after the Better Beef fight. He said I wasn't doing no boxing. All I was doing was calisthenics and yoga. I literally left boxing. Uh, he came back and he—it looks like he left boxing. Dude is slow. Uh, the opposition hasn't been great, and that's why I think uh, fucking uh, Hot Rod is a better opponent at 75 than Vosdick at this moment. Even though one dude is up there, you know he's ranked higher, but still, that shit don't matter sometimes, bro. Hey Ness, uh, the the Mauricio shit, bro. Is, is it still from the last time? Yeah, you yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I seen your question. Okay, no, I seen it there. I got it pulled up, ready for him as soon as he comes. Saludos desde Guanajuato, Mauricio. Mi pregunta. Oh, yeah, you did read it last time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, the David question. Guanajuato, you know, Guanajuato. The last, time, the last time you didn't read my shit, bro. Wait, and wait, so we asked him it. this already? Which one? That question from Guanajuato. We asked... We didn't ask him that yet because I didn't. It doesn't say checked off. No, no, you, you know, yeah, I had called in. And I just told you. I, I hope you can read Spanish because uh, you know how sometimes you you struggle. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. read it, but Mauricio never showed up to the show. Yeah, no, he should I be on today to at twelve. Your mom or daughter. But... Yeah, he's gonna yeah. be here at twelve, All so right, we just need more callers. Have a good one, fellas. All right. So this you, is the official okay. line, right? So I can save the fucking number. This is the line for now, yeah. I don't know why it changed, bro. Right, that was pretty dude. weird. It's fucking whack. But uh, I'm not in their good dude. graces anymore because I left them, so they ain't going to be doing me Talking no favors. Talking about blog talk? Yeah. They ain't going to be doing me no favors because of that. That's foul how they did that. That number was an institution. For real. That's crazy. And, 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 and it's still my same account. Like... I log in with the same login. Like that, the fact that they took my number is crazy to me. That's like moving out of chick spot, and then she got some 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 of her dirty underwear in your in your drawer. Like, yeah, that was my drawer. It's crazy, bro. I'm like, whoa, Suleiman, what up? Suleiman. Oh, yo, that shit was crazy. Speaking of Suleiman. So I see. So obviously I was with Alicia yesterday, and I'm like, they still haven't talked about Ismail Baruto. I'm like, yo, Baruto should fight Pitbull. 
He should fight no, Pitbull. Right, right no, now. wait, wait, Suleiman, you want? I'm, I got the answer to your question. I got the answer to your question. So I see Alicia yesterday, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, champ, we got this longtime loyal listener and caller that calls into the show, and he called in and he said, hey, how you doing? He said, it is my belief, and there's a lot of rumors on the internet that Alicia Bumgarner and Carmel Moten could be related. So, uh, you know, we, we did a deep dive and uh, turns out they are not related, Suleiman. But, uh, you know, you did open her mind to at least explore the possibility. You know, she made a few calls, <laughs> you know, to trade. <laughs> she made a few calls? Bro, you, seen, a few calls. you seen there's a short about it. She made a call to, to, yeah, no, no, there's a short it sits, sits all over the internet. Suleiman is practically viral, you know. Did she repost like, it? They're 12 years apart. He said they're 12 years apart. I love Suleiman. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that there, there were similarities. They were both to my tangents, so I brought to I brought it to the experts. Both they, fight at 130, they fight too. At the, yeah, they both fight at 130. Yeah. They both ferocious punters. Yeah, but the guy skin. beat um, um, Cuba, bro. Anthony Cuba. He beat Anthony Cuba. That, that, that was incredible, bro. I can't believe he beat Anthony Cuba like that. And herself, she's undisputed, bro. So she, she got all the belts. She even got the IBO. All you know what I'm saying? Them. So, you know, she got all no, of them. I don't, I don't think, the, I don't think she has the IBO anymore, but... Yeah, I mean, she, does, she got bro. the original, though, when, like when she won it. She, what, you, what you mean? She just threw it yeah, away? Yeah. No, I'm pretty I, sure. I, I wanna, I'm pretty sure the IBO, wanna, like... Stripped her and well, I don't know. But, uh, the IBO, I, don't, I don't even know what they do, but I, I I just saw someone else we know fight for that same belt. Uh -huh. Unless it was like an interim and they just pretended. Yeah, like now nah, I don't before. think I don't think my boys at the IBO do interims. Well, okay, I don't yeah, so so yeah, they probably. There's rare occasions though. Know, so we did have them on. But guys, so that's not the Yo, oh, thanks. yeah, That's yeah, yeah. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it on the show today. I'm going to show everybody that they ain't see it because, you know, it's, it's your voice, but we also made a, a short That's out That's very important. Yeah. No, because a lot of people, casuals, they see the resemblance and they build it up and they, they fight in the same division. They, they you know, they have They the should probably classes. walk each other out or so do some shit together, maybe. Yeah. Keep building And the kid is Spar. They should spar. What? The, the family... Yeah. Family nah, don't do that shit, bro. I don't want Carmel to hurt her. No, nah, Carmel could work. Yeah, man. So, yo, but besides that, Carmel don't know how to work, man. You crazy? No, Carmel don't know how to work. You crazy? Yeah, Carmel don't know how to work. That's not, but it's Will Paruso should get that fight with Pitbull next, man. He gotta prove himself to fight the big dogs. Like no, that, that is like that is the fight that should happen because that's the belt that Barroso is uh, highly ranked in and uh, deserves that title shot. That, that's the that's the fight I want to see. It's more about Uso first with Isaac Cruz, so he could show and prove. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh finish business, taking care of. Then they, they then he's gonna start calling up, calling out the big boys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thanks a lot for having me on, and be, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you Appreciate for doing the research. And uh, big shout out to Alicia Bumgarner and Cormel Bone. Thank you. Let's go, right. champ. Salute to Suleiman. He's the uh, Henry Louis Gates finding your roots DNA analysis expert of TBV. Damn, bro. 25 floors up. Look, y'all thought he was in Spanish? Got him. Um, this is the short, though. We're going to go ahead and play it. This is uh, El Suleiman. This is the short created by El Suleiman. Moulton and Alicia Bumba are related somewhat. Yeah. They're related. They even fight in the same weight class. They look alike. They like they um she nah. when she was debating with uh with the lady with the big late super middleweight Clarissa Shields and people people whoa, actually whoa, whoa. got pause the that, pictures and they comparing Camille Moulton and, and her. They say when, when she was debate pause that did he just say when she was debating with the woman with the big lips? Big Is legs. that what he just said? I oh, thought he said big legs. legs. Okay. Let me see. Let me okay. rewind. How, we can't rewind. I think we got to go up and then back down. This is the future of boxing. Whoa, whoa, Keyshawn whoa, steps back whoa, and gets whoa, into a Philly whoa, shell whoa, stance. Whoa. 
I hear a rumor that that Coma, Mo, Coma Moulton and Alicia Bamba are related somewhere. Yeah. They're related. They even fight in the same weight class. They look alike. They like they um she nah. when she was debating with uh with the lady with the big lady super middleweight Clarissa Shields and people people actually got the pictures and they comparing Camille Moulton and her. They say they're relatives or something. They actually the same weight class. They fight at one thirty. They hold throw on, a lot of punches. They, they're very aggressive. I'm just I'm just saying. I know I know why she's got covered up saying oh you know maybe you're in on it. You're covering it up. You're gonna say they're not related. But that's why a lot of people are observing. They they look alike. They even have the same style. The kid is a little, might be a little younger. But they, 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 is that is? Can you uh, elaborate on that, Nesta? What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, no, we're gonna add. I wish the editor would have put my name, Nesta, with like N E S T A. Hey, I don't know what the edit. I don't know what's going on, bro. But it's like you got to look at the back. Back end, bro, it literally seems like everything I upload just automatically is like ineligible. Yeah, everything. Yeah, just go through the review. They do a manual and they'll check it out themselves and I and 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 you know decide if it's uh bad. unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. uh, I ain't forget Suleiman, so I got five for you to come back. I just need a little clarification, champ. What what you mean by that? Shout out. Shout out to Jemmy on the one he did with Britney Goosen. That shit was fuego. Did y'all see it? I love it. Nah. Yo, yo, it's amazing to have a dude that knows the sport. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how you get the fu- the fire. Like, he... I'm, we hey. are blessed. We are blessed to have him, for sure. Shout out to Carrie G. Smash that fucking alarm. That's gifted five memberships. Shout out to Carrie G. Kerry G, you are B3. the man. As always, Average remember... Average boxing fan. Uh, uh, Zaki what? Omar, Dreaming of Vegas, and GCOM Triple A. Welcome as TBV members. Shout out to y'all. Salute. Um, and obviously, shout out to Kerry G for, you know, the very nice donation. Um, World-class hero. Yo, I just want to say shout out to all the beautiful women around the world. All the beautiful women around the world who don't like being told no, who don't like being told you cannot do this. So to all my pretty ladies uh, participating in the wannabe challenge, I appreciate y'all because y'all been blessing the shit out my timeline. I woke up um, feeling just lovely, right? So... Just want to say a huge shout out to uh, Glow and Meg, right, for, for creating the challenge and all the beautiful women for participating in the challenge. I greatly appreciate y'all. Like, I truly do. It has boosted morale. Um, hey, crazy. love to see it. Don't ever let nobody tell you you don't have enough. You have enough, sis. So, Donnie. Right, like, right. Crazy. Like, for whoever said they didn't, let me be the one to tell you. Little booties and do indeed do matter. You feel me? So don't be don't be falling for those narratives like, oh, you ain't thick enough. Yes, you are. Danny's trying to get a sponsorship from Dr. Miami. I hope. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be like Ryan. You get a yeah, you get a BBL. Ryan funny, <laughs> bro. The other day he said, hey, uh, hopefully and don't forget- real quick. Ho- no, I was just going to say, hopefully uh, that helps get us higher than 6% women on the show, right? Yeah, Ryan, Ryan. We start funny. giving out BBLs, they're going to come running. I got Khaled on the check-in. Don't forget the number to check in on if you want to use your cell phone or your landline is 563-999-3427. What up? Yo, how y'all doing? Chilling. Man, hey, uh, with the with the Devin and the Isaac Cruz, I don't really think that Cruz should take that fight yet. You know, coming off, you know, first and first I heard that he want to go back down to one thirty five because he said he feels stronger down there. But stylistically, just the matchup wise, I don't think that's good of him, and I don't think we need to rush to like put him in more losses. He already got a couple of them. So right now he a headline dude. Uh, we try to build him up, man. Just put him in there with like a 
What's my man that knocked out? Uh, he got the knockout on the last car. He owed. He fought Roly. Um, Barroso. A uh, Barroso. Yeah, a uh, Barroso. You fight Barroso. Continue to build him up, build his name up, build his stock up. And then maybe oh, later losing on, that. two to three fights. It ain't no more building after Barroso. He gonna lose that. <laughs> he talking about yeah, man. Keep oh, building, damn. keep 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 stock. Wait, he so you picking Barroso? You picking Barroso yeah, over losing? Isaac? On mothers, on mothers, I'm picking You're Barroso. Damn. Mothers. Okay. You crazy? There's no way Barroso okay. gonna handle that yeah. pressure. No way. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Barroso so. Barroso yeah, ain't no so. fucking Devin that. Haney that could get on his toes and jab and pivot. No, no, no. I ain't saying yeah. he no Devin. Yeah. I just don't think that uh, Pitbull going to be able to take that punch either. But what the fuck? Who you think going to land first, Danny? I mean, shit. I ain't never seen. I ain't never seen Pitbull get no first round KO. Not, not against anybody oh, I knew. Oh man, so. I love that fight. Give me that I fight. Mean, I mean, but the dude. Yeah, I got him, Barroso like, that was a good for sure. Opposition. Give me the old head. I trust my OG. That's fair. Well, I mean, okay, but uh, yeah. So I mean, we and then and then if he, I if he wins, I got him winning. Then that that just put him in line for the for the for the tank rematch. And if he keep winning, then I think we would be more inclined to want to see the rematch. You know, I, I don't think we'll shit on it as much because if he a world champ, form, like world champion, he didn't got some fights. He didn't he didn't headline some some like cards, maybe some main events. Maybe he do another undercard on the on the pay per view. It'll just set up the rematch more. And if you don't get the rematch, then two to three fights later. I wouldn't mind seeing him in like his unification bout. I would go more with the um, IBF champion, which is the Puerto Rican killer versus the Devin Haney. Because Devin Haney would just jab the shit out of his low ass, and it just, it's just like, nah, we don't want to. He going, he just, yeah. But if you put him in there with the Puerto Rican killer, Puerto Rico versus Mexico, stylistically, two guys that like the pressure going to be right in front of each other. That's a better matchup. So I like that, bro. But that's my call. I'm glad we got this number back, bro. It's up. Now it's up. Now I'm on this bitch. All right, bro. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, let me Lock get to all boys. this. I got Modern King Boxing. And he says, $2. Peace, Boxing Gods and Goddesses. Three fire emoji. Salute to you. Buenos dias. Uh, we got Baby Joker. He says, for their first 75, Hot Rod is better opposition than Vazdek. Uh, prolific, welcome to the members' <laughs> prospect level. Whoa, uh, you that's do, debatable. You do got to be on that champ level in order to ask Mauricio a question, but remember, the post is out. You're going to have to scroll. It's been out for four weeks. Let me see. Right now, I only see seven people took advantage. I haven't refreshed. But these are all old. These are all four weeks ago they dropped these. So salute to all the members. Same thing on Patreon. I've pinned it to the top. And we got about one, two, three, four, five. Five of you guys there. Uh, but Mauricio's coming on today. We got about two hours for that interview. And I'm setting up some other interviews in between that just to kill time with some uh, other big guests uh, once I can, uh, you know, get that 100% um, – confirm will announce and make a respective post for them as well uh hey, Ness, yep, we got flashback. prolific quick flashback oh, go ahead. Of Suleiman. sorry guys tbv appreciate uh-oh he froze up champy he got a call yeah. it's oh reason Van there we go up. there we go guess who it is yo start over bro you froze yeah, up start over you froze up oh, my bad he froze Listen. up Appreciation night, TBV. This is what this community will do for you. We saw one of our brothers gift some of the other community guys, you know what I'm saying, memberships. I'm saying through this community, I had the opportunity to meet Mauricio Suleiman and shake his hand, smoking some loud with the community out in New York City in front of the uh, building of the Appreciation Night. Mauricio Suleiman jumps out of the van, gracious, uh, uh, affable, inviting, you know what I'm saying, came upstairs and kicked it with everybody. So... Um, listen, when we, when we tell you guys about these memberships and the super chats, yo, it's to make this community that much better. Nah, I love nah, I mean, ev everybody got to see it, uh, with our most recent su uh, super chat, our most recent appreciation night here in Las Vegas. 
you know, Mauricio pulled up then and, you know, lots of people got to meet him, take pictures. Which is crazy because uh, everybody got things to say about him. And when he pulled up, he was like, bro, the biggest guest we could have got. I you swear. Like Alpo. Bro, I swear. People was like, oh, damn, Marie. Trying to line up for pictures and conversation. And I'm like, okay. He's very polarizing. Nah, People he have is, a lot bro. of things to say about him until they meet him. Then when you meet him, you're like, man, I don't really got nothing back. Because everything you want to say, you can ask him. And he's and he not gonna like sit there and give you an answer. The issue is you might not love the answer, but he's gonna give you his answer. Yo, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all a fire story about Mauricio before we move on. Uh Canelo Khan weigh in, they do it outside of the T-Mobile. Um, this is before my media days, so I'm there kicking it. I'm off the hen dog. Me and my boy Jakari Hicks, I'll never forget. Uh, shout out to my boy Jakari. And uh, Mauricio's there, and it's not long after his father passed away, right? It's right after Jose's passing, and uh, Mauricio has a, a special pin on his suit um, in memory of his father. Mind you, he don't know who I am. I ain't never been on the boxing voice. I'm just a boxing fan. And uh, I see him there. I knew his father just passed. I give him my condolences. He takes the pin off of his suit jacket and he puts it on my shirt. And, uh, you know, I just gained a different level of, uh, of respect for Mauricio that day. And despite me not agreeing with a lot of the things that he does and says, you know, it's kind of like you just said. I mean, it's, he's one of those people. He's a polarizing figure, you know, so you get to talk in a little business with him. He might put you onto a little game. Um, or he may just hit you with a very political answer, but he's, he knows how to do it. Right. So, uh, I feel like you can't do nothing but respect him. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Phone lines are Man, open, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. My, my, uh, my first and like, you know, like interaction, um, not first, but like. It was a heated debate, and I thought it was a dunny after that. You know, I'm like, it's a wrap. You know, we ain't, ain't never talking with you. Yeah, we ain't never talking again. And instead, that shit, the relationship built. So now nah, he's no, uh, I'm, I'm, he's I'm a good dude, you, bro. It's just you know, again, because he's good, had, don't mean that he's gonna give you all the answers that you want. I had the uh, my pleasure of my first heated debate with Mauricio. Look. Did you have the pleasure, when you had this debate, did you have the pleasure of going home or leaving the event? Yeah. Because we weren't allowed to leave. This oh, is wow. pandemic. So you had to stay in the hotel. <laughs> and the way Matchroom did it, they would buy out the entire hotel. So if you were not in your room, you're sharing the same restaurants, the same barbershop, the same common areas as everybody else. So the only way to get fresh air is if you go to the rooftop to the pool. And I remember me and Mauricio, this was about the franchise title. And we just went at it for half a fucking hour. That franchise title bike. caused so many issues, bro. Oh, my goodness. No, we went at it. And uh, I remember I go get something to eat and I see him. And it's just me and him. And I'm like, oh, my. But bro, it was it was it was like nothing had ever happened. It was all uh he ended up paying for my bill. It was all it was it was great, man. Uh let's see. We got Jay Billy counter. Prolific, hold on, hold on. Prolific, real quick. Welcome to the prospect level. Shout out to you. And then Omar asked, um, asked Mauricio, does he regret the franchise? But who you got, Ness? We got Jay Billy Jay with Billy. a counter punch. You? You? Oh, I'm saying how the audio, how the audio. Straight. Yes, sir. Shout out Ness, Danny, and me putting in that motherfucking work. You know we got to come in and talk that Dave and the Rail shit. You feel me? I'm just glad my boy's staying active. You feel me? We don't, we don't ask for no handouts. We don't go in interviews. 
talking about guys that's ducking us, we chase them. You know what I'm saying? This is the real David first the first the fake David, you know what I'm saying? Lil Tony, how I like to call it. So uh I'm glad my dude he's moving up, going ahead to 175. So Ness, I, I see you reported on it. Is this like do you know if this is definite or is this like uh, you know, stay busy if I gotta get back down to one sixty eight, I'll do that. Oh yeah, I, you know, you know, you know how that I'm that's like intimate team stuff, right? Like and it, it probably I has mean, to do with WBA, how I feel. It no is but the WBA it, gonna but is you, WBA gonna strip them though? No, it's gonna be an interim title on the line for the WBA. What at one seventy five? Yeah. No way. No, nah, no. Nah. How? Huh? The W the WBA regular? Something. There's gonna be a no, WBA, interim. man. There's gonna be a WBA. Oh, the, 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 the thing interim. is, okay, my bad. You, the okay. thing is, Danny, that uh, the word was tr- nah, was he in Spanish. Hear interim, no, man. I hear, I hear you, I hear you. But the issue is, I don't know if they're gonna do an interim or a regular. Is there a regular? Because I mean, in Spanish, man, bro, I, I thought they was trying to. I thought yeah, they don't, trying to not sixty-eight. Oh, no, not no, no, 68. no, 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 at, no. At seventy-five, yeah, yeah, there's no regular or interim. And that's what I'm saying. So it could be the regular. Or it could be an Inturino, which is what I was told last night, which is interim, right? Or is there a fucking interim. double? Is there a double meaning for that? I mean, I mean I, I, knowing the I, I, way I, I, y'all you countries know, are set up, there probably is, but um, but these these you know, my bad, Danny, that's but always been interim to me. Go ahead, go ahead. These these sanctioning bodies really blur the lines, like because at first we're trying to consolidate all the WBA belts into just the super, so we don't have to differentiate super between regular. So I'm hoping that is not another regular. I'm hoping they're not about to put a regular on the line. But if my boy about to get a belt, then I'm not about to be mad at it. You feel me? I wanted I wanted to be some structure in this boxing shit. Let's get back to the normal shit. But, you know, if my boy going to get a belt, I can't be mad at it. You know, I, I need Morel to build up his name, build up his profile. Stay busy in these fights, you know. Go to 75. I don't even mind you go to 200. That's a big dude right there. But then he going to show you something, you know. I know you said that, you know, you're not really – he he hasn't shown you enough yet. You know, you see, you, you still see the raw tools. He's going to bring it together in this fight. You feel me? I feel like he's going to be looking a little better at 175. I don't know how big the weight cut is for him, but he's a bigger dude. You feel me? He about 6'4", just like, I, I think he uh taller than uh, Benavidez. Benavidez is like 6'2", right? 6'2", 6'3". Now she's still next to him. Yeah, I think he's taller than that, bro. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say about 6'4". Okay. Six okay, five maybe. Eye eye, but yeah, man, chase him down. Chase him down. We ain't mad at that. Do your job, Morel. And then with Haney and Pitbull, that's all, I'm, I'm seeing what you're saying. You feel me? Like nobody's gonna face a style that's like not conducive to them. You feel me? They're not gonna face a style that they think they can lose to. So you know that's probably why we get into To versus Steve Claggy. You feel me? He's, he's seeing that it's it's a specific style that he can't go against and he should stay away from. And you know, Pitbull I don't know. I don't thing. know. I think I think we might not get. I'm trying to get confirmation on that, man. But I think Tio's having a change of heart. You know, that's how things be. You know, they announce these fights, yeah, yeah. and then they, they they see the they see the reception from the general public, and then you know they try to switch it up. Yeah, I feel you. So yeah, we we gonna. And see. I don't think Tio uh, liked his reception. That 140 division. I feel like it's kind of like that uh, 154 division. You know, they they all going to get at it. It's one of those in-between divisions where everybody fights. So, you know, I feel like eventually if Haney is still there, he doesn't grow out the division, we'll get that Pitbull versus Haney. Or if not, Matias versus Pitbull or even Barroso. I want to see that too. Just like Danny said, that's a 50-50 fight. But I'm going to tap back in on my second call. Somebody say something after well, the show. Get on. Yo, uh, explain talking, that counterpunch. I owed you that from what? You remember yesterday I sent one. Oh, okay, so one. so you got another one from fuck. Someone sent you another one, so you have another one. I'll tell that, you. That who, I'm, I'm gonna keep that in I'll the bank for a little bit. Yeah. I'll tell you who it, in it, a it, bit. It, I gotta go back and read it. All right, cool. If it starts to get stale, I'm gonna call back in so we can uh, get Mauricio on. But I'm gonna tap back in. Yeah, we need to go another two full hours. Mauricio's not coming till twelve, and you know if we end that before this. Uh, okay, so it was Kerry G that sent you that counterpunch. He sent one for Suleiman, Suleiman the Scholar, one for Timboski, and uh, Jay Billy, and then uh, we also got a counterpunch from uh, Drew on Twitter for Timboski to defend Anthony Yard. Uh, and Jerry Soriano sends $2. He says, Plata is 
money in Colombia. Let him cook. Did, was that a good Jerry impression or no? That was a good Jerry impression. <laughs> I mean, I mean, bro. It's hard bro, to do that the was voice, cool. though. No, that was, that, that was cool and all, but bro, like. No, um, he's only saying that because his girl's Colombian, so he's. he's, he's no, no, no. He champ, knows. champ, he knows. champ, champ. Just hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. What do we say about two dollar super chats? They usually what hateful. What do they usually? Hateful. Okay, that was usually, a nice one. This is no. This ain't, this ain't no hate. But what I was getting to is, if they're usually hate, mm -hmm. and you know, usually very low, bro. You just read that as monotone as, as, nah, as you can, man, bro. This dude, Plata is money in Colombia. Yo, this dude that's is it, with. Bro. That's you. I, I thought you woke no, up. No, if with, it was okay. if it was like ten dollars conversation if it was time. Ten dollars, then you. Then Conversation you, time, then you champ. Put your chest into it. Conversation time. You just finished telling me and I mean in the audience how you woke up on this great mood because of the 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 the, the, the wannabe talent. Okay, yeah. so how can you go from great mood to monotone like a super chat? No, 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 no. Great mood, the... but but bro, but bro. Here, but how could you let you. it let change me, your mood? Let me mood. answer that question. No, no, no. It ain't changing my mood, but um, it's just. It's just the understanding. It's knowing your worth is really what it is. It's the understanding of Man, what is terrible. worth your energy and what is not. Bro, so I'm a, instead I'm a, instead I'm a of happy guy. instead of depleting, listen to me. Instead of depleting energy into that super chat, you keep it. You keep it chill. Nah. And then when when Carrie G come with a five or, or Optimus Prime with his twenty or even James. With the 10 Hayden or carry with the 15 back. You just go you know higher I mean? for like, those. You get even more ant for those. But look, it's like different. Look, I get I get what Daddy's saying because Daddy's like, yo, for two beans, we ain't wasting no time. Bro, you know Jerry, like, nah, look, Jerry I mean, is hey, consistent, bro, you, though. You pull up on a... So huh? hold on, hold on. Let's take it from a bartender standpoint, right? You you, you go mm -hmm. to this bar a day. You, you buy on two, three drinks, maybe two max. But you go... Two times a week. You know what I'm okay. saying? And so I'm buying four drinks in a week. And you consistently, per week, and you consistently mm -hmm. tipping. You know what I'm saying? So one day, you went in there, outside of your normal two days, you bought one drink, and you left a smaller tip. Like, what the fuck is wrong with that? It's a regular. Yeah. Is he not nah, a regular? I'm is he a, not I'm a, a regular? Appreciation. But is he not Again, a regular? Of course. Who tips I'm you well the anyway? Listen, I'm going to show the appreciation. Terrible. Just not Yo, this cheers over here, man. I'm older than y'all. Tell him. Hey, hey, I mean, help me sing the song. I ain't seen the episode of Cheers in forever. But this the Cheers spot. This Cheers right here. I mean, bring it all together as the rapper of the bunch, man. This Cheers right here. This the bar. I'm fucking up. Everybody knows your name. Everybody yeah. knows Jerry. Give him a drink on the house even. Yeah. Listen, even if Jerry yeah. comes here with no money one day, yeah. give him a drink on the house. He'll come back tomorrow. That's fucking right. Let Jerry Unless come. giving him customer service. I see the other side of it, too. I Jerry comes side. with no money. He's crying about his Colombian girlfriend. We the shoulder for him to cry on. We the bar. This cheers, man. This cheers. This the barber shop. You ain't never get a cut on credit. See, nah, nah, champ. You just want to be a dive bar. I want to be oh, like man. a respectable. That's you feel you me? Like I want to be the bar. I want to be the bar. The no, on. look, look, look. Ness want to be the bar that serves irk and jerk to only men. I want to be the bar you bring your lady to. The bar that you know I mean that you could. Bro, there, and then bro, this after the, you leave the bar, this the bar that when you leave here, man, you know what's gonna happen. Nah, you know this I mean? this the forty forty club, but I'm so business that I rented <laughs> out. Of here. I rented out. 40, 40. I rented out even for baby showers, man, because I'm so business. What is you talking about? Like, nah, b, nah. <laughs> but anyway, moving on, we got. Okay, my bad. We got uh. RRT box with Mr. A, five dollars. Not too shocking news. Team Haney always talks about them, and WBC are good business. Haney built himself through the WBC. Yeah, but uh, this is more WBC talking about Isak. You got to that, Kerry G. I got to the fifteen dollar three counter punches for Kerry G. Optimus Prime with the twenty dollars. <laughs> Salute Optimus Prime. Let me drop a bomb for the dub. Bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll with 
Never mind. Florida doesn't have bodegas. Nah, you're right, bro. There's, well, I'm sure in that Tampa, deep Tampa, you know, uh, not deep Tampa, inner city, you know, metropolitan Tampa, definitely in Orlando, definitely where it came from in Deltona, you know, you're going to get that. You know, uh, you just got to know where you at. And I'm sure you'll get those in uh, for a lot of the, I always, but, 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 they, but they're not bodegas, though. You all right. They fucking like strip mall stores, you know, them little ass. Strip malls, man. They ain't got no corners, though. Nah, they, they ain't got no corner and... stores. They ain't got no corner. But neither does fucking Alabama. Like, you know, when I used to see Wilder, his corner store was like a fuck. It wasn't even, like, they had the corner, but the shit was set up on an angle. And it was like parking. Like, I we ain't got no corner stores with parking. You got to park on the street. You know? It's, uh, it, you know, it's different. Every city's different. But uh, we got Bones 13, $2. Danny is too damn happy today. Kind of scary, laughing out loud emoji. Yeah, that changed quickly once we got that $2 super chat. I'll tell you that. Bro, nah, bro. My man said, I don't, know what's, I don't know what's up with the people today, bro. It's Friday once again. Look, maybe y'all haven't, um, maybe it hasn't hit y'all timeline because y'all good husbands and good partners to y'all ladies. But, bro, just type in wannabe challenge. Like, Everybody getting butt heard and talking about disrespect, bro. Chill. Go light you a blunt. Go 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 get you a little drinky drink. You feel me? It ain't never too early. Pour it in your coffee. You know what I mean? And and be happy, champ. Ain't nobody butt heard about a two dollar super chat. That's a little jokey joke. Ness butt hurt because he over there spilling weed and shit. That's what he butt hurt nah, about. You feel me? But ain't nobody my, else butt hurt. Drop my ashtray, bro. Then that's like a constant thing. I need to get a weighted ashtray. Damn, they said Deltona, Florida. You know where that's at? Deltona, not Daytona. Yeah. Deltona. No, Deltona. And it's actually uh, Deltona is actually uh, like Del. They call it Del Rico because it's so many Puerto Ricans. Oh, That's word. I'm, okay. Yeah, man. No, listen. When Berlanga... And guess what? The greatest news of today, ladies and gentlemen, is that Morel uh, no longer is fighting at 68, which clears the path for the true 168-pound superstar. Puerto Rico. And now he could get his fight back in, you know... Florida Rico mm -hmm. versus Trevor McCombie, and it's going to be a fucking movie. I bet you he do easy, like, 7,000. That's what that's what Jake Paul did. We we doing that then. Jake Paul did seven in this England Caribbean. I'm pretty sure. Seven? Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just Bro. there, remember? No, 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 no. I hear you, but... To be clear, you said Karibi Royale, right? Yeah. And when we had the the, the guy, um, Amaudi, right? Yeah. Did he not say that the venue holds three and that they flex it to five? For Belanga. Yeah, but so they never went, seven come from? They never went to five. They scaled it for three for Belanga. He sold that out. And seven for Jake. They had bleachers. That's what I'm saying. Even, even Keem was with me. And the bleachers that they have for Berlangas. No, left... no, no. I hear you. I just, I just, I just, uh, yeah, I never heard seven in that interview. Yeah, I mean, because I don't know. We didn't talk about Jake. We only talked about Berlanga and what they were scaling the venue to. No, I know. But he told us, he, he, in that interview, he told us, this is what we did with, with Edgar. This is what we did with Jake. And, you know, and that's the most we could do. Yeah, I thought um, it was like maybe honey. Maybe you miss. Maybe you misheard okay. or he or he misspoke. But uh, definitely, Keem is listening, and you know he covered the event with me, and I'm um, he was the one that brought the conversation up with Enrique, the that that runs the Caribe, uh, because he covered Jake for me, so he was telling me like, bro, it was bigger for Jake. The bleachers the went to the wall. Go ahead. Keem, Keem said they scaled it to five for Jake. Oh, five? 
Over that's there. what I was saying, well, bro. That's go. what I thought he said from three to five. Okay, well, there you go. Yo. That's why we got, you know, correspondence to tap in with us. We got Bones 13. We said that. We got James Benitez. I mean, you seen, you seen how much he questioned me, and then you said what somebody else said, and that shit Bible. That is law. No. That shit hilarious. No, not what somebody else. <laughs> the person that covered the event. That was the reason I was saying that. Because he said Keem was there. So yeah. That's and, why if Keem said it, it's... You know what I mean? It wasn't like I said yeah. it. It's because Keem. And again, nah, and I think, I and think even we got in my, backwards too. And even Keem in my saying, story, I said that Keem brought it up. Okay. No, I, I was just saying, I think we got it mixed up, bro. We were saying Jake got more. Seems like Berlanga got more from what he's saying. He's nah. saying that the bleachers were bigger for Berlanga. Nah, he's stunting. He he oh. he gotta be. He, so do you we know, not so, believe Keem? If- so yeah, no, we don't. We not gonna believe Keem if that's what he's saying because he stopped smoking. So he might be going through some sort of weird ass withdrawal. But think about it. He literally told me the bleachers went all the way to the back of the wall, and where all the food and concession was at for Berlanga, that shit could not even be there because the bleachers went all the way back. It's it's. And again, I know y'all don't know what all the way back is in square footage and feet. Cool. Just believe it's a lot of motherfucking space. It is a lot on both ends of the venue. On both ends of the venue. So, yeah, let Keem, you know, get out the sun. Remember, he's out in the sun at this moment. And it'll probably come to him that he told me the bleachers went to the back of the wall. And then we talked to one of the managers. But we got ten dollars from James Benitez. Morel and David both about to hey. be two division champs. If David don't fight Morel after he collects this strap, David a duck. The question is which David though. <laughs> but go ahead, Danny. Yo, salute yeah, for the ten dollars uh, super chat. Just because, just because it's like it's too many people saying it for me to not address it. Um, yo, I was just joking. It was just a little jokey joke. You feel me, like? Like the two dollars, I'm not shitting on nobody. <laughs> no, bro, bro, no, they trying to drag me and shit. And it's like, whoa, bro, it was a little jokey joke. I woke up seeing a whole lot of. Hey, he about um, to, why you keep associating it to these girls? They ain't got nothing to do with nah, that. Nah, bro, no, I just he seen a whole lot of. Bro, I mean, I woke up at three in the morning, bro. I couldn't sleep. I go light me one, go make me a cup of coffee. What am I gonna do at three thirty four in the morning as Take a look I smoke? At your and drink a coffee in my garage, bro. I'm going to just scroll on the timeline. So, so, no, this was this morning. This was this morning. So I woke up. No, but but the thing is, this this challenge has been going on all week. But you came in late. Somebody sent in $2. Ness was super enthusiastic reading the message. I'm like, bro, for $2, you read that shit monotone. All right? For $2, you read the monotone. <laughs> So right, people took that. People took that. They said, I need to humble myself. They said that I'm bad for the show. Look, life humbles That's me. Crazy. I'm not going to do it. Life humbles me every fucking day. So there's no need for me to humble myself, right? That's for y'all overthinkers. Second, <laughs> secondly, uh, it was a joke, man. It's Friday. It's payday. Like, rent ain't even due. That was the last check. Rent ain't Good. even due. Let's be happy. Let's smile. Light you another one, yeah. You know I mean, uh, maybe, maybe get y'all girls to participate in the wannabe challenge, like, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, let's be happy. Ta- tell them, tell them, maybe, maybe tag you in it. Hey, no, nah, you the <laughs> algorithm, bro. The algorithm gods, look, if y'all want, if y'all want to send it my way for me to rate, I'll ta- tag him I- in your girls. <laughs> nah, let, nah, nah, y'all ain't gotta rate, tag me, y'all ain't gotta tag me. but if y'all want to send it to me for me to rate it, I'll do that. But yeah, man, like, let's be happy. It's UFC 300 this weekend. Hey, I gotta tip my hat off to Dana White really quick, just really quick. They do win bonuses and performance bonuses, Ness. They they always do for their pay per views, right? It's usually uh fifty thousand dollars on top of what you get it. But I'm just saying it, you know, probably would help our. It always sport, breaks right? my heart when this guy goes into his Mr. Mr. I love what OTX does. I mean, it probably would yeah, help our sport. Yeah, use them for right? an example and the fact that they got a brand new shiny well, tournament. They would never do this. They would never they do this. They got a right? brand new or shiny they tournament. Done this. I mean, that's great for them. 
Um, and we spoke on that. I'm just saying, Dana. See, on top of your see, purse, back you to get a fifty thousand dollar bonus for this. I got Keen texting me direct. For this pay per view, he went he from says, fifty Danny's lying. to three hundred. I just want y'all to know that's a six hundred percent increase. Cool. What am I lying about? He said, "You lying." Uh, uh -huh. The bleachers were bigger for Jake than for Berlanga. Danny can't read. The space behind the bleachers for drinks wasn't even there for Jake Paul. You had to go outside to get drinking food. Bleachers took the whole venue. I tried to tell him, champ. So all I'm saying, going back to the original debate, uh, I mean, uh, I was remark there for, was more Belanga versus Trevor McCombie will definitely be that five to seven thousand range. I hope. I think. Hey, tell tell uh tell your boy Keem to uh, learn grammar and stop using run-on sentences, and maybe people would comprehend what he was saying yeah. better. He, bro, he's yeah. a working man. He's a comma. He's a, he's yeah, a so sound he down. I'm a working man, too. He you probably can't be used, mad at me. He probably used his it's watch. It's thousands of messages. It's th that's Bruh. great, bro. It's thousands Bruh. of messages. How you use a watch on YouTube Live? Bruh. Just educate me. I ain't never heard what? that one before. Just educate me. Text. Yeah. Text to no. speak. Dictation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how do you do that to comment on the YouTube live? Because that's what he did. He can have his Educating. YouTube app on his on his you on his on his iWatch. I didn't know that. I, I lost mean, mine. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. Damn, you lost your watch. I genuinely believe somebody stole it. Yeah, I think somebody I stole it. You don't just lose no, your watch. I, I genuinely believe somebody stole it. Because, Why you ain't track uh, my watch? I didn't know you could do that. What the fuck? You do it right now from your laptop, man. I log into your iCloud. Uh, your iCloud. Bro, that shit been lost for months. But I uh, mean, you uh, might see. Hey, yo, let me tell you something. I lost my shit in Myrtle <laughs> Beach, and literally watched it from the beach. I lost it in the water. Uh -huh. I watched it get uh -huh. out the ocean, get in the parking lot, and jump on a highway, bro. I promise you. I met up with the dude at a fucking like a little fucking. You know, one of those stores or some shit, but I couldn't tell who it was. You know, man, because it ain't like the watch is screaming, hey, I'm right here. You just following the GPS, and it's one of the cars in this fucking lot. How do you know? You know, but yeah, man, nah, mm -hmm. that GPS, that find my phone, find my watch, that shit work. Um, We got... But yeah, pretty sure that shit got stolen, champ. I didn't know. I, I yeah. I didn't know you could use your Apple Watch to watch a YouTube live and comment at the same time. Yeah, I'm like probably, that I'm is probably, next level I'm technology. Making, I'm probably making that up to win the argument. But check this out. Uh, Mac and oh, Cheese okay. said, "Cause Danny's so bougie, forty for getting me through this work week. TBV for life. Flex emoji." <laughs> Yo, nah, nah, Danny, so everybody before you respond, before that. you respond, he ain't say that. Uh -huh, he uh -huh. ain't say that. There right. you go. Nah, but still, it's a lot of people saying that, champ. It's a lot of people <laughs> saying that. Look, it ain't about the money. I'm just rereading my message. It ain't about the money. Anybody who really watches the show should know that, right? Because everybody, everybody else who goes live, you know, uh, they super chats is on another level. So if it was about the money... Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be here. It's about the love for the sport. We you know got saying? it is not about the money. Um that and, is and to and to everybody else, to everybody else, because I see a lot of y'all. Champ, my job is not secure. My seat is not secure. Anybody yeah. who wants that seat, it's for the take. Here he go. You Danny understand? always why are you why no, are no, you no, letting no, no, people no. get you no. that upset? No, hey, you, you, you ready to I, walk I just now be because clear. they all I, on their skin. I ain't under no contract. I ain't under no contract. It ain't you no under contract. Three, five, we got a verbal two contract. Years, three, nothing. We got a verbal contract uh, that you have to work. Right, Samson. You have to work right, with me. Samson. His verbal. Right, Samson. Fuck his, out of here. His verbal contract states he's got to work with me until his firstborn is eighteen years old. Hey Yo. man, you smoking Krizak? What did I walk in on? What's and there's happening? no and there's no non-compete. He can't go anywhere till after his son is full, 18 years old. Hey, then after why, that, why? he got a seven-year. 
After that, he got that's a seven-year non-compete. So he can't even start his own his own shit. Nah, fuck fucking with y'all. <laughs> hey, why, why another platform? Actually, it was my boy, uh, Karay, down in Dallas. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Spit bucket. Yeah, spit, spit bucket. Yeah. Uh, long story short, Mutual or somebody he knows was at the gym. They put him on the phone. And he's like, hey, bro, I don't mean this in no you know, disrespectful way or nothing like that, but are you allowed to come on other platforms? I said, fuck you mean what am I allowed? Fuck? I'm like, hell yeah. No, you not. You tell that motherfucker to call me. I'm your goddamn agent. <laughs> fuck going on hey, man, here. Ain't no 360 deal going <laughs> on over here, man. They better give me a call. Tell me Hi, if it's Mr. okay. Hi, fuck out of hey, 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 Marcos, <laughs> and you too. <laughs> Now that you on here, any deals come your way, I want 5%. If a nickel bag gets sold in the park, I want... Nah, I'm fucking with y'all. Khaled, counter punch. Hey, matter of fact, Marcos, we need that 30% off every fucking ticket you sell in that Ew. comedy club, all right? That's what, I ain't selling shit, so you're going to get <laughs> shit. I'm going to... We're going to do a show there. You wait. You me. wait. Kill you me. wait. Khaled, talk to us. Got me losing more hair. Hey, yo, quick question. Yo, quick question, man. I had, like, cop these BAM tickets, but I did them with the pre-sale. This is my first time, first first fight I'm going to. I did the pre-sale, and I wanted to sit ringside, but they didn't have everything, like, available. Uh, And then, like, I had to do something. Then when I came back, it said no more seats left. But, like, the general sale about to go on in, like, two hours. But on the pre-sale, all the seats wasn't open. It was just a few. Do you think that on this general sale, like more ringside is gonna open up, or you think all them bitches is gone? So, I got some tickets, but you think so? All let me them tell you gone? something. Let me tell you the way it works for pre-sale. They do a limited quantity. They might do two thousand to five thousand, depending on the venue. It's usually about ten to twenty percent of the tickets is pre-sale, and okay. then. Um, okay. Before that even goes on sale, promoters, fighters, they already took all their seats out. So most most of the, the ring sides are going to be gone. Um, but yes, more okay. will open yeah. up during the general sale. But yeah, most of them probably going to be gone. So, right, but whatever so, I mean, tickets so I did didn't get, go on so sale yesterday look- will go on sale today. All right. So, okay. So I shouldn't even... So, so, so the... So the ring side probably over with. It's probably RIP on that. Don't even worry about it. Uh, more than likely, it is worth your shot because those are going to be the most expensive, but those are also the most yeah. seeked out. So you know, it's worth a shot. I won't tell you no. This isn't like the biggest fight of the year. It is a good fight. I plan to be there, yeah. but you might yeah. get you might get lucky and yeah. get some decent ring sides. I'll say though, as somebody who's been to a hundred plus, two hundred plus fights. If you're not within the first mm. three rows, ringside ain't worth it. If you're not within oh, the first three rows, ringside, yeah, like you better off going uh, lower level, Explain and that why. way that that way you're even with the ring. Explain so, why. So why do you because, think fifth rows better? Yeah, because you're gonna have to deal with four rows of people in front of you, and then another two three rows of people within the corral. Um, like just from my experience, it's not worth it. Not if I'm not okay within corral, the first three, I could be there. If it's not within the first three that. rows, I'd rather be lower level to where each row is higher, so I can at least see more even. You know. Word. Yeah, I mean, like you know, like the ones I did get, they were still like they had the ring size that was one fifty. I got the hundred dollar joint, and I'm like I'm within that first fear, not like way back. I'm still in that first fear, and I tried to get like a good angle. Other ring based upon the picture yeah. that they said, so that might that might yeah, be better. As, that might as be long better. as you ain't get a corner to where you're looking into the corner post, because that's where the camera guys are at too. You know, as long as you got, mm. it won't be bad. But I hope you are tall okay. because you know that's what you deal with is people in front of you. You know, so it's kind of hard if you're not. Hell no, I'm short as hell. I'm short as hell, so I best not get that ring. I'm I'm short, so I'm gonna just stay where I'm at. <laughs> Hey it's Sam, you're gonna be you're gonna I'm be at. standing on that chair like you like you in the club. You go to the Barclays Center, get ready nah, to yeah, inhale nah. hey, that's fair. large amount of weed because they just fair. don't give a shit at the Barclays that's Center. Fair. I'm a, I mean, I got some seats that was I, I think it's some stairs 
So I got some seats that's kind of similar to the stairs, so I just step off. But that's my call. Thank you for answering, bro. All right, champ. You have a good one. Appreciate the call. Word. Khaled, appreciate you. If anybody wants to use the number to call in, the number is 563-999. Did I say three nines already? Nine. Yes. 3427. So it's 563-999. <laughs> 3427. We're going to Wills. Stay rolling. And while we wait for him to connect, we got Leonard with the two pounder. <laughs> Didn't Cruz say he had to speak to his team about 135 or 140? That is true, but this is Mauricio's wishes. Wills. And that's why he said he's not a promoter. Wheels, Miguel Guerrero, two dollars. Tell Danny to get bettered jokes. Well, Danny's favorite joke is to laugh at people's grammar, so bettered isn't right. I mean, is there an apostrophe after? <laughs> <laughs> Little zooted, two dollars. Get that UFC. Bull the fuck. What the, I don't know. I guess he meant UFC BTQ plus oh, up out of here, to, Danny. I, he's trying to call him the LGBTQ. That's fucked up. Oh. We Damn. got James. Yeah, I mean, $2. I mean, what'd you, what'd you really expect <laughs> out of that? Like, bro, I think I spent more on the toilet tissue I wiped my ass with. Yo, <laughs> than, so than, that, than, and that was Danny's original point. He said when the, sometimes when the $2 Super Chats come in, they're usually a little they bit or at least a little whatever. Yeah. So that's, that was the original point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 James Benitez, though, with the fat $10. He says, that's a bag right there. Remember back in the day when it was 10 for a bag? It was Dom bag. James, he, he says, back wannabe Buddha. challenge. He says, I'd rather see Clarissa attempted over Alicia. Clarissa's Ooh. killing back there compared to other female boxers. Damn. But again, champ, again, That's why bro, she ain't trying all... to lose that 30 pounds. She done said that all over the internet, that she don't want to go down and lose her ass. She has said that. She has said that. I agree you with know? that. In a sport full of men, it ain't like we ain't heard it. Danny going to stop talking and make that face like I'm... Saying some pornographic shit like she's on no, my, no 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 she no she don't mind no. saying I, that shit no but again it goes back to what what I said earlier bro like I have appreciation for everybody so it's like you ain't gotta be the super thick you know what I'm saying to 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 partake and participate like nah, this is sure. an all inclusive you know what I'm saying all shapes all sizes but for all women but her thing is you know uh. She got a dump truck and other girls don't. Yeah. No, 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 for sure, for sure. But the challenge in itself is what I'm saying. The challenge in itself is just showing that you can make it happen with what you got. For sure. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Celebrate all, you know what I mean? Um, you know, all, all, all blessed amounts, if you will. We going to North Carolina. James, what it do? <laughs> Yo, can you hear me? Yep. All right, this is Wills, by the way. Oh. I was trying to talk, but it won't work. But uh, shout out to y'all. Uh, hope y'all having a good morning. I was calling in because I was wanting y'all to ask a question to Maurice, though, because I'm going to be working when, when he comes in. So ask him, why does every rule in their, in their, uh, their PDF online, why does every rule have a loophole in it? Where where they can get out of it and choose and pick who they want to, and because I was reading through it, and literally when it comes to mandatory, when it comes to ranking, it says this should be enforced, but but in this situation, uh, like a com a committee with him and one other guy can make the exception, make the exception. And it's it's not even I mean it's rules that that got that 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 loophole in it that doesn't even apply to mandatory. It's just so I just wanted to understand ask y'all to ask them that so we can get a clear understanding because 
it, at that point, it just it's like, what's the point of them? If you're if you're gonna have a loophole, for I mean, every you know rule. what's the point? The rules matter till they don't matter. Like the it's, rules matter exactly. until Canelo decides he don't want to exactly. fight Charlo because he needs to fight uh, Kovalev, and there's more money in a Kovalev fight, and they get a bigger but, percentage but that's of why that. I want to ask for well, you got to, first of all, for, 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 for starters, we ain't going to remember that. Secondly, oh, any oh. questions you want to ask, you got to put it in the post, because that's where we're going to read from. Okay. In what post? Either on the community page or Patreon. Yeah. It been okay, out for okay, four then. weeks. Uh, okay, okay, I'll check it out. Uh, but yeah, I'm just... I know what it's for, but, you know, I just want to see him squirm with that question because we need to, at this point, with boxing, we need to get some oversight because it gets to a point where it doesn't matter, you know, about the belts. But the belts are what give those those champions before and those champions now that recognition. And then not only that, it messes with people's lives. Like, some of these fighters are fighting just to survive and or to take care of their family. And when you got loopholes and you got all politics in play, it really puts people down on the back burner, missing out on opportunities that they've earned years ago. But that's my call. Y'all have a good one, man. Shout out to y'all. Yo, real quick, though, I just want to say, sometimes it ain't always a benefit chasing them belts because it's like, you know, the college route. That's what I always liken it to. Just because you go to school, you got to be prepared to, to to make sure you get a return on your investment. So when you get that strap, yeah, you want to get it. But once you get it, you pay in sanctioning fees and you got to, you know, do certain things, you know, and you got to play, you know, within the structure that is that, that sanctioning body. So, you know, it, yeah, some people... You, they want to, you know, of course, we talked about the WBA. Is it going to be an interim? Is it going to be a super? You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you can have a belt that means something or means nothing. So the, the key to it, I think, is to make sure if you're going to chase one of them Reggie belts, an interim belt or a full belt or so, get it from somebody that seems to mean something or stand for something. You know, don't just be in a rush to get an interim strap. At least take one again. And that's what morale. So we're talking about morale. You know, he, he's. it seems like he's defending what an interim strap or he's trying to, you know, make it a full or whatever. But, um, you know, that's what he has to do until he can get some skin in, 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 in the division or either division. So he's at 175 now. That's what he got to do. That is the uh, news that he's moving up. I got, oh, shit. Okay. Numbers with a $50 super chat. Salute to numbers. <laughs> Yeah. Salute numbers and I really appreciate you sending that via Cash App. This way we don't get that raping you records. You know, it's YouTube takes thirty full percent. They might as well be James Prince. Damn. Oh, you ain't know that? <laughs> you better uh. check you better check your fine print. Listen, they think they James Prince out this bitch. Um <laughs> We got uh, we got numbers that says shout out TBV best show in boxing. Appreciate you, man. From your lips to God's ears and to Danny's as well. The other day took shots on my we we ain't the breakfast club of bot motherfucker. Yes, I am. Fuck he talking about. You know Fuck you kind of got a DJ Envy thing going on in the voice. Bro, how about Fuck how about God. you like go listen and replay? I literally said we're not the uh, breakfast club. In real life, but we're the Breakfast Club of boxing. Oh, why? I, 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 once you heard not, nah, I just went red. I was like, ah. Um, I mean, yeah, bro. I don't. I don't want to be none of them motherfuckers. I don't want to be Envy, and I don't want to <laughs> be Charlemagne, and I definitely don't want to be just hilarious. Yo, I want you to be Ness, and I want to be Ringwalk, and yo, that's that. Yeah, you know I mean, number said another cash app, two dollars. Danny, relax. <laughs> See, they took that super serious, Danny. You're right. Nah, look, the two dollars, champ. Danny, relax. You, I mean, just, I mean, just, just get it out there. Just, Danny, relax. Yo, on, Marco, what's this nah, I'm about? With you. 
Marco, what? what's this about? Uh, Ken with the five dollar cash app says Marco crackhead story on Saint Laz. Too funny. What the hell is Saint Laz? Oh, Saint Laz. That's uh, my man from the Bronx. He does these jailhouse stories. He's popping off on social media, and um, he I had him. He, I told the story about when I was growing up in Hell's Kitchen, how this crackhead broke into my house, and just some old '80s crackhead Hell's Kitchen shit. Yeah, Saint Laz. If you haven't watched him, check him out. He does a lot of jailhouse stories. Does a lot of New York based kind of. Um, it's a lot of it's humorous, but uh, yeah, good dude. So what you 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 went you went Rocky Balboa on a crackhead that broke into your house? Nah, I was only, I was only twelve years old, man. I was a kid, oh, and shit. we just had to run out. I was butt naked because it was summer. Whoa. We had no air conditioning. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So you was just whoa, sleeping whoa. butt naked you as a kid? Been like, you could have been what like, yo, fuck? I was in my tidy whitey. Oh, oh, I'm not gonna lie. Why why I'm are you sleeping lie. naked was, was, as a, as a, as a kid, bro? What the fuck oh, is going on over there? It was the first time, the last time I ever slept naked. It was summer. We had no air conditioning. And That's a crackhead Marco, broke in. Marco's just days. got this episode flagged. What the fuck? Well, it did happen. We talking, and, about, um, we talking about Marco's outside, as a young man. Outside, <laughs> and we had to flag down cops, right? But the only people that were outside were So you hookers. were flagging down cops naked? Because um, somebody was okay, breaking Marcos, down we're in good. our house. So we're I had to run downstairs we're good on with this my one. mom. Nah, we're good on this one. We're good on this one. We're good on this one. <laughs> I had to flag down somebody to come help. Oh, he wanted to continue. But I was naked, so I'm covering myself. And <laughs> so you covering yourself. The you're allegedly covering yourself, but flagging someone down. That that doesn't hand, say yeah, yeah. one hand. I'm covering. I'm covering. And then the other hand, I'm like ah. But there was nobody out there but hookers. <laughs> My so man I, said ah. Yep. That's the story. So wait, let me get this straight. You run out. You're <clears> naked. <throat> You ask, you ask him for help, and the only people that can help you are hookers. That's it. And they were like, I'm like, yo, can somebody call the cops? And she goes, nope. And she walked away. <laughs> That's a true story. Oh, hey, man. hey, go at, go at, go ask your neighborhood drug dealer. Like, hey, bro, can you call the cops for me? Somebody just look at my head. I'm 12 <laughs> years old. I'm, you know, I'm scared. It's a, it's a three in the morning. But one thing oh, I took out of this, kids, boys and girls, never sleep naked. Don't do it. Because you never know when you got to bounce out the house. Yo, I got a uh, shout out to Optimus Prom. Sent the $20 cash app via cash app. Saving you that raping you records. Saving you that 30%. And he says... Counter punches from whom whomever till Mauricio gets here. Yeah, let's 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 get to some of these phone calls here. Discord, Twitter, and a landline available. If you do want to use the landline, remember to press one at least one time. That's gonna give us that notification. You're ready to rock and roll, and, you, and you're not just listening, using the landline. Tip, Bellis, what up? I think I think we might have a, a a nickname from Marco. Lunar Glider recommends Commando Marco. Shit, wow. I, I know you guys laugh, but that <laughs> shit was traumatizing. And hey, never, no, never I again. Laugh. No, never. I laugh. <laughs> Listen, I I laugh because um, I had. A similar situation, except uh, the building was on fire and I was in my drawers. So even though it was on fire, I still grabbed the fucking blanket and I wrapped myself. And I wasn't naked, but I'm like, let me wrap this myself. Dude, this dude, this crackhead had a had a piece on. He had a gun on him. It, it was a it was a messed up situation. Oh, you just keep saucing this up. Next time you're gonna have a a knife too. Yo, Listen, man, you, just because you live in old hoity toity Jersey, you don't have to experience crackheads. Get on me. Yo, yo, Marcos, you need to take that to Vlad TV, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You need to have a sit down with Vlad. Vlad. Shit about me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, bro, Vlad pays, bro. Vlad yeah, pays for his interviews. You making some money. Yeah, I know he does. I know he does. But, you know, you got to be a certain Polish? level for Vlad. Ain't you Polish? Nah, he, 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 he from Bulgaria. Yo, let me oh, ring this bad. bell. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I just find it funny. Uh, Mauricio Suleiman. Mauricio Suleiman wants Pitbull versus Isaac Cruz, right? And that's the, that's what the headline is right now. Yeah. The title. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, crazy. no, no, because kinda... they're the same person. He wants Pitbull Cruz 
versus Devin Haney, not Pitbull versus oh, man, Isaac you know. Cruz. That would be like <laughs> the man fighting his inner demons in a way, right? Hey, hey, but look, but look. At the end of the day, I find it funny that he wants Cruz versus Haney, but has he publicly come out and said, "Yo, I want Benavidez versus Canelo"? Has he said that? I don't think I've ever heard Mauricio uh, Mauricio say that or any reports on him saying that. I just find that to be funny, man. You know, it's kind of crazy out here in these streets that, you know, you want another sanctioning body uh, fighter to unify with your fighter. Uh, and then again, you know, shout out to Canelo, man. Yo, you just keep moving the needle, my boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to change the topic here a bit. I'm going to get the show going, you know. Uh, Canelo, bro, this talk about uh, – People who criticize you aren't your fans is hilarious, dog. Like, damn. So people can't criticize you anymore? I mean, this is what emotional boxes do, man. You know what I'm saying? When you bring up the fact that he's ducking David Benavidez and people are criticizing him, even his own fans, you know, he just regards them as not being a fan, bro, because he doesn't want to take the flack. Dudes, these dudes move so fucking corny, man. It's not even funny, dog. We really need a change in boxing, man. We need some real fighters in the sport. You know what I'm saying? That they just don't give a fuck. We need more David Benavidez, more Tia Fimos of the world, man. You know what I'm saying? In this sport currently today. We can't keep dealing with the Canelos, the Earl Spencers, the Terrence Crawfords of the world, man. We got to get rid of them motherfuckers, bro. Uh, but shout out to the Davis, too, man, for moving up to 75. You know what I'm saying? Getting ready to get busy. You know, fuck waiting around. You know what I'm saying? For a dude that's just holding up the division, fighting the Jaime Munguias and getting ready to fight the Edgar Belongas of the world. You know, ain't nobody give a fuck about Belonga, man. You know, y'all talking about selling out 7,000. Who cares, bro? The man ain't fought nobody. You know what I'm saying? He gonna five. be a thing of the past five. after he get beat, bro. I mean, either way, he he, he ain't fought nobody. He gonna be a thing of, the pa- uh, thing of the past in the future. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is, man. We moving on. We at 175 now. That's the, that's the high division. You know what I'm saying? Fuck 68. You know what I'm saying? You can all go move up. Come get your title back. Because David, one of the Davids gonna have it very soon, you know? So get ready to move up and get your ass beat, bro. Uh, but yeah, that's it, man. That's it. I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Shout out to you, champ, for the call. Hey, 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 hey. I mean, what up? Do you know Bree Howling? Nah. Oh. Oh. All right. Women, I know. Women's boxing guy. Drew, what it do? You don't, you don't know either. I put it in the um pre pro for you. Um, I think she's uh impressive. I mean, at least that drill she doing. Never seen that in all my life. Hey, uh, what up? Morning, Drew? gentlemen. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, man. Tip Bailey starting early with that chicanery. Talking about we need to bring back real fighters. We got real fighters. You just don't watch them. We got Bam Rodriguez. We got Junto Nakatani. We got the Inoue brothers. Man, we got real fighters, bro. Just you mad that your uh, bald-headed lover, uh, Keith Thurman, man, broke his uh, bicep, bro, and couldn't get that fight, man. So I had to call about Canelo, man. I just love it. I love it. But I like the fight with David moving up. Need to stay busy. Um... I like that Hot Rod getting the fight too. Hot Rod, you know, he deserved he deserves some more shine. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what Mauricio says. I know Nestle gonna press him about that 160 and his countryman Adames. So I ain't gotta worry about that. How do you guys like the fight though with uh with uh, David and, and Hot Rod? We know we ain't gonna see Haney and Isaac anytime soon though. So I ain't even worried about that. I ain't even waste time on that one. It'd be nice to get it, but we know uh, Knucklehead Sean not gonna make that right away. Yeah, Knucklehead Sean ducking. Yo, it's funny. He oh, just yeah, followed you know, me on TikTok today. He's he's such a <laughs> he ducker. Did? Yeah, I don't even be on TikTok, bro. He just followed me today. Random. Mm-hmm. So, no, but I like that early. I, I'm, I weigh, I give David the favorite right away over Hot Rob. It should be a competitive scrap for however long it lasts, but. It's just activity, man. I want to see Dave, David Morrell need to be fighting three times a year, man. Uh, I know we stress that on here a lot, Ness, but I want to see him more, man. I want to see him uh, get acclimated to 175. I, dudes just need to stay up there, bro. Them belts are either going to come vacant or let better be or b ball win or run through them cats. So, you know, let's just get 170, uh, 175 popping, man. But Tim Bayless, man, watch more boxing, bro. 
there's more boxing to be had and um you know i'll pop in and out next i know you got the counter punch counter punch for the the nine gang bangers but we don't need no gang banging today on this nice friday i'm out all right all right yeah man we got a bunch to give out so we just gonna go ahead and get to that trice free yeah. one counter courtesy of the community Yo. What up? Yo, yo. What up, though? What up, though? What's going on? Word. But, uh, Chillin. Chillin. what's going on? Is that king of me? My God. What's going on? But, uh, with this here, man, I, I like David Morrell. So he going up. I like this to to light heavyweight. I like that. I like that. I like that they uh that they not sitting on their hands no more waiting on Canelo, man. I'm I'm with it. They trying to make their own way. Is this a uh, so who you know who getting this fight? Is this going to I'm is I, I can't imagine it's going to be on a pro box or nothing like this. This is going to be on the zone, right? No, Morel fight for PBC, bro. PBC. Amazon. He's still, oh, I was still with P- I didn't know he was still with PBC. We seen that they've been letting people go and whatnot. I heard your man Jer- uh, Jerry Soriano the other day call in. He su- he under the suspicion that he gonna be one of the ones who uh, match from McGuire. So I don't know. PBC seemed like they got a lot up in the air. So I don't know. I don't know. And then oh, Ness man, whoa, what the hell going on with you, man? I got a bonus. Why you keep uh? With this Trevor McCumbie shit, man, you you killing me, man. It's Whoa. like you <laughs> with this man, this Trevor McCumbie shit, bro. You trying to get this guy a fight at all costs? We do not want to see him. He in was Berlanda, about to man. fight Morel for a fucking strap. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I I did, did, you see that shit did not happen because somebody smartened up and said, hell no, Trevor nah, McCumbie. Nah, it fuck, ain't happen because no. they we got can't, a, we can't let we can't allow that shit to go. They got they said a we can't opponent. go for that. They got a better opponent. Exactly, exactly. Just like motherfucking Berlanga, need you need to think of something better. Let's get him like a Boo Boo Andre or something like that. You feel me? Let's do something like that for Berlanga. I don't want no fucking Trevor McCumbie. You got to cut that out, Ness. You keep trying to throw him in the mix. Uh, uh, who you want? For, who you who you said for Berlanga then? I w- I want Boo. Let's get him Boo Boo Andre. Let's get Andre out there. Or let's get Char- let's get him Charlo or something like that. Let's get him a name. I don't want no fucking Trevor McCumbie for Berlanga. Bro, when he's trying to when he's trying to campaign for Canelo. McCumbie's a name. Uh, is <laughs> Andre is Andre he a name in, man, in Florida? Man. In Florida, and he that's a- where and that's where Berlanga relocated to. That's where his fight is rumored to be. Is either Florida or New York. So we need somebody that could draw. Like what is? Like, listen, if it's in New, like, like, listen, listen, New listen, York, you just you know, said this, in New York. This my issue hey, you right just here. Said this, New York. this my issue. We let we let certain teams pick and choose what they gonna do, but other teams can't. So an example, we got Calvin and them saying, "Oh, we ain't gonna fight Shakur because we can't do what we do." So they don't fight Shakur. Now we got Isak saying, "We ain't fighting Shakur. We ain't fighting Devin because we can't do what we do." We cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Canelo, y'all dying for me to talk about Canelo and him not fighting David, though. You see how it is? It's, 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 it's really unfair. Like, bro, everybody, I keep going to this. Motherfuckers fight who they think they could be. They going to fight the style they think they could be. Hey, man, you don't think that boo-boo looked vulnerable? You telling me Berlanga, one of them guys, should he, he trying to campaign for uh, Canelo? I ain't that? never even you say that. You just said it to fight. I ain't, nev- I ain't never even you said that. All I said was this. Hey, man. Oh, all I thought was this. <laughs> Boo-boo ain't going to fill up Florida like McCombie. That's just But you it. just told me po- you just but told me New possibly York. New York. You just told me hey, Bingo, York. thank you King Boo-boo. of Mean. He just told me possibly New yeah. York to me. Yeah. No, no. That's, no. That won't no. sell in listen New York. To me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You getting mad free time, but you're not listening. Go, I'm going Possibly ahead, New York is a Berlanga location. He can only fight in three places right now. Florida, New York, Puerto Rico. New York, not even an option for June. What they going to do? Go head-to-head with top rank? You forgot Zayas already fighting pa- uh, Patrick, former champ. What's his name, Patrick, from Brazil? Check Seria. Like, y'all just, y'all just not remembering. Like, they're not about to go head-to-head with the machine that been building Puerto Ricans all their life. Top rank been building Puerto Ricans up. The only one outside of top rank they got a claim to building Puerto Ricans is uh, Don King, no? 
But I gotta go. It, hella, free, hella super <laughs> chats. Counter punch. I gotta get to. Counter Yo, punch. Got real, real quick. I got. I didn't even look on Box Rec, but that's gotta be the most Jamaican name, Trevor McCumbie. Like, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know where he's from. Damn, no, nah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe he's south from oh. south, from south. Uh, what is it? Where, 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 where's uh Bob Marley Bops from? Maybe that's where, cause he white. Uh, Trevor yeah, was white. white. He's white. Yeah, so he's south. What is it? South Africa or South uh Jamaica? Yeah, his middle south, name's Nestor. Cause some of the South Africans is white as hell too. What, what was that? Remember that fight of Thomas Astuzian? He was white. He was fucking. Nah, he was I mean, fucking, I'm pretty uh, sure. I'm pretty too. sure most of. I'm pretty sure most South Africans are white, right? Hell Jerry. yeah, that boxer Astuzian was just like Marcos, blonde hair, tall as fuck. He never panned oh, out. Nah, though. just just the name. I didn't even look, but the name just sound like you know what I mean. First of all, Trevor. Trevor's a very popular Jamaican name, and then McCumbie just sounded just you know what I mean. But again, I'm under the influence. Don't listen to me. This is some good good medicina. Hmm. <laughs> I got counterpunch Hawk Marilyn Hawk Marilyn Hawk You out here wildin' Oh, yo. Oh, you made it. Yo. What's good? Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, I don't even know what this shit I'm smoking. Anyway, good, good, good Friday to uh, TBV, um, Nas, Danny, and uh, who we got there? We got Marco with a K, no oh. S, and the King of Essex. I mean. Oh, Essex County. Oh, okay, salute to, the, salute to the King and salute to Marco and Danny. Um, and that's uh, shit, man. Let me see. So, Morel is Morel chasing David? What? What's going on? I mean, he looked like it. He He's going to 75, up to 75 with David. To... Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Because the man got like what 10 fights, 11 fights. That's it. That's it. He on his heels. He chasing. He chasing. Man, damn, Dave. Um, and as far as uh, uh, Haney and Pitbull, that ain't happening, man. Pitbull, for real, I think Pitbull is a little guy. He got he, I think he's going to try to chase Tank. I see him going back down before he would uh, 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 go out of Haney. And his um, his um, uh, mandatory, uh, that boy would knock uh, Cruz uh, 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 Pitbull the hell out. <laughs> Pitbull run into them shots from that old man and get his ass crucified out there, man. I don't, I don't think Pitbull gonna fight that boy. So I got Pitbull going back down and fighting Haney. It's the same situation. Like I was, like I still don't think Javante gonna end up in the ring with that boy, uh, uh, Frank, because he boxes. You know, he moves. He boxes. Not that he's so great, but he boxes. He moves, and they don't be putting Tank in there with fights like that. But anyway, if you do, you do. But um. The same thing with Haney uh, uh, and Pitbull. They don't want to put those, those even when they put this, uh, um, let me see, Pitbull in there with them boxers and stuff because they make him look bad. He looked bad in this fight before the fight he just had. And he, uh, what's that other guy? Uh, God dang it. The, um, who's the other champion the, the, um, in that same weight class just got the belt? Uh, in which division? 135? 40, 40, 40. The popular guy. Uh, T.O.? Pitbull? T.O., T.O. Pitbull. Yeah, T.O. T.O. like... <laughs> yeah, like T.O. <laughs> like... All, we all said a different popular guy. <laughs> yeah, T.O. like Tank. Um, all, all three of them. T.O., I mean, two of them. They're not going to be... Um, I still don't believe he's going to get fight Devin because T.O. does horrible against guys that box. Every time he gets in the ring with a guy that box and move, he does horrible. That's why he ain't getting in that, that fight. I don't think Pitbull going to take that fight because he'll look horrible. And Tank Davis ain't fighting. But only Tank, well, Tank Davis, in my opinion, if he fought Devin Haney, he would have the best shot to land that one shot. So, but that's the reason why I just don't believe uh, 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 Pitbull going to fight Haney, no. And he not going to fight that Barroso guy. I don't believe Pitbull would last a round with Barroso. The well, old man can That punch. is the bell. <laughs>
And we got Majid Counter. Yo, yo, you can hear me? Loud and everybody need to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join YouTube members and Patreon for something. Uh, I'm just calling in for that Pitbull Haney topic. A couple of days ago, I seen um, fucking Bill Haney say that they're not talking to Al Heyman unless it's a tank fight. So I ain't even understanding how that shit would get made just based off those words alone. And um, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, that last call you got, that shit was kind of weird. The niggas is tabbing Pitbull not to, fu not to fight fucking Barroso. Cause that nigga showed power. We done seen Pitbull fight a nigga with power and that didn't even get knocked dizzy, ain't get dropped, none of that shit. So I, I'm just trying to figure out where the fuck people pulling that shit from. Like he won't even fight Barroso. You know, for the better of boxing, I hope that all of these entities with all four of the chance figure out a fucking way to get all these dudes in the ring. All of the fact that we sitting here talking about he ain't going to fight him. He ain't going to fight him. That, that That's some whack-ass shit. So shout-out to you, Ness, for trying to push boxing forward. And uh, I don't even know, but I don't like that shit. But this ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. Fuck all that shit. I'm out, man. All right. But we got smoke. We got Smoker J, love that name, five dollars. Ness, it's different. Canelo is undisputed with all the belts and won't fight the number one contender at his weight. Drop the belts then. Oh, I'm sorry. I ain't know Crawford dropped the belts. My bad. My bad. I always My tell bad. people it's not Canelo's fault. It's the sanctioning bodies. Oh yeah, they the ones got to do their job. I agree. Why would he give up belts? Why would anybody just give up a belt? I mean, to not pay the sanction fees? Yeah, but at, at that level, when you got the money, like, of course he's going to hold on to the belt. Sanct the bodies need to do their job if they really care. But they're getting the sanctioning fees from him to business. Why would they yeah. get rid of Canelo? Yeah. He makes the most money to fight. We hear you, Cliff. Man, fuck the sanctioning bodies and their percentage and all that bullshit. That don't got nothing to do with what's right. And we got to start putting some motherfucking standards on what's ducking and what's not. Listen, when nigga like Tank don't fit Devin's style, is not good for him, or motherfucker like Canelo don't want to fight David because for whatever fucking reason, that is ducking. There's no way around it. When you reach the pinnacle, when you reach the motherfucking top, and you can't, you won't take the best fights, the biggest fights, the most money fights. It's ducking. Now, when you're in a position of pit bull and you don't want to fight Devin, that's not ducking because you're not even at the fucking top yet. You can go left, right, all over the fucking place and still grow your career and still gain more respect. But when you're at the top, there's only one motherfucking option that you can go. And anything backwards. Or, or staying at that level is ducking. And the same thing with David Benavidez. It ain't no fucking reason if he didn't want to fight Morrell, which will be probably one of the best two fighters at 68, even if they go to 75, some two of the best fighters. If they don't want to fight Morrell until they both have a belt or one of them have a belt, and I don't want to hear no interim fucking belt shit, a legit title, one of the ones that Canelo's bitch ass needs to fucking defend or or he needs to give up. Then David will fight. Mor well, Benavidez will fight Morel. Until then, there ain't no reason for him to jump out the window and fight that motherfucker, which is probably the most dangerous fight over fucking Canelo. Give me my goddamn belt, and I'll defend it like a champion, like you're supposed to. Tank, stop being a bitch, and you fight Shakur or you fight Devin, because ain't nobody else we don't want to fucking see. Pitbull, you do what the fuck you want to do. Because you ain't even that special and you ain't proved shit yet. And that's how it really goes. Stop acting like it's all the fucking same. I don't give a fuck if fighters want to fight the fighters they think is gonna they can beat and who they can't beat. Who gives a fuck? Fight who you're supposed to fight. Grow the fucking sport. 
And that's it, man. I'm out. All right, CYP. Damn, homeboy is going off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, uh, I got a, uh, I got a problem. You know what I'm saying? I got a problem. For one, we gonna stick Pitbull. Pitbull can be a star in this game. I'll be trying to figure out why people hate him so much, but we know why. We know why. But Pitbull actually can be a star of his own fan base and join, you know, that 14 year, what you want to call it, because I think Pitbull got the goods. So keep hating on Pitbull all y'all want and watch that motherfucker keep rising and, and building up the Mexican fan base so we can get that mega rematch. Hey, but, hey, hey, didn't Kovalev have a hydration clause? Yes, he did. Should we take credit away? Because if he beats David with hydration clause, He's not going to get no credit. But we already gave you credit when you did it to Kovalev. Oops. CYP Discoveries shouldn't have told y'all that. So he's making up shit again. And all I want to say is this. Be honest, be honest, be honest. My man, J Mac, JT, Tip, Brandon, Danny, Mario, I mean, J Billy, Sim, C Dub, Bo, Majid, you know, Borough City. Ain't this about a bitch? This motherfucker want to. Want to wait? Want a weight clause, a hydration clause on a dude who's already at the weight class, was there before you at the weight class, and you undisputed at the weight class. But if Tank wants a hydration clause on a weight class that he's not at against a dude who's bigger than him on a weight class he ain't never fought at, all hell breaks loose. But when Canelo want to do it, it's okay. Ain't that about a bitch? I'm confused here. Didn't David say he'll take the weight weight clause? He don't care. He'll take our Jason clause. He don't care. So he's telling you, do what you got to do. But for some reason, I don't get no credit. Dude, you've done it before. Your fans seem to have a problem when Tank do it, but they cool when you do it. Y'all know the word. It's a problem if they do it. huh? It's a problem when we do it. huh? Y'all know the song? I'm trying to figure this shit out. We not going to keep pretending like this ain't a hot topic. My man is a hypocrite, and his fans are hypocrites. Ain't that about a bitch? CYP looking good as ever because y'all are hypocrite fans. And I've been telling y'all, y'all need handicaps to stay on top of boxing. That's why I don't worry about you. Because if all things were fair, you motherfuckers would get your asses whooped. So keep up with the handicaps because we love you in boxing, and we want you to stay. So, hey, just another day. In the motherfucking neighborhood. Ain't that about a bitch? See why he gone. That man need to get some day quail. Tip. Yep. <clears throat> Yo, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, man. Shout out to crying ass Cliff, man. You know what I'm saying? Always on the phone crying and shit. Listen, bro. There's a problem with you Haney fans, man. You motherfuckers always, always calling in, talking about Tank. Like, my man, did y'all not move to 140? Like, I'm confused. Why the fuck y'all still asking for Tank, man? If y'all, if y'all, if y'all already convinced that the dude ain't going to come up to 135, I mean, 140, why y'all still calling for Tank, bro? If y'all feel like the fight not going to happen, why y'all still calling for Tank? Ain't a female up there? It's funny that y'all got all this energy, all this energy in the world. For Tank Davis, but y'all ain't got this energy for Tiafimo Lopez. Was Devin not undisputed? Could Devin not move up and fight T.O.? He just, like, come on, bro. Let's be serious. Y'all got to stop the bullshit. See, y'all want to call Tank out and say Tank don't want to make the fight, but your boy Devin don't want to make the fight with Tiafimo, bro. You know what I'm saying? Tiafimo is still on air right now. On Twitter, talking about, yo, I ain't got shit lined up for the rest of the, uh, you know what I'm saying, for the time being, bro. There ain't nobody stepping up to the plate, but y'all going to criticize Tiafimo when you make another fight, huh? Like, come on, bro. Y'all got to stop that BS, bro. For real. Y'all be letting dad get away with all the bullshit in the world. And this is what I was talking about the other day. Y'all got this boy on a protection program, man. Eh? Y'all got this boy on a protection program and nobody criticizes him. That's why he never going to grow. That's why he never going to grow. I'm telling you, that's why he won't sell. That's why he won't be hated. I mean, the way he, the, the way he should be, you know what I'm saying? If you want to reach that quote-unquote Mayweather status, which he's chasing. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all protect the motherfucker so much, man. 
Y'all gotta stop that bullshit with this kid, bro. The motherfucker, the motherfucker, his his dad been on it, been on the motherfucking uh, on, on, on the TBV live talking about yeah, T Fimo or something. We gonna save for forty seven. Why y'all saving it for forty seven? Why can't y'all make it happen at forty? Now Devin on record talking about yeah, he wanna undisputed at forty. Bro, you know you're not gonna make that happen, man. Stop the cap, bro. Like man, these dudes be flogging, man. And y'all be making these motherfuckers slide with all this bullshit talk, bro. When I'm done, man. Next, the next Haney fan to come in and talk that bullshit, I'm on your ass, bro. All right, Cliff. Uh, I mean, yeah, Cliff, you got nah, a counter punch. No, no, no. Oh, Cliff counter. Cliff got a counter punch, courtesy of Optimus Prime. And we got Mac and Cheese right back at us after dropping the $40 with another $20. <laughs> Forget a wannabe challenge. Let's get this cash app challenge and join the competition. Oh, I hear you, champ. Salute. Juan, what up? Yo, yo, what up, y'all? What's good? Shit, chillin', man. That last call, man, just tell me, y'all. Just like a tip. Crazy as hell. I mean, I, I do agree. It's, it, it, it's getting timing. I feel like Haney, just, you can do better. I mean, you can build yourself. You don't really need Tank. I was just saying that yesterday. It's a lot of other fighters um, out here to get in the future. But, I mean, hey, it's a rivalry, so, you know, they want the money. But to say that he ain't trying to get T.O. is crazy as fuck. Nigga was chasing T.O. at 135. What the fuck? And I'm pretty sure they was trying to fight him at 140. This nigga T.O. went from, what he's what they say, 5,000, I mean, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million. Like, come on now. His and T.O. energy is never there when it's really time to make the fight happen. That's the problem. When Devin is free, he go radio silent. Or it would be some bullshit. So you, you can relax with that. And the thing is, all, all the other fights that uh, could be possibly made after that, Bill just said that's like stay busy fights, and I, I see why he say that. But the problem is when he fight, if he fights a bro, pit bull, and then when the results is what they are, because he able to just his talent, his styles. We know this, this is boxing, so stylistically, I'm pretty sure Devin is gonna cruise through those fights just like he did Regis. Niggas be talking shit about Regis like he ain't shit now after that because he made it look easy. But they forgot all about the two-time champion. And fuck me, the two-time champion. It was just a simple fact that he won the war with uh, Josh Taylor. So even that fight with Josh Taylor could have been, it could have went his way. And nobody would have said shit. So what is we talking about? It is what it is. The talent is there. I do think, I feel like Haney is the type of fighter that's going to run to the smoke. And I do think Tank could give him a, the, the best fight. Like, I ain't. Niggas ain't niggas know that, that that fight is 50 50 and yeah, it can go either way, but they want the smoke. And that's why I, I'm a Haney fan. I'm telling that nigga, you can go to boots. So, not all Haney fans is like deflecting. Like, I want to see him fight the best people out there. So, yeah, that's my call. Shout out to DB. Quan, appreciate you on the check in. Um,. Let's see here. I got to get to these uh, super chats. Looks like we got Israel. Welcome to the prospect level. Smoke a J. We read that. Optimus Prime. Boo Boo needs to take notes from Morel. How to chase someone the right way. I mean, Boo Boo's on the rebuild. He just chased Benavidez in law. So, like, we got to give him a pass. I don't know. They they talking about, oh, he should fight Boo Boo and all this stuff. I guess Berlanga, you know, Boo Boo should be on the level where coming off a loss, he should be able to fight Berlanga. But I don't know that Keith Conley's going to make that Berlanga fight with uh, Boo Boo Andre. But, again, Berlanga's a big dude. I've met him in person. He's obviously a big puncher. Maybe Andre can't take his punch because he's a smaller guy coming up from 54, essentially moving all the way to 68, and uh, only for the first couple of rounds looking de halfway decent, right? JXV88, dos pesos. 
It's not a duck if David Benavidez goes to 175 and stays there. Henry Brown, Devin Haney versus anyone with a title. In my opinion, Pitbull Cruz should fight Matias Origes Prograce first. And Ness, when you ready for them. Uh, I'm assuming those are burpees is what you meant to spell. Uh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I didn't do a lot of working out the week my wife, uh, my, I said my wife, the week my daughter was here. Um, you know, I ran as much as I could, but it certainly wasn't the same. So, uh, you know, we back on the grind. We got to start back, back from ground zero again and, and try to get another consistent, you know, streak in. I know the feeling, man. It's off a of spring break. Yeah, nah, my daughter came for spring break. I wanted to be super dad, so basically said yes to everything, and uh, there was no time for me and my wife to do our workouts as much as we wanted to. I mean, obviously, I could have did. I could have. I could have. You know, try to squeeze it in in the morning, but it it, it got tough. Julio Guzman five dollars. In fairness to Tank. It wasn't a hydration, de- excuse me, it wasn't dehydration that knocked out Ryan. Henry Brown back at us with another $2. Burpees, come on, Ness. I told you, Haney is the man. I don't know what we betting burpees on exactly. Lake County, $5. Tip, why you act like T.O. didn't say a dev fight is five years from happening four years ago at the post-fight presser to the Loma fight? T.O. don't want dev. And again, that go that boils down to the styles you fight. You know what style suits you and what style doesn't suit you. So, you know, uh, yeah. You gonna fight the styles that suit you. We got JXV88. So Haney fans are deflecting and not tank fans. Laughing out loud on emojis two times. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm I'm with well, whoever said, you know, look, why are we even talking about that? Devin's at 40. There's a lot of competition at 40. Uh, there's really no need to be talking about Tank until, you know, he says he's ready. Uh, still, I'm still kind of taken back by Subriel saying that of all the guys he wants to fight, he wants to fight Pitbull. I mean, you know, we haven't had a Mexican-Puerto Rican rivalry in a long time. Like I brought it up to him in the interview. You know, the last big one was obviously uh, Juan Manuel Lopez and Orlando Salido. Look at what Salido went on to do. So for Puerto Ricans, that's a big one. You know, Salido, after that, went on to fucking Spark Loma. You feel me? Had a great fight with Mikey, I'm pretty sure, before or after that. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, nah. That's just for legacy. The other guys are a little, you know, but what are you going to do? It would be a great fight. I mean, any any fight with Subriel and any fight with Pitbull is going to be a fun fight. So, yeah, even, even, go ahead. You got it. You got it. I was going to say, even when you say legacy, though, you know, Marco, it's kind of like the legacy of of this style of fighter, you know. And and I was listening to when Matias said that. I mean, he's trying to be more like an action hero than a thespian, if you will, if we're using that analogy. He ain't trying to go in there and show that he can figure out a boxer. He's trying to go in there and maximize his value and make what he believes is the most entertaining and the most exciting fight. But you do also hear the element where he's looking for the fighter where he may have the best chance against. You get what I'm saying? So, you think know, so? You, you think I that's mean, what Yeah, I mean, what, do, do you, I think he has a much better Hell chance yeah. than, Pitbull than, than fighting Shakur. No, he Devin. has a better chance, but do you think that's what he's looking for? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, absolutely. Based off, based off what he said on the show yesterday, yes. Well, what did what did he say that makes you think he, he wants to choose? Because he made it seem, correct me if I'm wrong, because it wasn't Spanish, that he wants to fight him strictly because it'd be a Puerto Rico Mexico great fight, not because he's easier. I mean, I mean, when I asked, because well, uh, you the one that asked the question, and you right. said who who would be the hardest, who would be the easiest. Right. Pitbull wasn't mentioned. He said. He said the the hardest, most exciting fight uh, would be Pitbull. He gave the reasons why both come forward, both action, both you know, both look in the exchange. Then I doubled down. I'm like, who? Well, if he's the the, the toughest, who's the easiest, uh-huh. right? And he said that 
he doesn't have interest in those fights. He said that guys don't have anything to offer and they don't sell because he's just this huge like seller, right? So that that matters. Bank obviously sells. Yeah. So again, he he specifically uh, said T. Well, he said that he said those guys, and then he doubled down because you mentioned Tank, and he's like, absolutely, I have respect for him, um, and you know he sells. But Devin doesn't sell, Shakur doesn't, or uh, Tio doesn't have anything to offer. Hmm. Okay. Not Shakur, Tio. And again, if if you just think, look, think it from the tactical standpoint, if you are a puncher yourself, do you want to be in there against, you know, a guy that's a, 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 a blue chip, if you will, an Olympian or, or some sort of, you know, very... very I, Shakur when I say that and then even with Devin is you know somebody that's just very technical you know Tim Duncan style like like what what do you want if you a puncher you want to be in and say listen I'd rather be in a shootout with me and him either going to punch each other out versus you know me trying to foot cut off the ring and see if I can land my punch and, and do all this not at least that's what I say yeah no nah, I mean some people some fighters would prefer to stand toe to toe but some fighters would rather not have to deal with somebody who stands toe to toe and can and can take a punch. Let's not forget, Pitbull could take a punch. They'd rather deal with you know a Haney or a Shakur who they just have to chase. I don't know. You ever you ever like chasing a woman a long time before you? I don't got to chase anything. I mean, they'd be knocking I'm down. I'm asking oh. you in theory. Where you not, now? There's a difference between meeting your end goal, but do you want to chase? Like you, you understand being courted, right? Yeah. Chasing's annoying. I get it. Like, yeah, I so get it. No, no fight. I mean, Tio com- just complained about it against Jermaine Ortiz, the whole discrepancy, right? Hitch, same thing. So, you know, well, it was more holding than, than Chase, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I get it. So, but still, I think Tank should have been the, the number one answer for Super Hill. But he, he also said that too. He said it would be an honor to fight Tank because he does believe that he's a puncher and something, something, something. I listened yeah, to Yeah, he gave hell of respect to Tank. Hell of respect yeah, to yeah, Tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You uh, was there, Marco. What you mean? Yeah. I don't speak Espanol. Nah, man. Marcos Do you... don't watch boxing or listen much. <laughs> Let me get to Elohim James counter. Marcos, who's hot rod? Roddy Piper. Yeah. Told you. He said Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Piper. What up, Elohim James? Everybody knows that. What's good? What's happening, panel? How's everybody doing this morning? Good, sir. How you feeling? I feel great, man. It's a real nigga birthday today. You heard? It's a real ninja birthday today. You heard? Happy birthday, yes, champ. Happy birthday. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate happy it, y'all, birthday. man. I'm just happily, I'm happy to be alive, happy to be amongst y'all. Talking his boxing once again on this earth, you feel me? Uh, all praise to God, man. I just thank him for uh, for everything, man. But uh, yo, what I look like dropping thirty for a bitch who popped dirty? <laughs> Boss. Where's Danny at? Where's Let's Danny go! at? Let's go! Man, you probably you probably playing that shit in your car, aren't you? You probably dumping that shit. With them busted Danny. ass subwoofers you got. Danny, <laughs> Danny ain't happy. Like 30, Danny. <laughs> hey, yo, why she starting on your girl like that? Hey, no, nah, but huh? no, nah, but for real though, somebody, somebody like I'm not gonna tell her, but like one of y'all need to go comment or like just not even comment, like I mean shoot a DM like bro. Somebody with an iPhone 15 like myself could have shot her a better music video than that. Like, come on. I know y'all seen that video, bro. Y'all was not impressed by that video at all. Uh, he hey, hey. I, not what only was I not impressed by the voice? video, the bars was, was a little What was that when she had too, the... Uh, on, guys. Bro, She's a box. Exactly. Come on, bro. Exactly. Thank you, Marco. Somebody got some sense up here. Can, can Alicia do it? Can can Bob Garner? Oh, uh, the 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 Bulgarian, uh, the Bulgarian is trying to tell us about rap bars. I right. I grew up in Hell's Kitchen. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you, Marco. Man, only Hell's Kitchen I know is yeah. Gordon Ramsay, Top Shelf, Elite. <laughs> fucking money <laughs> off. Fucking get... money off, nah, man. He, all I know that that's all that I know is, is, is the that's he coming off that bald head of yours. <laughs> 
Hey, champ, I'm you not even bored right AB now. Smoke. Why you laughing? You I ain't even bored right AB now. Smoke. Okay, that's good. That's good. You, you growing up Caesar. Yeah. Nah, yeah, I just I just ain't got a cut, champ. I, it's been like two weeks, so I got I got the Nesta going on. Right? My hair probably longer than us right now. Oh, okay, that's what it do, man. Yeah, man, I'm just calling to, to shoot the shit with y'all for real. You know what I mean? You know I love boxing, man. But it's my birthday, man, so I got to fool with y'all boys a little bit. Hey, uh, hello, uh, him. Uh, Happy yeah, birthday hello, to you, brother. Hello, him. Appreciate you, Danny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You seen Clarissa was on Sway in the morning? Did I see what? Did you see Clarissa was on Sway in the morning? You lying. Listen. Oh, John in Tennessee, it. go ahead. What you want to say? <laughs> Man, you... I seen it. I seen it. You seen it? <laughs> hey, yo, that shit was trash. John in Tennessee, go ahead. What you want to say? That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway. Oh, come on. Ah. John in Tennessee, go ahead. What you want to say? That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airway. Oh, come on. Hey, yo, yo, you playing, man. You playing, man. Yo, you guys respect the greatest female fighter today. Yo, I'm on, I'm on her time. She can't, call, she can't call my man Danny a fucking dick rider and think I ain't coming for her. What? Oh, she did. Bro, but still, but still, bro. Look, hold on. Bro, we good. We good. We in the hills. But look though. Oh shit, Danny came on camera for that one. Dang, I can't hear you. Hey, but look though. Damn, it's a nice little. Nice little Vegas. I had to blow uh, me a blunt. Oh no, it's it's uh, ninety. It's it's ninety. It's ninety out here today, baby. Hey, look, the sky look good. Damn, she said. You that. said Scott Nicholson look good. The sky. Her too. Oh, the sky behind me. Okay, okay. I thought you said Scott Nicholson look good in her yeah. fight, of course. Um, but yeah, bro, like champ. If if you need somebody to shoot you a music video, I ain't never done it. But uh, I could do a better job for sure. Come on, man! That video with the one in the in the jewelry store, you hating on nah, that one? Nah, no, 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 no. The one that she dropped that, that one was song. Good with the I mean, that it was, was only good. it was only like a fifteen second. That was nah, a bro. She she dropped a video on her YouTube, and it is atrocious. She also got a bar in there going at uh Savannah Marshall. Mm. What she like, say? What she like say? What she the... say? I mean, what was the bar? I feel like they. Sh I feel like they shot the music video with the uh, iPhone 5S, you know, the first one with the fingerprint. So so who's better? Who's a better rapper, Adrian Broner or Clarissa? Adrian Broner. Broner, bro. for sure. Absolutely. Bro, I mean, Broner I mean, was I mean, on tour. Broner was like, hot about it, bro. at one point. Danny, Danny at one point, Broner was literally... Hey, yo, at one point, Broner had some shit that was actually decent. Well, how many... Broner was on tour with the Migos... Hold on, he was on tour with the Migos and uh and and somebody I feel like Ross or some shit, bro. Like his shit was actually not that bad. Band so camp was popping for a little while. How many fighters in history were good to really good rappers? Probably very few. I but can't th that's the thing, they don't rap. They that's the thing. They like like they're boxes, right? So it's like it's like I don't expect you to drop no fire, but if you try it, you are susceptible to being criticized. Hold on, I got I some agree. more fire bars from the quote. She said this regarding uh, Savannah Marshall. Damn, Danny said, first time out of cones, you about to get dumb high right now. He's smoking in, in, in tobacco. It's a wrap. No, no, no. I've smoked out of, uh, like, backwards and shit before. I said, this is the first time I've rolled one. I've never in my life rolled one. You know what I mean? Until today. I'm like, fuck, I'm out of clones. I haven't smoked all day, keep in mind. Let like, all that to... energy, every everything y'all seen, that was organic. Hold on, get this hot fire from Clarissa Shields. She said, 14-0, and 0, my record undefeated. Savannah had a 0-2, so I had to delete it. Ooh! Oh. Boss! Boss! Yeah. Somebody just said this. Roy Jones, of course, my favorite fighter of all time. His bars were decent. Yeah, he was, was but he was shit. whack though. He was whack. Yeah, but Boosie though. wrote for him. Oh, did Word? he? Yeah. Damn, oh. and I and I still ain't think that shit was hot. Y'all must have forgot. I never thought that was hot. That shit was dope for like the nineties. Like I never played that shit in my life, and I had a whip in the nineties. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying he ain't hot, but like Boosie ain't never been for me. 
You, I know, I know he for some people. He just ain't never been for me. Yeah, I ain't never played a Boosie track in my life unless he was a feature that I ain't even know he was on. Just saying. You yeah, know I, mean? I didn't even know Boosie was until he went on Tyson's show and Tyson asked him if he was gay and all that. Oh, we got Cliff with the counter. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Cliff with the counters. Yep, yep. All right. We don't hear you. Drop out, jump back in. We going out to Georgie Porgy, Boston. Hey, yo. What's happening, happening people? people? My G, how I sound? Like you never Not left. Clear. Yeah, yeah, yo, I mean, that's what I mean. I mean, my dude. Everybody else on the panel, on. Danny. Man, let me let me rock this shit for a couple minutes real quick. I was playing a friend of mine about Majit. He's a dedicated caller. He'll be calling more than 10 years. You know, part of the family, TBB family. And I'm like, this dude name is not even Majit. Next mistake, I mean, we call him a G since they're that day on. And he rolled with it. And I see all this picketing between Danny and Ness. And I'm like, yo, this shit never changed. I love TBB, bro. Everybody here welcome with open arms. And, like, nobody catch feelings and shit like that. Shout out to you, Mr. Gibbs. I don't have a lot to say about Mauricio. You know how I think about these mafias, but, fuck, I, I don't mind that fight. You know, people can do it if Haney's supposed to be, like, you know, beating Garcia easily. So I'm not mad with that fight. If they, he want to put a belt there, enter on some bullshit like that, I don't even give a fuck. But I know that's a right. That right there, that's the right dancing part uh, they, for they, Haney. They, they both uh, world champions already. No, but WBC, right? My research came up with that. So what? What is it that the the uh, Cruz guy right now? WBA, and but he the, says that Cruz that's what I'm saying. has and always WBC, wanted to fight so, for the WBC. So he say now he's a world champion. Devin got the WBC. I try to make that fight at 35. It couldn't happen. Let's make it happen now at 40. At 40. All right, I get you. All right, all right. So he's a legit bell then. All right, so even better, baby. You know, I ain't mad Yeah, yeah. That. When, you know, this, this a nice when Pitbull beat Rosie. I'm, I'm down for when that When Pitbull one. beat Rosie. They get my pay-per-view money all day. Yo, but I got to go. Not yeah. seeing TBB every day. Everybody support the channel. Try to get 500, 700, whatever fucking thumbs up it is for the rest of the community, you know, to participate in the shoddy. And I'm out. <laughs> 700, Papa. 700 likes. 700 likes. We are unlocked the chat. Mauricio Suleiman coming up in 20 Danny, minutes. Uh, Don't go anywhere. Before you go out to the next call, I got to cut out of here. I will be listening. Though. I got to get on the road and do some things, handle some business. But be sure to check me out here, of course. And the championship rounds. Go check out that full episode. It's just been posted uh, on Wednesday, of course. King Amin of Essex on Instagram. King Amin of Essex on Twitter. Marco, Ness, Danny, community. I'm out. Peace. Arriba dirt, my brother. Peace. You, you, you the man. Um, up next, Cliff with the counter. What it do? Cliff. What is up with Cliff not connecting today? Cliff, all righty then. We going out to Spider Rico. Oh. Spider Rico. Can you hear me? We hear you. We hear you. What's the word? What's the word of the day? What's the verse of the day? I got you. I got you. I already did my reading today. You know, you got to, uh, you know, I'll say it right now. A lot of those who 
practice patience and self-restraint. Patience and self-restraint. I just read that, y'all. So maybe out there somebody needs to hear that. I know I do. Uh, they got me on the block hot with a Glock today. I'm protecting the block with a Glock. I ain't lying to y'all. It's April 12th. I'm not afraid to be who I want to be. Say what I want to say. And think what I want to think. Rest in peace, Muhammad Ali. Those are his words. Huh. What else I got for y'all? Don't never, don't never let nobody box you in. Think outside the box. Champ, you gonna talk about the topic or are you trying to make this a, a daily thing where we keep it moving on you? On the topic. Pitbull Cruz, somebody said that Pitbull Cruz wasn't hurt by Tank Davis. He was hurt and he was stunned. But he has a great poker face, as we all should. Don't let don't never let nobody see when you hurt. All right, Dustin. I tried to show respect to your show. I ain't gave my own words. It's that's about the Morgan with love. I'm gone. Cliff, trying you again. <laughs> Marco is out of control. No, I'm dead. I'm dead. Dead ass. Nah. It's a serious question. Nah, man. I'm not even entertaining you. Okay. Cliff, why in the fuck, Cliff? Call in on the landline, Cliff. The number to call, Cliff, is... uh. That number is 563-999-3427. Call us up. Rocky, what up? Yo, yo. We hear you. Hey, what's up to everybody listening? What's up, TVV? What up with everybody at the panel? Um... Speaking on the topic, man, that, that Devin Haney and Pitbull, to me, that's the worst fight at 140 as far as the champions go. I don't I don't really care to see that fight unless Pitbull can unify with another champion first and give me a reason to believe in him to, to beat Devin Haney. I w I'd rather see Devin Haney go to ESPN, handle Sa Sandor Martin, and then take on Tia Fimo and unify and then see uh, Pitbull go against Matias or vacate and, and fight a uh, tank and have Matias fight Barroso. And then the winners of all that, then I want to see that undisputed fight. But to go straight into a Pitbull fight, that's like, that's a recipe for Devin to flop again. Because nobody believes that Pitbull can beat Devin. The thing is with Devin, like, why why are we going to get excited to see a fight where he most likely going to win? Like, Pitbull, to me, got to do... Now, Now Pitbull beats uh, Matias, then, yeah, then, boom, we believe in it, and it's a bigger fight. So that's that's pretty much my thoughts on that. And then um, just to touch on your interview yesterday, man, great interview. That shit had me laughing, man. Uh, uh, Matias over there, Bill Haney, all that stuff, man. Uh, great, great job. Even though Danny had low energy, but he always hating on Matias. We know that. But that's why we need him on the show, man. Danny's the man. Great translating. But uh, that's all I got, fellas, man. I appreciate y'all for taking my call. Fuck out of here. Nah, man. Uh, yesterday was fucked up, man. I literally went back. To listen to that shit, to 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 see, and I wasn't tripping, bro. Like, I was I was literally the same throughout the interview until I was being interrupted, and I know I got flustered, and I know I'm the type to think like, I right, I I'm gonna remember this shit, and then you know I start paying attention to what somebody else say for forget the shit, then I gotta think about it. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, fuck. What was I gonna say? Cliff, talk to me. Ness, yeah, any recommendations for people trying to super chat on their phone? Uh, and yeah, it's not allowing them that have super chatted before. Uh, yeah, man. Yo, can log you hear out. Me? I hear you, Cliff. Danny just always okay. Go ahead. To have the conversation the minute I go to a caller. But yeah, I would say log out, log back in. 
you know, closing the app out, you know, deleting the app, re-downloading it. Uh, those are just the small little, you know, troubleshooting things. But Cliff, it's on you. Yo, y'all let... What, what what the fuck is his name? Is it Tip Bayless? Is is, is that the one who who called called up talking about crying ass Cliff? Yeah. And the shots and shit? Is it, yo, listen, that's CYP's son, all right? It's number one. <laughs> Want to be CYP. But I'm not going to attack him personally. We're going to get at what he said, which was stupid. And y'all let him get away with it. Yo, you always defend and tank, my dude. So you, I know you listening. So counterpunch and say something that actually has, like, addresses your argument in a positive way. Yo, listen, you can't get at Devin when you're comparing them to Tank. Devin ain't in no protection program. You're talking about why Devin, why we don't got the same energy for Devin for not fighting Tio. Bro, have you been living under a rock? You haven't seen all the clips of Devin running down on Tio at 35? And then when he got to 40, you didn't see... Bill told his father, don't say it. Don't say it. Come on, man. Don't say it. He like, we want 20 million, 10 million, whatever dumb shit he said. That was fine. And you know, Bill, Bill entertained anything. He shut Bill up. I ain't never seen nobody shut Bill up. Bill stopped talking and he just walked away like, oh, he said it. Priced himself out. So how can you even say something so stupid? Like, Devin be Devin been running down on Tio. Tio don't want the Devin fight, at least not right now. Devin has ran down on Tio, Shakur, I'm um, not Shakur, Tio, Ryan, Tank, and anybody, Loma, anybody that we we sent Devin out to get his father put the hit out on him, served the warrant, as as he likes to say. And the same thing, Shakur. That's the only one that y'all could even. Like, that's the only one you can make argument about. And if you want to make the argument about Shakur, we could always got the 25%. We even sent him a contract. Even if Devin really didn't want that fight yet, he was still man enough to send an offer and put it out there like, yo, what's, what's good? You going to take it or leave it? So Devin, he's the one, he stands on business, and he should be respected for that. Tank, we got a laundry list of fighters he's avoided. It's to the point now – where, like, his own fans are starting to be like, all right, Tank, enough is enough. Like, after Frank, where's Tank going to go? If Tank doesn't go to, I don't know, up to 40 or fight Shakur, man, it's going to like it's gonna get ugly for him, and his numbers ain't going to do good. The Ryan fight, it was perfect, because now that Tank got to the million, he's going to go back to his little 200,000 pay-per-view buys, and I bet you it's going to get lower and lower, because nobody don't want to see him fighting these bums. If he ever wants to make that money again, he gonna have to risk that. Oh, and I feel bad for the streets when he lose. But Chant, that's that, man. That's that that's bell, though. We appreciate the call in. Uh, remember, if you want to call in, that phone number, they switched it on us. So now we are at 563-999-3427. Press one, one time, that'll indicate to me that you're ready to rock and roll and ready to jump on the queue and talk some boxing. Looks like uh, Tip accepted the challenge. Counterpunch. Man, oh man, oh man. Here they go again. Protection, 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 protection. Yo, Cliff, yo, tell me if you own a Suburban, a black suit, some black glasses, a bulletproof vest, and a Glock 19, bro. Just, just when you call back in, just tell me if you own all that apparel. Uh, listen, bro. <laughs> the Tia Fimo. The Tia Fimo not say on that IFL. Uh, 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 on an IFL video that they had a meeting set up with Bob Arum. The Tia Fimo out his own mouth. Not not say, hey, yo, I called, I hit Devin Haney up directly. Did, did, did Devin Haney himself not jump on TBV and, and, and then tell the, then tell the, the, the TBV world that, yo, I, I, I thought he was drunk. I, I, I thought he was drunk. Like, come on, bro. 
Hey man, Devin is a bluff, bro. Devin is a bluff. Y'all know he's a bluff, and y'all gonna keep protecting the man from being a fucking bluff, bro. That's all it is. And you can't take you, yo, bro. First of all, you can't send take no offer, dog. Like let's stop the cap. And then another thing, Cliff. All right, if he had twenty mil for Tate, why he ain't had twenty mil for Tia Fimo, bro? See, you see that? You see that, Cliff? You see how you get you, you just just connect the dots if you really want to fight? If you got twenty mil for Tate and you want to fight Tia Fimo too so bad, why 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 did you hit up Turkey and be like, yo, can we get the twenty mil for Tia Fimo? Why, why can't Come on, man. How the fuck Tio deserves nah, twenty nah, mil? Nah. Why you why you why, why you jumping off the, the so fucking bridge right jumping now? Jumping off the rails? What do you mean? Tio Tio ain't be two lineal champions? Twenty Come million, on, bro? bro? See, Yo, like look at, everything, look, look at everything. Look at everything, Crawford. It, was, it, it wasn't. It wasn't Devin. Yes. It wasn't Devin. No. It was Tank no. getting twenty, no. bro. Stop no. the cap. All right, so hey, whatever. You got your call. I'm gonna do you. The next time you, hey, listen. The next time you ask Bill and Dad when they jump on, ask them how much they were trying to get. Ask them how much they were trying to get. See, they trying to play ASAP. Man, they, they never sold A-side more than 5,000 tickets, hey, but he bro, deserved hey, bro, 20 million. Hey, bro, hey, bro. And never it's sold like more said, than 5,000 tickets, them, but he deserved hey, 20 ask, million. Just ask them how much they were trying to get for fighting. Do the math. Saudi do, the, Arabia, do, do the math hey, on those listen, 5,000 tickets, champ. All I'm going to say is, is ask them for how much they were trying to get for fighting Tank, bro. They talking about they got the money. Yo, all right, so put the money up for Tiafimo, man. Y'all got to be playing games, bro. Like the world don't see this shit. Man, yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, y'all on this protection program when it comes to this boy. That's why he's not gonna grow. He gonna be, he gonna be stuck in him. He gonna be stuck in the wind. Call the take out for the next ten years of his fucking career. Stuck being limbo. Come on, dog. Stop that shit, man. If he, if he, if he connected with the Saudis and they got the money, he can make the TO fight happen. We ain't gotta wait uh four to five years. Shit. And then to the to the person who super chat four to five years, bro. Shit is damn near about to be five years. Like so, so what? So what are we waiting on? Like, come on, bro. They gonna move off Mario's, but they don't want to move off of Boots. Like, bro, y'all, man, I, I ain't about to keep playing these games, y'all, man. Please, please don't, man. We, we the ones don't want to hear that weird shit you talking. <sighs> shit always goes left field, some way or another, huh? Uh, looks like we got a couple callers here. If you want to call in, Discord, Twitter Spaces available. Landline as well, that number to call, 563-999-3427. We got Joseph, Texas. What's up? Hey, Ness, how you doing, bro? What up uh, to the rest of the family? Hey, look, Ness, I'm, I'm, how much the landline costs, bro? Because I'll pay for your shit for a year, bro. Thank you for bringing this back. But, uh... Back to the on the topic though, bro. Uh, I, I I don't mind a, a pit bull and, and Devin fight. I think the the styles I like to see uh, how Devin handled that pressure. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, I think you have to have great legs against a fighter like pit bull because all he do is come forward. And a lot of people will probably say that um, people that fight him are running from him, but in a way you you have to move unless you have that kind of power, and, you know, uh, a lot. I haven't really seen him hurt. I'm not sure if you all seen him hurt, but I haven't seen Pitbull hurt to sit up here and say I'm about to stand there with and, and end up getting caught with something because he's all over the place. Um, so I, I love to see that fight, just to, to how the styles contrast with one another. Um, and as far as Morel going up to 175, like, I honestly don't think he really wants that smoke with, with Benavidez. That's just my opinion. Um, I think David Benavidez will give him that work. Um, hey, thanks for bringing the phone line back again, bro. Like I said, if you tell me how much it is for a year, bro, I'll shoot that shit to you. Because this shit is nah, it's not even thanks about the Benavidez. money. It's not about the money. It's, it's them. Like, you know, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but every day it was like, oh, the lines is down. I just got tired of that not working and, uh, you know, stepped away. And they fucking changed my number. It's really aggravating. Yeah, I see I see that, bro. I'm not going to lie. I've never had luck with Twitter spaces at Discord. So I'm like, fuck, forget both of them, man. I hate them. And, and, like, I never had issues with the phone line. Me, personally, I didn't. Um, maybe, maybe... Uh, you know, whenever it was time to call, you had already allowed it. You had already let us know that it was down or it wasn't working, so I didn't call the note. But when it went down, bro, my heart dropped to my stomach and my stomach to my ass. I was hurt. But, uh, hey, man, y'all have a good day. Have a blessed weekend, man. Be safe wherever y'all at. 
Uh, I'm out. Appreciate you, man. Uh, salute to Mac and Cheese, man. It's definitely Friday. We appreciate you. He sent another dub. He said, damn, ain't nobody going to match me? Yo. Ain't no Shout out. Man. Shout out to Mac and Cheese. On, That's uh, 80 bucks on, already. On appreciate you, that, champ. You know how you said that he said certain things in his first uh, cash app? And then told you that, nah, he ain't say that. Right, right, right. But he texted me. He like, hey, bro, I ain't say that. Don't believe that shit. <laughs> but I said it live. You ain't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he might have beat you to it. I don't know. Oh, nah, that shit, like, I, I literally, like, kept, I didn't even add no periods. I kept it all rolling. You feel me? 90 seconds. Oh, shit. So, oh, yeah. Let me double check because it's two minutes to Mauricio time. Let me make sure I ain't get no message or anything. Mauricio. I'm going to ask him some stuff after you ask him some stuff. Uh, so we got Real Boxing TV, $5. Did we forget that Devin was on 60 seconds. TBB six months ago saying Tio reached out to him to make the fight, but Devin brushed him off? Tio not ducking. Yo, I'm starting to think that Tip is also Real Boxing TV because I see Tip. And I see Real Boxing TV, but I see Real Boxing TV always counterpunch for Tip. And then this is exactly what Tip just called in to say. Lake County, $5. Matias is officially trash. After yesterday's interview, he only wants Pitbull. No boogeyman. A ninja with 100,000 followers taking A-side and sells. Duke. Done. Okay. Optimus Prime back with another five. Clarissa don't know. What she started, only we can clown on Dan. Ten seconds. Laugh out loud emoji. Uh, yeah, man, she can't be coming out. Danny, man, what's wrong with her? Fam, none of that. None of that, fam. Come ah. on. John in Tennessee, go ahead. What you want to say? That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airwaves. Oh, come ah. on. John in Tennessee, go ahead. What you want to say? That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off the airwaves. Oh, come on. Oh, John in Tennessee, on, go John. ahead. What you want to say? Cut that shit out, John. Don't be like that. What about this one? This was my other favorite one. Okay. All right. Still How you... working that out, but, you know, official. All right. What day and where? I'm hot right now. Hold I, up. I, I can tell. Go ahead, yeah. 420. 420. 420. We smoking on that Devin Haney <laughs> pack. Las Vegas? Yes, sir. There you go. Timo Arena? <laughs> Smoking on that Devin Haney pack. Let's see who's going to get smoked, though. What we got? Eight days. We eight days out, Marcos. Eight days out. Uh, I know. I know. You ain't going to be there. I will, though. Where? Haney? Yep. Yeah, you're going to be there. You're going to be there. Oh, shit. We got Cliff with the counterpunch, and then Devin... Cash that in and said, I'm matching. <laughs> salute Mac and Cheese that started it, and salute Devin for following. <laughs> Cliff on the counter. What you mean Devin said, said something there? The real Devin Haney? Nah, Devin, uh, what that meant? I don't want to put his whole last name and shit. My man Devin, oh, okay, okay, he said 20 mind. to oh, match okay. Mac and Cheese is 20. Okay, a fan of the show. I, I didn't really understood what that meant. I was about to say, Devin listening to to us put on for him. Yo, I'm really just calling back just for the victory lap because it's um Ness and Denny, they the body bags you for back. They certify that you on some bullshit. You don't, you just saying anything. Ness had to cut you off. Like, what you talking about that twenty million? Get that shit out of here. I ain't gonna let you pull that shit on my show. And we, we we for the truth over here. We ain't fucking supporting that bullshit. Now, if you make a legit good argument, like you was talking about the drunk phone call and stuff, you you was you was working like as the prosecutor or the defendant, whatever fucking one you are. You was you had a low sign. I was sitting there at the desk looking like, oh, 
right, all right, we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to undo that one. But then you jumped out the window, the judge, good looking nice, and then Danny jumped in there too, like do his two cents saying, Yo, this so this is just a victory lap right now, and I mean I'm running around the ring with my arms up like, Yeah, that's the first time I ever had a face off on T B V and I, I won. It only took one round, knocked him out. Now, I mean, maybe I could get nominated for something this year. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember me, BB. But, yo, um, in case he do call back Ness and he got some slick shit to say and he actually makes a good point, someone sent me a counterpunch earlier, so I should have one left in the chamber in case I got to execute him, you heard? So just remember that in case he come back and then you see me waving my hand at you or some shit. For sure. I, we got uh, Nike Hendrix. What up? Yo, you got me? Yes, sir. Hey, man, shout out to the boxing voice, man. Hey, um, I don't know why these motherfuckers hating on Devin. Because Cruz can't do what he do. Slice Devin. Fuck up out of here, man. Shout out to Mauricio Suleiman, though. I see, see, he see the play of it like it's a Mexican uh, champion from Mexico. And the WBC, you know, ties with Mexico. Devin still got ties with Mexico. He see a win-win. Suleiman see the money out of it. But everybody else hating. And Suleiman see Devin winning, taking that fucking belt. Becoming unified too with the WBC. I don't know why motherfuckers want to hate on Dev, man. Y'all just 420 watch this massacre and still the 140 pound WBC champion, Devin the Dream Haney. Yeah, my uh, people my re uh, reference our interview so I had with Calvin. So Bougie wanted to send in a counterpunch, but like people have done that, Bougie. And, uh, you know, I don't really accept those because, you know, we don't want to silence anyone as much as bad as the call is. As long as they keep it boxing, we ain't trying to silence them, right? So, you know, uh, Bougie is not happy that I'm not accepting his $10, excuse me, $5 to stop Cliff, no, stop Tip from counterpunching in. Oh, I'm sorry. I misread that. So, Cliff, they sending you a counterpunch to talk about something else and not entertain Tip. So, they will send you a free counterpunch to talk about anything else, not to entertain Tip. I thought he meant a counterpunch not to accept Tip's counterpunch. But, yeah, whatever. I messed up. But, guess who has a counterpunch? Yeah. Tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we on the cliff protection program <laughs> oh shit y'all protecting cliff because the man out here getting cooked bad i understand man you know what i'm saying this is a habit scary off man cliff take the step aside money man you know what to do with it take the step aside money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's wrong with bougie dog hey man anyway man uh back to this back to this uh this 20 mil thing man yo check this out bro it don't even got to be 20 mil exact, bruh. Y'all act like these dudes can't negotiate a price. Like, let's be for real, dog. Like, 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 let's not act like Saudi ain't got the money that, that like, they got the money they can negotiate upon. Like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, y'all just protecting. Y'all, yeah, this is what y'all do, man. Y'all don't want to see our favorite fighters jump in that heat, that flame, bruh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let that boy off the leash. Let him jump into the fire. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to see him against uh, the Regis Prograde and the Pit Bulls of the world. I think we all know he gonna, what he's going to do with them. Get in, somebody, get in the ring with somebody who's athletic as you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Get, like, just do that one time, bro. Y'all know why I went on my Gary Antoine campaign. Why well, I'm going to do the same thing for Tia Fimo. I'm going to do the same thing for Richardson Hitchens, bro. Shit, even the fucking Jermaine Ortiz, bro. Just jump in with somebody who's on your level of, of athleticism as far as, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that skill set goes, bro. You know what? Y'all just want to be on the protection program. Let them get the easy passing, bro. Y'all was okay with that Barrio shit, but y'all, hey, but I don't see y'all talking about uh, motherfucking uh, Jerome Boutinis. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all tried to sleep on Thurman, but the boy would have got fucked up had he jumped in there with Keith Thurman. 
Like, come on, bro. Like, hey, man, y'all, y'all dead fans is super funny, bro. Honestly, it's embarrassing, bro. It's embarrassing. Y'all say the man, the man ain't worth twenty mil, man. Listen, Devin ain't an A side. Why he keep trying to play A side? If honestly speaking, if y'all think Dev was an A side, why is Dev doing all the callouts? I'm confused. What what A side? What A side is doing all the callouts? What A side is doing all the calling? Like, the, the, the one that's not afraid. The one that's not afraid. Usually A sides hey, hey, don't man. call nah. out. Nah, because nah, they nah, like nah, to man. pick and choose. This guy is nah. coming for no, the smoke. No, 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 no. No, I mean, no, I mean, so you you wouldn't be happy with with Canelo calling out David? Is what you're telling us? Or just just so we know what you're saying, because we're trying to figure you out. Canelo ain't got a call out. Oh, David, man. okay, okay. Canelo, he, he because he's the A side, he, right? He don't. That's my point. And, but he and, know David. But would you out. be happy with the A side in Canelo calling out David? Is the question. Bruh, it's it's no. Oh wow! Yes, is yes. Then yes, is yes. Canelo cannot call out David because David has already called out Canelo. All Canelo can do at this point is to set the fight. Yes, is yes, man. The, the, yes, the call, is the call yes. out has already the call out has already been initiated. Yes, man. is yes. Like we get you. The call out has already we get been you. Initiated, this is man. you scrambling, man. Hey, come on, bro. Scramble, scramble. I'm not scrambling. It, it's it's just the facts. The mm. call out has already been initiated. Mm-hmm. Did David not call out? Did David mm. call out Canelo? Mm-hmm. And Canelo, Canelo, and what did Canelo do? What did Canelo do? Did David, did what did Canelo, Canelo do? Canelo no, man, did just, what? He said, it's just, it's just, he said, I'm not interested. Oh, oh, so, 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 how, so the call out, the call out, so it, turned it, it, it down. yeah. The, 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 the A side, the A side turned it down. Yeah. So just like Devin Haney, who wants to portray himself as A side, turned it down, right? All right, then. Like, come on, bro. What are we talking about here now? You just, you losing hey, me, bro. I'm, hey, I'm Cliff, lost. man, take that step aside money, big bro. Take that step aside money, man. This guy. He's fighting for belts over here. <laughs> J. Billy Counter. J. Billy. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know what time it is. Get in and hit that thumbs up real quick. Let's get in and ring the alarm for Cliff. That's, uh, excuse me, not Cliff, but Tip. That's three counter punches today. <laughs> And we got Jose with the two, actually $1.99 super chat says, real Jose, tip for Danny, get you Arizona, my guy. Huh? Get is you Arizona. Is he talking about, like, is he saying for, like, for like, me to get like, to Arizona because I said I wanted to go to the band fight? Is that what he's saying? Like, Maybe. Someone else said um, about the band fight, and someone DM me like, "Yo, you going to? I bought my tickets. You going to band fight?" I'm like, "I don't know." And I was about to type, "I'm sure Danny's going," but I, I you know, they're not. Yeah, nah, type I'm. I don't see. I don't see myself. Uh, actually, you never know, right? I, I was about to say I don't see myself missing that one, but you never know. Uh, we got. J Bills, me, J Bills, J Bills. Yo, 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 how we sound now? How we sound now? The audio straight, yes, sir. Nash, you said somebody just sent a two dollar counter punch for Danny, Arizona. Uh, two dollar cash app saying something about Danny. Yeah, I Arizona. think, I think, I think they were saying to get Danny at Arizona T with that two dollars. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little joke, I guess. But uh, man, damn, they like two dollars now. Tip. Tip. Man, oh, it's it's what? It's the inflation now. It's inflation, dog. Them shit's ain't one dollar no more. I remember but, Walgreens uh, used to have the sale two for a dollar. Ninety nine cent. Yeah, uh, we got. You used to get them bitches ninety nine cent. But tip, didn't Drew say we don't want no game bangers on the show today? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not getting it. Like, you, you, you speaking for Tank. But you're not you're not speaking for the big fights to happen. That's the crazy part to me. If I was you, I would just speak because yesterday, did we did somebody say Sabril Matias turned down Gary Antoine? I didn't hear Tip say nothing about that. But you speaking for Gary Antoine and Russell too, even though he about to fight in the Rose Bar. <laughs> Ain't that shit crazy, man? We know that Dev is an A side, but to Tank, he's not an A side. You know, it's level city shit. We know that, and we can admit it. So tell hey, Tank to send an offer. Hold on. Look. You feel me? Pause this time. Go ahead, Danny. Oh, 
pause this time. Yeah, for, for context, uh, Rose Bar is a is a nightclub uh, <laughs> in the DC area. I've actually I actually had my uh, my second going away to Afghanistan at Rose Bar because we would always fly out of BWI. Uh, very nice spot, but very small. Continue. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you know, bitches, bottles, and boxing. You got you got Gary Antoine there. But Tip ain't trying to promote that. He, he ain't trying to promote his smaller fighters. But, yeah, man, we know that Tank is the A-side to Devin. So why doesn't the A-side send a contract? You feel me? He sends a contract to everybody else but Devin. You know, he wants that fight to happen down the road. Come on, man. What? You, you about to be 30 at the end of this year? And like I've been saying, don't get me wrong, I'm a Tank fan, but I'm also a truth teller. I'm also going to come in with a, uh, an objective opinion. You feel me? So, Tank, send an offer. Tip, get your boy to send an offer. CYP, and, and this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to CYP. But when you talk, when you compare Tank to Canelo, you have to know that Canelo paid the cost to be the boss. And yes, I did come to a realization about a week ago. Tank can't move the way he does because he's a seller. You feel me? He paid the cost in, in that way. He does sell tickets. He does have that one-punch knockout power that everybody wants to see, and they'll pay for it. But, dog, he ain't fought the people that we want to see him fight. He, 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 hasn't, he hasn't been in any 50-50 fights, truly, yet. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be 30 at the end of this year. So y'all keep on talking that same shit, but tell him to send an offer. Y'all keep on putting in that work. I'm going to tap back in. Shout out, Kerry G. All right. All right. Uh, we got Will Stay Rolling. I'm pretty sure we went to you, champ. You got a count I don't know about. Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, then we go to you already, champ. I'm about to send the counter now. <laughs> Usually people do it before, but go ahead. My bad. I got you. I got you. You, the know, man. you know I'm good. You good for but, uh, it. Right there it go. Boom. Now, I'm just calling in because we got to kill this whole narrative. We know, as Devin fans, and Devin knows that there's only two fights right now that he's at, that he's after that where he's going to be the B-side. That's Tank and that's Ryan. Accepted the Ryan as the B-side, got the fight made. Now with the Tank fight, we know he's the A-side, so we treated him like the A-side. Got him a $20 million guaranteed offer, and that's before pay-per-view, and, and that's guaranteed. So kill that whole narrative. Then you talk about running. Is Devin not the only one that's fought elite opponents? Is he not the only one? Cause I, I guarantee we look at look at the resume. He's fought nobody elite, nobody. So get your facts straight before you get on here talking out the side of your neck, babbling on. Because when you get corrected, you don't know what to say and you just want to make up some shit. Get that shit together, man. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate you. Uh, looks like Cliff back at us. Cliff. I know I jumped off real quick, but what happened with Mauricio? Keegan, uh, I hit up the, you know, I'm waiting. I don't know. Maybe he's running late. Yo, yo. Can you hear me now? Oh, shit. So Hello? Mexico 11 a.m. is two hours? Damn. So is that one, Danny? Nah, I thought it was Central. Where's he at? Mexico City? Yeah. But go ahead, Keegan. Can you hear me? Yeah. Bo Rogers. Oh, damn. Oh, Bo yeah. Rogers. What up? Yeah, man. Nah. I've been trying to get out. Hey, a real quick, real quick. Yeah. Have, real quick. It's less What's than up? an hour. They just text me. It's less than an hour, but it's at, it's at one, uh, evidently. Fuck. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Hey. 
We here. So, yeah, man. <clears throat> I don't blame uh, the guys for doing what they doing. Pitbull and Haney, I don't want that fight. I don't mind it, but I don't want it. You know, I want to see Devin go and fight guys more closer to his size and height. You know, I want to see him take a real fight first before you just keep feeding him easy champion. I don't think people are easy champion, but I don't think he can beat Devin. And like the other, somebody called and said, that's why people ain't going to really pay to see that fight like that. They think Devin could beat him already, and I think Devin could beat him. But Devin probably should go ahead and he the A-side. Go ahead and send that call to Boots. Go ahead and get him out the way now before he gets started and get the rolling good. Uh, I think that'll be a good fight. Um, Morel, he said go ahead and get, get, get uh, he said go ahead and call out Boots? Yeah, y'all over there on top of uh, match room now. See, Boots left. You know, let him go get his name built up. I mean, I think you shouldn't have, y'all shouldn't have Tank to move up if y'all ain't gonna have Devin to move up. He an A-side now. He done, he done worked his way up there now. He done got himself in position. Terrence Crawford need to go fight uh, David Benavidez. You know, he probably ain't gonna want to do that either. Or fight Jamel Charlo, which I think Jamel will beat him. Really, I wish they would go ahead and let him fight Fedoro. I think Fedoro will beat the shit out of Terrence Crawford. I saw what damn Brooks did to that eye with that damn jab. So I'm pretty sure Fedoro will be ready for it. Terrence Crawford ain't fought nobody like that. He got to wait till you, he catch you slipping, broke down or some shit like that. Then he got there and will try to fight you. He don't, he's so damn happy that Tim, Tim Zoo probably would have beat his ass. Put any of them dudes on Terrence Crawford and get them exposed. Yeah, so Fondora, Fondora don't want that fight. He out here asking for medical extensions to prolong the negotiations. Nose, bro. Did you see all that blood? What your, no, what your nose what your nose got to do with what your nose got to do with your eyes and your mouth? All Man, he, I'm all, not ready to get him all he need to do fight. all he need to do is see the contract and talk about what he don't like. We don't need his motherfucking but I, I believe, nose. I believe, I believe he'll do it. I believe he'll do it. I believe he'll do it. Don't nobody need his fucking I hope, nose. I hope Eddie. I, I hope Eddie well, get that well, fight let, me tell, with let, me again, let me tell. Let me tell you again. Let me tell you again what I heard. I heard he ain't gonna take the fight. The medical extension and all that shit is just prolonging to get the, stripped. The verbal, the verbal, the verbal we did rematch. Ourselves. The man knows. All bro. that shit so, is I mean, just prolonging. Then, they gonna get then, stripped. Then Samson said. Do? Then Samson said. Call if Bud takes the fight, got it gotta be are. fifty this fifty. How, this how we got where we at. This is exactly how we got where we at. Terrence Crawford ain't no pressure getting put on him. He got to go fight somebody. He ain't trying to fight. No he got to fight. Body. Don't you worry about it. It's going to happen in Saudi. We waiting, we waiting for Fundora and PBC. Boots. We waiting for, boots. We waiting for Fundora I and PBC I'm, 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 to stop playing with the motherfucking WBO belt, okay? Man, fuck that belt. Right, we well, need to get Well, them. tell Fundora. No, 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 no. It's fuck the belt. Tell Fundora stop asking for extensions to negotiate and drop the motherfucking belt. Yeah, that's what he should do. He should uh, we got to go. go. That's go the bell. The that's the bell, Bo Rogers. Get that counterpunch money right. So here, here let me say it again because Danny wasn't here. Danny, what, I'm, what I've been told, and you in Vegas, you, you need to go to, you know, snoop it out. But I was told, uh, obviously, from Dora put in his uh, extension, medical extension, to try and prolong the negotiations. Remember, they had five days to begin, 20 days to do the entire negotiation, and announce a fight. He asked for the extension to prolong those negotiations, but ultimately, it is believed that he's going to vacate that belt and Crawford will fight Tim Zhu, who will be elevated. I've been told that the kid Josh Kelly is number one, but being as though he ain't fighting no one, uh, no one in the WBO is about to approve him versus Crawford uh, for that belt. So, you know, we should be getting Tim Zhu in Australia. I mean, in, in Saudi uh, for that WBO. So we'll see if that, if that information is right. Cliff, you should be able to hear me. I'm going to try you mm. here on Twitter. But if it don't work, the landline is open again. You know, the thing is that these guys, they give you like fucking three hours live stream. And you know we do like 30. Yo, is this Twitter back working? Mm-hmm. Yo, the landline went down just to let you know. 
But um, that's what I'm saying. It's yo, back on now. They only give me three albums live, so you got to do every three. Oh, word, word. I mean, this shit ain't a fair fight. It ain't a fair fight because uh, y'all, you, you, you shut that nigga down both times he called because he be on the bullshit. And then a couple callers came in and said, told him like he was sounding stupid too. So that shit crazy. But I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna end him throwing a towel. Let's just look at it like this, yo. Dev, Tio, we both beat Loma. Dev, this, annihilates Cambosas twice. The dude who knocked you out. Now we we already winning at 35. Now go up to 40. Tio's first fight, a tune-up versus a journeyman Mexican that I haven't seen since. Dev's first fight for a title. You know what I'm saying? And he made the he made who was like the number one or two 40 ranked per fighter look like trash. Tio, he's over here losing to Sandor Martin and, and got a gift. Tio, all right, he does something great. He beats Josh Teller in dramatic fashion. Tio, next fight, another gift. Everyone thought he lost to um, Ortiz. Devin, on his second fight, a uh, title defense versus Ryan Garcia, one of y'all contemporaries, one of the four horsemen, or whatever y'all call them, the three musketeers, the chosen ones, whatever the hell they was. <laughs> Devin. Shout out, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Three Devin musketeers is, is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so whatever. Devin is killing them all around the board like he has a leg up on them everywhere. When it comes to opponents, he's beating opponents you lost to. He's beating the people that you beat. He's doing more at the division that you've been at. It, it's just crazy. So that's it, man. Don't call back. We'll do this. We'll do this again tomorrow. We out. All right, Cliff, salute, salute. We got uh this is actually all right, because I'm starting to I'm starting to associate all these different screen names. This is um Big Gucci Nick. Yo, 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 how's the audio sound now? Straight. Yeah, man, getting into this X spaces, man. I gotta. I heard you earlier. I gotta see if there's an update for Discord, man. But honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna be going back to Discord, man. I'm kind of liking X spaces. Um, but shout out to Cliff, man. He got a point there, man. But yo, the one thing I like, um, about Pitbull getting that belt, man. This is what I wanted, man. Like all old champions have passed the torch. Like we just passed the torch to Devin. Um, Roly got that belt stolen, but justice was served because Pitbull whooped that ass and took that belt from him. But now we got all the, the dudes that's been hyped up and all that, man, the, the young crop coming up. Now they got belts, man. And now we can finally see these fights happen, man, because now that they got belts, everybody want to fight you. Like Subriel, everybody want to fight him now. Pitbull, I've been waiting to see Pitbull... Uh, kind of mix it up with the other dudes. Like, I want to see him versus Tio. But, yo, the smartest thing that could happen for Devin Haney next is to fight Pitbull, man. That is the green print right there. I can't believe I just looked at Pitbull's IG earlier, dude. He's up to 1.4 million followers on IG. And, bro, he's got more followers than Devin now. I'm like, what's the fuck, bro? And that's legitimate following too, bro. That's that's from a good fight, good performance. That's legitimate people following you. So, bro, the green print. If Devin gets past Ryan, Devin. You said he got more Pitbull followers than who? Than Devin. Devin's at one point two right now, bro. Damn, really? Two point seven. Two point seven. I'm pretty sure Devin's at. On which which platform? Though? Instagram. Mm. Oh, my you talking about I made a something else? Right there. I might have uh, might have been somebody else. I don't know. Was it Tio? He's up there though, man. He yeah, he I probably got more than Tio. Tio ain't that. He or may, I don't or maybe even think Tio is Tio at a Shakur. mill. I don't even think Tio at a mill yet. But but anyway, man, my point is he's he's getting a little bit more popular than than his contemporaries, man. And him being Mexican, if he fights Shakur or Devin. That's the green print, man. That's nah, you ain't you ain't lying, bro. Fight. Someone tagged me 
in some sort of podcaster's analysis of Pitbull's popularity rise after the fight. Bro, I go on the dude's Instagram who's got the real. He's got 1,900 followers. The video got 850,000 views. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what I'm saying. But I heard the bell on that, so I keep the ball rolling. I keep listening. Uh, but I'm with you. I think Pitbull is, uh, you know, definitely on some Andy Ruiz shit. They just got to capitalize, bro. They got to keep them active. They cannot let what happened to Andy happen to Pitbull. And hopefully that's the case. They say he's coming back soon. They talk about him dropping the belt, though, coming back down to 35. I don't know that that's the answer. Um, you know, you can always come back down for tank and uh, do your thing at 40. But why even drop it? You ain't got to drop it to go back down. I mean, that was them. They said uh, son about getting with the team to decide 35 or 40. I just text Song Gibbons all this morning. He said he's going to get him to me because he don't know Spanish. I said, don't worry about it. We got a Spanish translator. And I'm still waiting to see when he's available. Um, I'm going to have Roberto Diaz, former matchmaker for Golden Boy, on our second show today. Uh, so we could get into the brain of him. I, I really was trying to get him on today because I know Danny wasn't happy with uh, the matchmaking uh, process with Golden Boy now. And he's formerly of Golden Boy. Um, yo, let me find out Espinosa changed his number, bro, because I will be highly upset. Yo, is that is that who you had me hit in Mexico? No, that's Fernando Beltran. Did you speak to him? Because I've no, been talking man. to him via another method, and we're, we're, we're dangerously close to scheduling that interview as well. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get it, you know. These dudes be busy, no. man. The, the number... I have not got an answer on either. I'm dialing it wrong or I don't know, but I called him Mexico, so I shouldn't be dialing it wrong. Word. Nah, I mean, uh, again, I'm in I'm in communications with him. Hopefully, uh, shit pops off, man. We get this interview. Uh, phone lines are open. The number to call, 563-999. 3427. Uh, don't forget to hit that one button if you're looking to get on the line and not just listen. Lake County, $2. Video do look like it's shot with a BT uncut cam. Damn, Danny, look what you done started. We got Quay, hey. the GOAT. The great, excuse me, $5. Uh, At least you know I watched it, right? At least you know I watched it. <laughs> Uh, my yeah. man, yo, that's why Pussy right is a legend in the South. That's it's the same wild. way with us, with Jay Z. We know he spit, just not for us. Check out Roy's. I smoke, I drink song. Check you out understand what he mean by that? Boozy is a legend in the South. It's the same way with us, with Jay Z. We know he spit, just not for us. And check out Roy's I Smoke, I Drank song. I guess uh, the target emoji means it's on point. Um, yeah, he basically saying he from the East and Boozy is to the South what Jay-Z is to us from the East. You know what I'm saying? He spits. He's just not... You... You Midwest, so it ain't clicking with you. You know what I'm saying? And and and, nah, and I'm nah, East look, Coast, so I, it don't click with me. But he clicked with his people for sure. And funny enough, it's like Scarface, uh, bro. I, I wasn't big on Scarface. Like I ain't go around listening to a bunch of Scarface damn. until until uh, Jay did features, and he had he had certain features where I just fucked with him. He did have that one smile for me. I think that was alone, or was that a Tupac feature? Like I wasn't a big Mr. Scarface uh, solo dude. Mr. Nah, Scarface look, on though, a feature, okay. It's funny because coming up, fucked with 50 heavy, right? Heavy. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I met a cat from New York and he put me, like, of course, we like I knew the big J and, and, and Nas, but like, 
it wasn't until him that I really started listening to him. Because, you know, they more lyrical. You know what I'm saying? They, they speak in certain shit. They not really was being played, like, on the radio per se, especially, like, a lot of they older shit, right? So I feel like if you're not from that region or you, you don't get put on, you know, then you probably won't really appreciate it. Word. Uh, Henry Brown, exactly $5. Maybe we should have a tournament in each weight class for Undisputed so that way all the boxers fight each other in their respective weight class. And I don't know that that'll make it happen, though. You know, some people just going to hit you with the belts don't matter shit. Like, we ain't out here chasing Undisputed. We out here chasing these checks. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Back with another $5. Henry Brown says, let the federal government take... Box, take over boxing, get rid of these middlemen promotion companies. Because at this point, it will benefit fighters to have a union. I mean, the union is certainly the answer. Like, I if mean, someone, isn't the co- but no, like of course it's the answer, bro. Of course it's the answer. Let me tell you, bro. If, if no, if, no, no, that's not even what I'm saying, bro. But but I wasn't commission, is, commission is government appoint is, is like uh. Athletic commissions, like the Nevada State Athletic Commission, is appointed by the governor. So I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know if it's a federal, because obviously that's a state thing, and every state has their own thing. But, like, definitely got government involvement, at least within the athletic commission. Were, uh, I do believe that if someone can hit everybody off, you know what I'm saying? Hit everybody off, hypothetically for a year, but it could be shorter with the hopes of this plan working. And that's how you shut it down, a massive strike, a fighter strike. You got to hit everybody off because, you know, if, if, if only a – handful go on strike, they're just going to do what OTX is doing. Get the other dudes to do a tournament and build new names. It got to be a universal strike. So you really got to pay the top so that the top can influence the bottom and have them sit out. Now, you don't have to tell people we going to go on strike for a year, but budget for a year. Shut that shit down. No fighters fighting. We unionizing. Yeah, but I mean, you talking about a budget of at least some money two for plus sure. Billion. And 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 think about how much the zone has spent. Maybe if somebody would have came into the game with that plan, it would have been a long term plan that would have been more beneficial than just throwing two million at the air, two billion at the air That's that they true. do at the air. You feel me? But if you hypothetically hit everybody off with like, what's the average? You know, what's the worst sport? Outside of ours, like that is organized. Okay, women's basketball. No, women's basketball. Women's basketball. Least watch, right? Least watch. Fuck no, bro. The women's the women's college basketball. Uh, granted, no, not college, games. not college. We talking about WNBA. It don't matter, bro. That like they doing sellouts, like yeah, they, yeah. But views, man. I thought that was bad. That changed when that changed. Man. Oh, do they I'll do? If you the say they do, okay. So look, all we looking for is a sport to do bad views, bro. That's all. It's, it's not. It's not that big a deal. Like you know. Okay. Okay. No, I mean, uh, yeah. The the women's basketball they averaged uh in the finals they averaged seven hundred and twenty eight thousand viewers. Yeah, man. I'm a pothead. I don't even know where I was going with this anymore. We went arguing about that. Uh, it'll come back to me for sure. You know how that goes. Smoke weed okay. every day. Hardin, salute. I love yeah, it. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. But the women's college, they just did 18 million viewers for their game. Oh, man, where was I going with this? I hate when Danny... Mm, mm. Can't remember. Talk to me. Can't remember just yet. We're going to be right back with that. James Benitez, what up? Oh, just the, just the guy I wanted to talk to. This guy, This guy's a hater. This guy's a hater, and 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 be careful with your last message to the chat because I can spit facts. Who are you talking to? You know, 
James, Bring him you on. talking to you, James? Tonight. Yeah, I'm talking to James. Oh. Nah, he won't connect. But just sent his little hating messages. Yeah, see, maybe he knew where I was going. What were we talking about before we fucked up and with the WBNBA shit? Okay, he just going to further help me not remember. I think James remembers, and that's why he coming on to say today. Bro, you can't even fuck, man. Danny, you full of shit with that, man. Like you know damn well. Like, hold on. Some of these, hold on. Some hold of these on. Hold on. Don't we ain't even gonna start the time. We ain't even gonna start the time. I just want to get a few clarification right. questions before we go too deep into this, right? Let's go. Let's go. All right. So when you say trash, are you just talking like on a skill competitive level, or were you talking like viewership and attendance? <laughs> Me? Um, you, you, no, I'm talking to James. Except for, nah, viewership and attendance, except for the WNBA finals that occurred last year in 2023, that was the highest rated. Before that, it was shit, right. it was shit viewership. And the, attendance, and the attendance, man, you can probably get a ticket for $5 to go to the Chicago game or the Atlanta Dream game or whatever, man. Like, Well, look, it, I'm in Vegas. Not, really I'm it. in Vegas. So I, don't, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. But in Vegas, they selling out. They, they literally selling out every game. It's not a game. That every they game. literally sell out. Every game is sold out. They just Are sold they out the for the franchise? first time ever. The for the first time ever. Hold on, real quick, real quick. For the first time ever. They okay. just, uh, for the first time in the WNBA's history, a franchise sold out their season tickets. That was the Las Vegas Aces. Wow. Right? Um, okay. I've covered okay. them as media, and I've attended, bro. Now I don't know what other cities like. That's why I said we gotta clarify. But they definitely, you know, selling out uh, core side seats. Uh, you know, Coach Larry Wade, he was a season ticket holder, and the uh, core side seats are a thousand dollars on the um on the baseline. You understand? So, um, a pop. So, you know, they doing all right. They doing all right. Now, obviously. They, they doing all right? They, they not. doing all right for a league that's been around for what? How long have they been around? Since uh, 96? So almost that's a year. Point. They I mean, doing all right? The point. I, I mean, how long have women boxing been around? Because I sure ain't see Layla. I, I sure ain't see Layla or, or Ann Wolfite or, or Christy in their time. So, how long women's boxing been around? Let's let, let's keep you know let's 90, put it out there. Same time, right? Exactly. Yeah. So so what in comparison in comparison to women's boxing, yeah, they doing a, a whole lot better. Yes, a whole lot better. Okay. What 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 women's what women's boxer, like on any level, or or in any fashion, not even in a fight, what women's boxer ha has been seen competing in front of 18 million people? Because let me let me tell you, Caitlin Clark, she's about to get drafted number one in the WNBA. Every fucking team mm -hmm. is moving their game against Indiana to yo, bigger venues yo, James, because of how much demand. Do you even remember? Yo, what's up? Do you even remember why this started? Because this fucker so just want to talk about basketball. Don't nobody care about fucking sure. yeah, basketball. Yeah, he don't, don't want to. He don't want to talk. He don't want to talk box. He don't want to talk box. What? What did we even? Cool. Why, how no, did we get to women's boxing? Was, what was the nah, basis? No, no, no. You were talking about. You were talking about unionized. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be hard to do. I think that would be hard to do because once some of these bigger promotions and or whatnot try to go on strike, you're gonna have new pop ups. Kind of like how overtime just popped up, and some of these smaller leagues just gonna say fuck that union shit and just go ahead and start airing their platform. And with people that are just going to just die just to watch the sport, they're going to just switch over to watching on YouTube or whatnot. That's all it's going to be. So I don't think uh, going trying to union a strike will be effective. But you may you may know more than I know. And Danny, um, how how boosty is to us down south is how I guess chingy is to y'all in the Midwest, man. Like whoa, he just wasn't chingy? For us. Fuck no, not not to us in man, Chicago. I mean, Hell no. I'm keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real, man. You know, the South has all the greats, man. Like we still running the game. You know, we have no, like, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning like, that. I, just, no, I, I don't want to be misunderstood. Yeah. But if you're mm -hmm. saying he's a great Chingy, it for me as a guy that grew up in Chicago is a god awful example <laughs> to define a great. You feel me? So you I was mean, better off saying Chief Keith. 
You was no, I'm not Bruh. even I'm not even I'm not even being funny. You was better off I saying know. Chief P, the guy that revolutionized music. What? What what he revolutionized? What? It wasn't drill music, I was mean, it? How how was it not? Who was I mean, who, I thought who, drill music who before to him took uh, drill music mainstream? Who before him took drill music mainstream? Mm. Mm. I'm trying to think. I'm gonna have to think. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. I'll probably hit you in the chat once I figure that out. But uh, bro, you couldn't hit me in show. the afterlife oh. because the there is no nobody before <laughs> King Sosa. The fuck you mean? <laughs> I fuck. I fuck with your daddy, man. It's all good. Um, no, nah, and again, I ain't mean no disrespect. <laughs> I don't want y'all to take it. That nah, way. it's all love. It's all love, man. It's all love. It's all good. Um, now, now on to the show topic. Um, I think a caller just said uh, Devin's best move would be to fight Pitbull. I disagree. I think his best move right now would be to go ahead and fight, um, fight Santa Martin and get that out the way. You know, get that, get that thing that's hanging over, hanging over his head with that fight. Once he get that, he'll be free to do whatever he wants without anybody saying you got to uphold this bullshit mandatory that he know he's going to one side and demolish. Um, I would li- I would like the Pitbull fight. Pitbull is has more fanfare, what it appears, but more than uh, Shakur and definitely Tio. So it'll be a good fight. It makes no sense for Pitbull to drop the belt. That would be a great unification. That would be another. That would be the green print for Devin Haney because. Shit, I think people actually believe that Pitbull can beat Devin. So that'll fall in line with the green print completely. Um, now on to Dave Morrell moving up. I like the move. I like that he's chasing the so-called boogeyman or the Mexican monster. Um, just as people always try to say David deserves the Canelo fight, Morrell deserves it just as well for being for being a WBA regular champ for four years. I mean, just because just cause you got a WBC regular doesn't, doesn't make you any better than the WBA. In my personal opinion, um, also, um, that's Danny Marco. I appreciate the story time that Marco you did earlier on the show. That shit was wild. Um, Ness, I appreciate the content that you <laughs> always give us. And, <laughs> and and Danny, man, I just salute to you, man. You've been on your shit the past few days, man. I'm fucking with it, man. Keep the same energy, and I'm out. Hey, man. Hey, man, finally got my sleep schedule back, bro. I was so fucking sick for like two weeks. What was wrong? I couldn't sleep. Shit, man. I couldn't fuck. I had a virus. I know that, but not the corona. That's all that mattered. <laughs> yeah, I but, feel you. Yeah, man. Phone lines are open. We got Mauricio Suleiman in 15 minutes or so. So don't I mean, go anywhere. I interviewed him like four or five months ago. How Mauricio. Was, how was that? He's. Have you ever talked to him before? Of course. Of course. Oh, okay. So you know, he's very, he's like a, like a politician, like a very button, like finely polished. You know what I mean? And maybe that's because uh, you ain't know how to get him to open up, man. I didn't say I didn't get, get him to open up. up. I just said get him like out of that politician mode. Maybe. PJ, maybe TJ, not. what up? Nah, you right though. When you say politician, um, I look at Mauricio always spinning. You right. know, you ask him something he just, and he spins it. It's also his like the way he maintains the same level of kind of energy of like very politician energy. <laughs> yeah. PJ, no, saying- what up? I'm sorry, I had to fade it down. My bad. Apologies. Yo. We hear you. We hear you loud and clear. Talk to us. Oh, for sure. Appreciate y'all opening up those phone lines, man. The X spaces was was trippy. But either way, uh, on the topic, Mauricio talking Pitbull with Devin. I mean, I like that fight either way. You know what I'm saying? But as far as, you know, taking Pitbull into consideration, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's too dangerous for where his trajectory is kind of is kind of headed right now. I think he needs to maybe get a fight, maybe two in before he tries to unify that one. Uh, matter of fact, is uh is is Sims is he ranked 
Uh, WBA, is he number one? Kenneth Sims, he's definitely ranked, but he's he's getting dangerously close to inactivity, man. I, I talked to him yesterday. Yeah. He says an announcement is coming. I'm like, bro, throw me a bone. He's like, man, as soon as I can, I will. So we'll see. Man, I mean, well, that sounds like that's a fight outside of Pitbull. But I, I think that would have been a good fight for both of them, you know. Yeah, I mean, he... Sim. He allegedly left the, te the the PBC, but I, I I got a tip that he might be back with him. I don't know, you know. The grass might have not been greener, and he came back. Yeah, ain't no telling. I, and honestly, I would love to see that matchup. I mean, and to build the whole Devin Pitbull thing, you know, I think, uh, you know, that's a nice – I ain't going to try and say tune-up, you know what I'm saying? I ain't – that. I can't find the word. Maybe somebody else can find it for me. But I think that's a good look for Pitbull if he is to, you know, be victorious in that fight before trying to unify with somebody like Devin. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I want to see Devin. Uh, I want to see Devin Tio, man. Keep keep grabbing keep grabbing those belts. That you went through a dead zone, player, player. Exactly. There you go. Yo, you got me? Yup. Yeah, I was saying I wanna see Devin Tio. If they could if they can make that happen, it's been complicated them trying to make it happen over the years, but you know, that's still that's still good smoke there. Um, but if not, I do agree. I can't remember who said it was a previous caller, uh, not too long ago. Said, uh, you know, if, if not anything major on the horizon for Devin after this then go ahead and go ahead and uh, knock off Sandor. You feel me? You free yourself up and uh, be able to, you know, make more plays without getting tied down to that that mandatory situation. But um, yeah, uh, I mean, but you know, I honestly think that Pitbull Pitbull is a dangerous fight for anybody. But if I had to have it go. Uh, my way with how I want to see it again, Devin, Tio, uh, Net, and then go ahead and put Pitbull and uh, and Matias in that unification. I think that's a big fight between them, and then you can go ahead and see what's going on with 140 for real when you got the the best uh, boxer, whoever wins out of Devin Tio versus uh, you know best brawler out of Matias and Cruz. And uh, I think that would be fire. I think that will put 140, you know, even more ahead of the game of where it's at right now. But other than that, man, uh, that's my call. All right, champ. Appreciate you. If you're on the landline, don't forget to hit that one button at least one time so that we know you're ready to rock and roll and we can actually bring you on to the program uh same thing for discord go ahead and raise we see davidian what is up davidian yo good chant you hear me yep Nah, I was just going to say, Danny, shout out to Danny for speaking facts about uh, college basketball and the WNBA. Because unlike some people, we watch more than just boxing. Sorry. But, you know, shout out to you. That's that's, that's all I'm going to say about it. That's my call. I'm at work anyways. So. All right. Peace. Man, God bless. Told you to get your sports range up, Ness. Uh, nah, I don't nah, do those other sports, nah. man. I don't told you. I don't either, actually. I'm with you. I do basketball. And I'm not saying I'm I I don't bring this shit up to, you know. But yeah, in comparison to to women's boxing, so the WNBA is backed by the NBA. They ain't going nowhere. What is backing women's boxing? What is what what is financially Securing women's boxing and 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 giving it TV time and bro ain't far and few between. Nothing secure like what they got going on is all I was saying. 
The phone lines are open. Discord, Twitter spaces, the way to call in. I don't know if the number is done because the three hours are done or if he got it back going. But uh, Mauricio Suleiman is on the way. Should be on in approximately 10 minutes. So get your questions ready. Head on over to Patreon. Any level member gets to ask Mauricio a question. So head on over to it. And then, uh, yeah. Make sure to hit that subscribe, though. I mean, Absolutely. Just sitting there on fucking froze. Yeah, I'm hit not that froze. subscribe. Hit that subscribe, guys. We need that quarter mil. And uh, yeah, we need y'all help. Interesting to see what uh, Mauricio's going to say. You know, Mauricio... Uh, Mauricio is a very well-spoken man, so I'm sure it mm-hmm. won't be nothing controversial. I'm no. sure it'll be a textbook answers for the most part. Yeah, I'd like to like to ask him a little bit about a, about Benavidez Canelo. I mean, I already kind of did, but do it again. You know what I'm saying? Man, look, you know anybody that say. Fuck your belt, and then you forgive them. You know that money is good. So Wait, what you mean, fuck to... your belt and you forgive them? Yeah, Canelo said fuck the WBC, and then they forgave him. Damn, you would say that to so his own people? It's a Mexican-run company, man. You think he'd support him? Yeah, come on, 2015. I ain't forgot. Damn, he said that. That's crazy. Right after he beat Cotto, that's why that's why he he vacated the boat. I don't know that he said he those words. In... What did he say then? I don't know. I asked Danny. And that's pretty much what that's pretty much what it was. There, I'm pretty sure he was in an interview saying that he wouldn't fight for the belt again. But he never uh, said he was. He never said he was in court. Like, he never said that. No. Nah, nah, nah. Well, that's what he said. But it was definitely that. I ain't fucking with y'all. Temporary. He was in court. He was in court. I mean, for a couple years. A couple years. Uh, he was in court. He had just won wasn't the uh, middleweight belt. It wasn't, huh? one, it wasn't one year? And I'm not trying to debate. Like, I just thought it was like, oh, he got in the ring. He's like, yo, why, why are you trying to put pressure? And then it took a year for the, for the fight to happen, no? It was more? I feel like it was two, bro. That okay. I mean, he won the belt in 2015. He ain't fight Triple G till fall, till September of 2017. So, uh. 22 months later. Uh. But yeah, he was in court. What was it? All star or all pro boxing or some shit? He had yeah. a contract with him. Yeah. Speaking and, uh, of Triple G, in, man. He was in court, right? He's in court, and, you know, they suing him for all this money. Like, this already. Canelo, after beating Cotto, like, 2015, like, he's a huge name. And uh, they're suing him for all this money, you know, contracts, blah, blah, blah. And WBC says, uh, you got 10 days to negotiate the Golovkin fight. And mm. he pretty much like, yo, I'm in court. They weren't trying to hear it. So he, like, pretty much, mm, pretty much. You know what I mean, like, like, I'm cool off y'all belt. And then uh, 2016, he had that uh, Khan fight at a catchweight, and then he had uh, the Liam Smith fight at 154. You got to get Triple G on here, Ness, because he never officially announced a retirement, ever. Uh, I mean, it's ob- who, it's kind of obvious, but he didn't announce it. But who wants Triple G? I'm not saying anybody wants it, but I mean, he's he's a he's one of the great middleweights in history, man. Be be you would think he would at least have a press conference, do something. Let's, let's leave that man retired. Hmm. I'm not saying he should fight. I'm just saying, weird how we didn't announce it. Nothing. But so I guess you wanna, how we so do. you want to spend money on a press conference to say you you you're not fighting anymore? Oh yeah, no. It doesn't bro, have to be a press conference. Gotta... It could even be a Twitter or whatever, just an announcement. Hey, you know, career's coming to I an mean, end. I mean, he don't want to he don't want to close no doors on any potential you know offers that could be coming his way. Maybe. 
I know that a video surfaced to him recently. He was promoting some Russian energy drink or something, and he looked a good 30 pounds heavier than the last time we saw him. So um, doesn't look like he's coming back, obviously. And he's, was he, 41 at this point? Yeah, I'm not sure how old that man is. He's about 41, I would guess. Yeah, he's, he's done, but one of the greats. One of the greats. I thought he'd beat Canelo in the first fight, but then I thought Canelo obviously beat him in the second, too. Just like I thought Kovalev beat Ward in the first fight, but then Ward got up in there in the rematch, obviously. Hey, Ness, you ever heard the story on why the WBC stripped uh, Cotto a few days before the, uh, the Canelo fight? No. no. Diga. Diga me. Diga me. Yo, so... Allegedly, uh, there was an individual in Kodo's camp, right? Fight week. Now, why Kodo would do oh, about, this, about, I don't... About paying the sanctioning fees twice? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, he got robbed from so, his own peoples. So, so, so basically... Gave somebody six figures in cash to go pay a sanctioning fee. The individual kept the money. The money never made it to Mauricio. Mauricio calls him like, "Yo, what's going on?" And then, yeah, it was it was very interesting. I I, I forget I forget who that individual was, but uh, no, I, mean... I, I I don't forget, but I, you know I don't know for sure, so you know I don't want to say. Mm. Well, it what? had but to be someone. Forget. It had to be someone that he was obviously very close with, because you know who the fuck gives anyone six hundred thousand in cash. You know? Why do you guys think the WBC is like the most coveted of all the sanctions? Because bodies? it's the best belt. The fuck. What? What do you mean? The way it looks? Like what do you mean? What you mean? What? What? All the great champions had the WBC. The biggest, I think, I think the yeah, biggest, the, WBA, the biggest, it's, it's, most baddest, most famous champions had that green belt. Well, the thing is, like the WBA is is what used to be the original NBA, which is National Boxing Association belt. That was the OG one back when Dempsey had it, and it just it evolved into the WBA. So why yeah, did but, the WBC come on the scene and just take everything over? Because they just I'm, better. I mean. They knew they was doing one, the rules. Well, no, no, no. Pre- I think I think for one, they was the ones that innovated it, right? Yeah. Like they were the ones, like Ness was saying, with the rules, uh, putting money Constantly behind growing. research and science and growth, and and not just that, but I feel like they were the ones that really went and they little brothered like, everybody. They little brothered everybody. If you haven't noticed, everyone looks up to Suleiman. Yeah, I mean, the WBC belt also kind of... I like the way the IBF looks. That black and gold is dope, but, like, it's whoa, the, the green belt. Whoa, there's something there's visually no about it. There's no black and gold IBF. You better stop this, man. Just just stop. Why Why? Why what? do you do this? What are you talking about? You said, I like the way the IBF looks, that black and gold. Yeah. What black? The IBF is red, bro. That's what I'm saying. Oh, why the does, other one. Why does he do this? Why, oh my god. Why goodness. do you always expose Marco. Your, Why do you always expose yourself as a casual, bro? Hey, good. Why hey, do good you thing have to we, expose me? Jesus, just let us hey, slide. Hey, good thing. Good thing you we mean got the WBA. WBA, WBA, WBA has black that's and right. red. That's, that's right. 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 Good thing. Good thing we don't have Daryl Peoples and instead it's Mauricio Suleiman disrespecting the belt. I know. Like that. Hey, you know why that's you know, good? You know, I don't this know who Daryl Peoples is. You know this president who's coming on the show. You know what color his belt is? He's the president. Yeah, of course. Which one? That's the green belt. With and the, that's why who, it is the face, most prestigious. Whose face it's the is one on that it? you know. Whose Whatever. Face, I like the way the WBA face, looks at this belt. Whose face is on it, damn it? On the belt? You tell Ali me. and Floyd, man. Ali, Ali, and, Ali and Floyd, Floyd, man. And his father. And I think, what's the, there's got to be one Latin dude there. There's got to be. What is it, Duran still? Nah, I'm pretty sure it's just, uh, Ali and Floyd, and then on on the other side of that, you put the champion and his father. Yeah, and the father. And when a fighter gets a belt, do they they don't put their face on it? They they yeah. put their name in yeah. it, right? Nah, they get their face nah. on the WBC. That's why it's the best. That's dope. And then they and if you, the and if you as like, good as Floyd, you end up having your face on everybody's belt, just like Ali. When you win the WBC, Ali's face is on it. 
See, that's why that's that one's good. better. Like, the IBF, they all, I mean, I, look, I wish they just came together. I've said this before, but I guess you got to speak it into existence, right? They just come together because the IBF enforces the best mandatories. They don't talk, they don't play no games, you know, but everybody loves the prestige, yeah, the innovation, and, and, and the growth of the WBC, right? Uh, and the look of the belt. I think that and the, the green belt, yeah, the green belt is the better looking belt, I think. It's, it looks cool. I, but like I said, I like the WBA black and gold but like none of those gold belts are have a real a real precious metals they're all like copper or bronze right uh the fake ones no like the ones that the champions get and i'm asking but i'm pretty sure from what i've heard that they're not real precious metal there's no gold real gold there's no real Bro, silver that gold. shit is 100 percent 18 carat mexican gold encrusted with diamonds and rubies from the aztecan mountains of course look that's him right there so fix your shirt and uh make sure you don't ask if it's fake gold i'm just gonna ask him when did he get the black and gold belts is that cool yeah that'll get that'll get you ejected from the show (laughs) fyi Mauricio! ¿Qué pasa, my friend? How are you? Oh, todo bien, todo bien. ¿Cuánto tiempo, huh? It's been a long time, my dear Nestor. Uh, so I got my compañero Danny's here as well. He just, uh, you cannot see him, but he can hear you and he can see you. Uh, thank you, first and foremost, as always, for taking out the time to come on a Boxing Voice and just talk some uh, good old boxing with us. I'm very happy. I always appreciate the time I follow the boxing boys and the things that you have done and the way you try to keep the fans engaged in this great sport. So I'm all yours. Well, uh, you've been traveling all over, man. You were just in, in Japan. Yes, this year has been very demanding. I was in Thailand. Uh, I went to Rome, wow. London. Philippines, Japan. Uh, I'm leaving tonight again to to go to London. Next month, Saudi. So it's it's a good time, but uh, very very demanding, and takes a, a toll on the WBC walks. I have not been consistent. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little bit difficult. It's funny you say that, man. I've been trying to run every day, and it does get uh, difficult with work. Um. But you brought up being in Saudi, and I'm assuming that is going to be for uh, Tyson Fury and Usyk, correct? Absolutely, yes. Uh, one of the biggest fights in recent years, perhaps one of the most important fights in the history of heavyweight boxing, and I'm very enthused, very thrilled about it. Uh, so I take it now with the relationship with Saudi, uh, is the WBC approving the Bivol and Better be uh, Undisputed fight as well? Yes, the WBC has uh, done the whole process. The fight has been uh, sanctioned. It will be for the four belts, uh, the Undisputed, the fight that the world has been claiming for, and and uh, the WBC will be part of this uh, Undisputed championship. That's amazing news. So... Um... Can we get an update on Carlos Adamas and Jamal Charlo? Full champion status, being elevated maybe, what, anything happening with that situation at 160 pounds at, in the men's division? Yes, uh, it's, it's uh, coming up shortly. Uh, Adamas has lined up a world championship fight uh, coming up in the UK, I believe June 8th. And uh, it's a matter of a couple of weeks. We're finalizing uh, some issues. We have been a strong supporter of Jermal through the whole process. His last fight was over the weight. We're just doing the things correctly. Uh, but Adames has been very patient, has been an example of uh, confidence and loyalty. And I'm very proud of Carlos Adames. That's great news, man. We want to definitely see him uh, finally hopefully get elevated. Um, can you confirm or deny has Terrence Crawford contacted the WBC to try and enforce his champion status 
at 147 to also be the mandatory for the WBC at 54 because uh, the winner, obviously, Fondora has won two belts. He enforced his WBO mandatory status, but Fondora, if he chooses, can vacate the WBO and keep the WBC. Has Crawford or his team contacted to try and be, you know, just like Canelo has done and, and how Bill Haney and Devin Haney did from 135 to 140? I was contacted by a uh, Crawford attorney. Yes. And uh, basically he, he just said that he is going to keep us informed on what the plans are. So okay. we, we have uh, no specific uh, information regarding any petition from Crawford, just that uh, he will be in contact with us. Now, um, I know the WBC doesn't deal in rumors, but again, your 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 relationship with Saudi and the fact that you're going over there, it's 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 rumored that Saudi is interested in in Crawford and a fight taking place over there. Uh, have you been contacted for that? Because again, the the rumor is, you know, they want that first 54 pound fight to be in Saudi uh, under the Turkey Al Sheik. No, I, I, as, as you know, we are not promoters. Uh, we have not had any uh, information regarding any Crawford fighting 154 in Saudi or out, outside of Saudi. I know that Saudi wants Crawford and they want Inoue and they want Canelo and they want Canelo Benavides. There's many things, many news coming out. The reality is that uh, Saudi Arabia under His Excellency Turkey has been a unbelievable movement in the sport. Many fighters are making a lot of money, uh, changing their lives. Uh, there's a great interest in, in the many promotions that have been scheduled and it's a very good time for boxing and this is a great element. I love the way they promote the fights. They do these unbelievable videos and movies and cartoons. So this is something that boxing uh, needs. Innovation, visionary promoters that uh, think outside of the box and not just think about booking airplane tickets and hotel rooms and, and a boring press conference. It's all to the contrary. We're back to the great days of uh, many title fights and, and I'm, it's, it's a good time for boxing. Uh, has anyone from Team Stevenson contact you, contacted the WBC to activate their status to try and fight the champion above? You mean Shakur Stevenson? Sh yes, sir. Oh, Shakur is making a title defense. Title July, yes. But he's July. a free agent after that. No, I, all I know is that he's making a title defense uh, July 6th. Cool, cool. As always, we got a couple questions from the people. First one is from Octo. Greetings, Mauricio. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons that come with being the president of the WBC? Well, the pros is that I am able to be with my father every single day, uh, having his guidance, his uh, memory, his legacy. Uh, that's a beautiful thing that has happened to me in my life. Uh, pros is that I get to meet a lot of people, especially boxers, amateur fighters, four-runners, champions, legendary champions, former fighters. I get to meet people that love the sport from many countries of the world, get to be in many conversations with anecdotes, uh, get to be in a position to make changes for the betterment of the sport. The cons are mostly personal. Uh, takes a lot of time away from your family, from your personal life, from your health, from your uh, mental wellness. Uh, you know, if you don't read social media correctly, you can be very frustrated and angry. Uh, but I feel very confident, very comfortable. Every decision that we take has no personal gain, no personal interest. So I feel at ease when I go to bed every single night. Um, 
how has it been taken over for your dad? Obviously, you know, big shoes to fill, someone that's been doing this for so long. Uh, and, and now you've been in that position for many years. It is, uh, as I said, gratifying to, to be able to, to follow my father's footsteps, his same principles, his same values. Uh, try always to continue. The key that we all learn in the WBC through my father is that the only thing that matters is the boxer. The boxer before, during, and after their days in the ring. So we do a lot of amateur boxing. We do a lot of social responsibility. Uh, we do a lot of taking care of our own after they retire. And, and we, we get a handful. Every single day are so many things happening all over the world that uh, you cannot be one moment. You know, boxing is worldwide. So I get calls from the Orient, from Africa, from Europe, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, midnight, early in the morning. It's a full, full uh, blown activity that uh, requires full attention and nonstop uh, devotion and passion for it. I got Ruin of 504 New Orleans. He says, uh, what made the WBC change its mind, allowing Better Be Even Bivol for Undisputed Fight to go forward? It is not that we change our mind whatsoever. Um, basically, the key is this is a, the world claiming for this fight. Uh, we did take the specifics in consideration. Uh, Bivol is, is uh, Kiss Kristan uh, national and Beteriev Canadian. I don't want to get into anything that is not necessary. The fight is on. We are proudly uh, sanctioning such fight for the Undisputed, which is the world that has wanted to be, uh, to see this fight. And the WBC is going to make a huge donation to the Ukraine uh, from this fight. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit on our conversation before you got on? Uh, my co-host Marco with a K was uh, saying, how and when did the WBC become the most prestigious belt when it, the WBA was around first? Now, I know you're not here to take shots at other sanctioning bodies, but how do you feel you guys surpassed everyone else if you do feel that way? I, I do feel that way, but on our own way. Uh, I don't talk about any others. I just uh, pride of what the WBC does and has been doing for many, many years. Um, the WBC was formed back in 1963, and it was clear, uh, especially when my father was elected in 1975, he accepted the election with the condition that he was given full authority by the board to go out and really make changes. Uh, the WBC is not just making rankings and sanctioning fights. Since the 70s, we started investing a lot of money in research. Uh, in UCLA, the WBC donated $1 million. At that time, 1978, it's a lot of money. And from the studies, the preliminary studies that came out, the government proceeded and gave $50 million to UCLA to continue with those studies. What came out is a protocol that today is used in all emergency rooms in the world, in all uh, armed forces protocols for head injuries. And the information that came out made the WBC uh, be aware of, of what was happening in the brain of the fighters. Why were fighters getting hurt? Why fighters were dying? Why fighters were talking to the walls after they retired? So the WBC has taken many changes, like uh, from 15 to 12 rounds. Now all uh, affiliated titles are 10 rounds. Even we accept eight round fights. Uh, the weigh-in before was the day of the fight. Now it's a day before. The gloves, the ring, the ropes, many things. The mandatory studies, medical studies that are 
a must now worldwide. So many things. And uh, we care about the fighters. We care about the fans. We support the promoters. Without promoters, there's no boxing. And as I said, everything is for the fighters before, during, and after their life in the ring. So uh, when you look at the history of the OBC and you understand that Mohamed Ali, Sugar Ray, Tyson, Hagler, Hearns, Duran, Chavez, Mayweather, uh, Canelo, Pacquiao, Roy Jones, all that is the WBC. And I feel so proud that to know that the dream of any fighter in the world is to win the green belt. I have Malcolm in New York City. Why hasn't the WBC mandated Benavidez versus Canelo to happen? This will force this amazing fight to happen and not mandating certain fighters to fight is killing the sport. Well, that's a very popular uh, comment. The reality is that uh, Benavides became mandatory contender last March, and it has always been clear that this March was a time to order the fight. Uh, at the time, Benavides contracted to fight. He's going to be fighting June 15, while Canelo is fighting May 4. So at this time, there's no need or there's no reason to mandate the fight. Uh, we have been in communication with Benavides. He's going to confirm after his fight in June, whether he will come down to 168 or he will remain in 175. I hope this uh, satisfies uh, your question and I'm happy to respond any single one. Did you find it strange that he and his dad decided to move up before you can mandate when it was like days away, wasn't it? Technically days away from happening? No, but the reality is that the big, big, big fights like Benavides Canelo need to take place at the proper time, at the proper conditions for everyone, especially financially. Uh, it's the biggest fight for both fighters economically. And uh, I think uh, Canelo against uh, Munguia is a sensational fight. Benavides against Vosik is a sensational fight. So we are winning with two great fights and with the possibilities of the many fights that, that, that come, come out from, from those combinations. Uh, doubling back to Crawford and his lawyer contacting you. In the event that he did want to activate, I don't know, does the WBC consider a super champion status or is that just a WBO thing? No, no, we don't have super champion. What, what is the proper phrase for the WBC champion at the division below to want to fight the champion at the division above? No, when, when the WBC um, gets petitions from, its, from the champions, uh, we send a voting to the Board of Governors. Uh, and, of course, every case is completely different. So I don't know... Uh, what their petition would be and we will take it and of course uh run it through the board of governors if it has to do with uh 154 which is super welterweight we have uh, an interim champion who is uh bohachuk who just came to mexico city and we have the champion who is fundora uh so we will have to look into whatever petition is made now, in the event, though, hypothetically, I know you don't deal in hypotheticals, but just, just, you know, indulge us for a bit. Crawford wants to fight the WBC full champion. Spence contacts you. The PBC. They want an opportunity. Does Spence get uh, seniority for being a defending WBC champion for all these years in Crawford? He only won it once versus Victor Postal and then won it again versus Earl Spence. Is that something that the committee takes into consideration? A guy like a Devin Haney that's been fighting for your youth titles in every single title? Or, or you know, how does that factor? Every single case is different. So I do not like to speculate. It's very easy to deviate from speculation to having someone... Uh, get that and, and consider it a WBC official position. 
Uh, I do not make the decisions in the WBC. We have a board of governors. Whenever there's a specific issue, we make a case. Usually both sides or more sides have their uh, opportunity to present their case and then a decision is made. Um, so we all understand how big Canelo is for this sport and, and you know, economically for this sport. Uh, but when you hear him say things like, I can do what I want, does it not bother you? Because it's obviously uh, a direct shot at the rules of boxing, whether that be, you know, your sanctioning or anyone's mandatories are the number one contenders. You're supposed to address him. He never fought Charlo. Granted, I love the move to 75 fighting Kovalev, so I understood, but that was a mandatory. It seems like he chooses which mandatory to fight. And, you know, for fight fans, it looks like he chooses the least amount of resistance when it comes to mandatories. Yeardom. Uh, Jesus, John Ryder. Uh, and I can't really even name any more because they don't happen often. You know, it's uh, it's so easy to to criticize Canelo because he's the face of boxing. When Muhammad Ali was fighting, half of the people in the arena wanted him to to lose. Uh, Canelo uh, had an unbelievable year when he won the WBC and unified uh, the whole super middleweight. He defeated three undefeated champions, knocked them out. And uh, nobody says anything about that. Then he went on and challenged Bivol, then came back and uh, defeated Golovkin again. Then fought Ryder in a sellout crowd in a stadium, coming back to Mexico 12 years after not fighting in Mexico, then he defeated easily an, an undisputed uh, Jermel Charlo. Of course, there's many angles where you can criticize Canelo. I do not pay attention uh, to what is said or what is published because I would go crazy if I was to be concerned of everything that fighters, promoters, media, fans say. I would go crazy. We all have our favorites. We all have our... I'm a football fan, and I like the Cowboys, and I get outraged when I see a call or something. So I understand what the fans feel. All I can say is the WBC is a honorable organization. Proof, countless uh, examples to prove it. Canelo is a special fighter, but he's not ducking anyone. I can tell you that. And he does not... Uh, rule. He has absolutely the option to do whatever he wants to do. When he was mandated to fight Golovkin in 2016, 17, he got vacated uh, of his title. So uh, there's. It's easy to to find conspiracy in stories in boxing, but uh, it is not the case. All right, all right. I have uh Mauricio jump in. Yes. Uh well just want to say thank you first and foremost, obviously, for joining us. Uh I spoke to you back in December. You had uh like a Zoom call with uh, a few of the media, and you mentioned this app, uh and that this app would require anybody in the top 15 and world champions to do uh, monthly uh, weight checks. I know you said that there would be uh, a grace period to, to uh, you know, sign up and everything. Is that still in the works? Is that is that going to become a reality this year? Yes, yes. Uh, we're working very hard. The app is BoxMed. You can even go and get it and use it. The WEC has uh, invested a lot of money, time and effort in it. Uh, you can use it for your own uh, medical uh, protection and your your wellness. The WBC is enrolling fighters uh, in which they will have to put themselves their weight 
if once a month so we can monitor exactly they're not losing too much weight to go into a fight uh, there are many other features in box med and uh, i'm very happy very proud it's one of the game changers but uh with technology takes time takes uh, uh education to the fighters that's why we have that grace period but we're moving along very very well mauricio you, just and then oh. you can find it you can find it in android and in uh, App, uh apple as well perfect um and that's box med once again um and then i wanted to ask you about um here it is box about med. about the belt at 140 and specifically sandor martin can you can you give us some clarity on when he because i know that was technically uh regis's mandatory can you give us some clarity on 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 when he became mandatory and just the status of that situation yes yeah, sandor martin was uh, mandatory in the convention uh haney took precedent to fight against um progress the winner uh was committed to fight against sandor martin and when Haney against Ryan was made, Sandor Martin entered in a step aside agreement. So the winner of Haney against Ryan Garcia coming up next week is uh, obligated to fight Sandor Martin next. So, and, and this was at the last convention you're saying? Yes. The convention okay, so they would have basically to the end of the year to make that to make that defense or close to no the winner of ryan garcia and haney must fight sandor martin by when though is there a time is there is there a time period or or does it not matter as long as it happens this year well they the winner will have uh, some time to celebrate the victory and then we go back to business and we order the fight okay okay thank you thank uh, you just to go back to your thoughts you know we spoke how the people the fans and the fighters believe that the wbc is the most prestigious but amongst the people and uh fans and fighters uh, we believe the IBF is the strictest when it comes to mandatories. Uh, they seem to be the only ones that truly enforce a mandatory, regardless of how popular, quote-unquote, a fighter is. Uh, you've seen them strip just about everyone, Canelo included. Uh, that's not the case with the WBA and the WBC. You guys, you know, are more lenient for whatever reasons the fighter petitions you consider it uh does that bother you that the ibf has that one up on you that's that doesn't mean they have one up on anybody we have to service boxing uh what good does it do to strip a fighter uh for whatever reason i, I don't like stripping fighters whatsoever uh, we have the absolute flexibility under our rules to try to find the best solution and the best mediation to get the biggest fights as possible. It is a very wrong interpretation by saying that the, the one that strips fighters is uh, doing their job. I'm not talking about any other organization. I'm just talking about the WBC. We take every single case separately because in boxing you have injuries, you have uh, legal disputes, you have contract disputes, you have personal issues, uh, you have uh, different platforms, different promoters. We have to make a puzzle and construct the most beautiful scenario for the best fights to happen. So I, I completely... Uh, the, in disagreement with that uh, analysis. Can you see the argument of the fighter? For instance, in a, in a, in a Mantis Stanionis, not your fighter. He's a WBA guy just waiting and waiting and 
waiting where IBF would just take that belt. If you ain't going to do nothing with it, we're taking it. You know, if you're not going to defend it. The IBF had this case in uh, welterweight, this with, fighter. With Earl Spence. That's the that's the one case where they took very long. Uh, his, his only mandatory oh. was with Ocampos. But he collected but, like three or four uh, step aside. They did okay. They did good. Why would the IBF strip Spence when he's fighting, uh, leading up to fight Crawford? That's the right decision by the IBF. But what about that what? number one contender, though? Th he that was he's, happy. he's starving for that position. No, he was so happy collecting step aside fees. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, Sa so is Sandor happy? Sandor is, well, he went to see me in Rome and he was extremely upset. And we talked about it. And today he's very happy because he trusts WBC. All right. So, Mauricio, we're going to, we're going to, hopefully, you agree because, you know, uh, I've learned throughout my years doing this. Obviously, this is a very popular show. So, a few of your fighters are watching this. They contacted me. One in particular, would love to speak to you live and plead to you. Would you be interested? Because I don't want to just send them the link and it be a sabotage. This is a popular fighter, though. Anything. I don't say no to any question. I don't. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. See, the man of the people. No other president does that. Let me tell you. I've had Daryl Peoples on here several times, but he, he canceled so much. No one is like you that addresses the people. We talk about that a lot. You know, you don't care if a person is uh, coming at the WBC. You do give them time, big, little, small. Uh, so I do appreciate that. So the person, the phantom fighter is Cody Crowley. Um, I'm assuming he wants to know why he has to fight another WBC eliminator when his last fight was a WBC eliminator and Mario Barrios gets to fight Fabian Maidana instead of fighting Cody Crowley. But... Whenever he jumps on, I guess we'll find out his true intentions. But you can answer that in the meantime. Yeah, I can wait for him or, or whatever you like. Well, you're uh, right. Let's wait for him so you don't have to repeat anything. In the meantime, we will keep it moving. I sent them the link because, again, I didn't want to send it without getting the approval from you. So we'll have a uh, baby joker. Uh, that's He's next. So, Danny, can you read that one in Spanish so I don't butcher it? I can try. Saludos desde... Guananato Maricio, mi pregunta. Guan, Guanajuato. 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 Maricio, mi pregunta: ¿Qué tal grande sería una victoria de Munguía y Luis Neri para Tijuana y México? ¿A cuál le da mejor oportunidad de ganar? Gracias por todo tu tiempo. Viva México, cabrones. So I, I did all right. I did all right. Either, either one, both. If, if Munguía defeats Canelo. It would be a gigantic victory for Munguia. And very, very unfortunately, uh, this fight in Japan is being eclipsed by this so much activity with the Canelo Munguia and with the Ring of Fire in Saudi. But the fight between Inoue and Neri is taking place at the Tokyo Dome. The last fight at Tokyo Dome was when Buster Douglas knocked out Tyson. So it's a huge, huge uh, event. If Neri is able to... Hello, champ. <laughs> God bless, God bless. How are you, Mauricio? Good, good. Uh, very happy to see you. Very proud of the work that you do with the mental health and, and a WBC ambassador, my champ. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's why I wanted to get on here. First of all, thank you um not many not many promoters come um or he's not he's not a promoter he's not I a know. promoter organization organization sorry um comes up and will answer any questions openly so um i've always respected that about you and i just wanted to ask um for my own clarity my own mental health right i'm a fighter i train to go and fight the best i never want to take a step backwards after i fought for the wbc title eliminator um you know four or five months after there was a wbc interim title 
and I didn't understand because I just fought an eliminator. I should be fighting in that fight. And then there's, if not, maybe step aside money. I don't know. But I just got left in the dark and nothing happened. And then a year later now, um, I just got told that I'm fighting for a WBC title eliminator. And I thought, shoot, I just fought one. Let, let, and let me my next fight was supposed to fight against Earl or uh, Crawford. So I, I, I've just been waiting, waiting. Um, and then my, me my mental kind of got messed up from it. My financial, it's been a year. And then I had to have surgery. So then I went out and now I'm just getting back to the gym and I'm excited and I'm hungry and I want to perform. So I just, just want to let you know that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fight for the WBC world title. And I hope that day comes. I just, I just wanted some clarity on that. Thank you, Champ. And I'm very happy that we're talking directly. Uh, as you know, uh, the, the process always, the organization communicates with the promoters and the fighters have managers. So it is not often that the fighter and the organization talks directly. However, I'm always open. And everything that's, that's, is clear. That, that's what happened last time. And that's why I had a whole bunch of management issues because there's just a lot of misinformation. Um, and I, I didn't know what was real or not real. Um, so the WBC has uh, two types of elimination bouts. One is a elimination, which is between ranked fighters and the winner moves up into a position that he can fight for a final elimination. Uh, the WBC, in order to become mandatory contender, you have to win a final elimination or to be voted by the Board of Governors as a mandatory contender of the division. So the fight you won was an elimination to put you in a position to fight a final elimination. Right. But so now if the guy who I fight in the final eliminator wins, he can't just fight for the title, right? He has to go and fight a, another eliminator two times, just like I did, correct? No, because Chisoko is a silver champion. He already fought uh, for the process to get into a final elimination. Um, the issue here, Cody, is that now we're waiting for you to decide. You are... I'm waiting. And you, I think it's something... Somebody's uh, slow. Okay. Yeah, I think, we, I think it's the connection. We order you to fight Shisoko. The first beat was won by the uh, French promoter. And today, uh, they're still saying that you might fight, fight Ennis. So now we're waiting for you to decide. Yeah, I just, I just didn't understand how there was two, um, two title eliminators to fight for a world title. And then, like, I just didn't understand that. And then, because I fought for the eliminator and once i won the eliminator then other people fought the, for the interim title who i was above so that just i don't know and then now i have to fight two eliminators so i'm just no. i'm just questioning it it doesn't make sense to me okay i thought it was just uh, one and two the, i hope uh, i made it clear that you fought an elimination bout and that put you in a position for a final elimination you had some contractual issues some health issues with your injuries, but now you have the fight for the final elimination, but now it's you who's not uh, in, in position. You might go to the IBF fight Ennis, so we're waiting for you. Hmm. Okay. Cody, have you decided what route you're going? I'm still, I'm still questioning it. Um, the amount I don't know. of I got, I got, I got to be honest here. I seen a video you posted where you said boots. I'm coming. Yes, because so all of a see, sudden the other day I didn't, I had no idea I was uh, just in a whole another WBC story. eliminator. You see how I had no idea. This is it's very, very it happens unfair. all the time to the WBC and the other organizations where we get bombarded by something and at the same time the fighter or the promoter is just juggling other options i understand it's a business for you it's your way of living if you go to the ibf i fully support you and i wish you the best 
but then also understand that we we respect you and we have done everything correct and uh it is your decision whether you fight chisoko or you go on and fight for the ibf with ennis right right okay well you will hear a decision soon my friend we thank will you hear i just all i all i ever want is is clarity and and honesty um because that's that's what i try and bring to the table and there's a lot there boxing is missing a lot of a lot of honesty and and clarity so if i just i just want to keep be, fighting i would be happy to send you all the letters that have to do with all this process where everyone was informed exactly how it was okay thank you very much mauricio god bless and keep strong keep strong god bless you do a great job uh with your with your campaigns okay i respect you so much cody thank you brother i, I got one since we're being honest and clarity here uh the split for the purse bid with the wbc is is more favorable to you if this ibf fight goes to purse bid you get a lower split so how long mm -hmm. when, when when do we know your decision that's that that's that's a very hard thing for me too because i've never been about money i've always been in this sport because i want to every fight i fight i want to be in a position where i have to find a new part inside of me and pull pull that out in order to succeed so i never want to take a step backwards in competition i i've been through a lot in my life i lost my eye last year i went completely blind um my last fight i said i wouldn't fight again unless it was for a world title um the booth opportunity you know it's a third of what they offered me before um so that when it comes down to the mandate it doesn't make sense business wise so i have a personal outlook and a business outlook that are kind of being weighed, weighed on right now but i never want to take a, a, a step backwards or a fight backwards in competition boots is the the highest level he's right up there above me accordingly so I want to fight him. Now, it does not take that much conversation to make a fight happen. I understand there's a lot of logistics and legalities, but you put the fighters in contact with each other and get them to agree on a date, uh, uh, a money, um, and a network, it's pretty darn simple. Instead of promoters kind of, you know, going back and forth, connecting to the team, um, shoot, Boots, get on the phone and call me. I'm, I'm excited to make a fight happen. You want to get your publicity out there. You want to be fed on a great network to to showcase your skill. Come and eat me. Come, come and snack <laughs> on me for, for some food. I guarantee it's not going to be as tasty as it looks. Because oh. from the outside, it looks pretty sweet and delicious. But <laughs> I'm telling you, that shit is going to burn your stomach. And you're probably going to run to the bathroom about 20 minutes later and cough it up or poop it up. So... <laughs> Do what you want to do. I wish you nothing but the best, my friend. I want to fight the best. So I'm right here. We can make this fight happen. You know, let's sign a contract. Let's have a training camp. Let's fight. I'm not that hard to, to make a deal with. Well, I'm sure Eddie will be contacting you, Cody, man. Thank you uh, for coming on. Obviously, uh, thank you to Mauricio for being a good sport. Uh, you're, you're all good, right? Cody, you're all done? Yeah, yeah, I'm all, all right. good. The only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say before I get off here is Mauricio, next time you're in Vegas, owe me a run or a walk. Either way, we're getting those steps in. Absolutely, champ. God bless. Take care. Okay, thank you, brother. Bye bye. All right. Well, that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. See, a lot of things come down to clarity and understanding the rules and regulations of the WBC. I think you should take this time to employ more fighters to go to the convention. Ever since you uh, allowed me to go to that one convention, I've been trying to go as much as possible. And I tell these fighters over and over, if they're not there, you're not learning. There's a lot of education happening in your uh, conventions, not only for the officials, the referees, but for managers and fighters to be, uh, what is the ceremony when, uh, well, the man, when, you, you, when you're mandating? Uh, to me, on the outside looking in, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like it's better for a fighter and his team to be present during the mandating of certain rankings and, and, and ordering of fights. I, am I wrong here? No, of course, because that way you can put your case uh, 
forward and you can explain and you can clarify things. Um, you know, Cole Crowley is such a nice kid. I, I really like him. And But we have to understand that everybody has their own position. Like you are doing a program. You have someone doing your technical stuff and someone doing your commercial stuff and someone doing the the renting. I mean, a fighter needs a manager and a promoter and a promoter needs a television partner and a sponsors. Everybody needs a, a so it's not that the fighter just call the other fighter and make the fight. It's it sounds easy, but that is not the way it is. And is, if you see this case with Cody, it's the perfect example. Now we are waiting in all good faith for him to decide whether he will go WBC or IBF. Very simple. Uh, it is not as, as we all think it is. He's a great kid and I wish him the best. If he decides to go the WBC route, more than happy. If he goes uh, to fight Ennis, we wish him the best. But it's not always the WBC the, that is portrayed as a bad guy because it is not the case. I got B3 out of Virginia. Thank you for coming on TBV. Watching Haney Garcia press conference in New York, Devin looked to be upset with you. He, he may have even snubbed you on a handshake. I have heard you say Devin is a good friend in the past. How is your current relationship with your two-time WBC champion, Devin Haney? Talk about conspiracy theory, huh? <laughs> Better than never. Oh, I spent a lot of time in the dressing room or the green room before the press conference. We talked, we laughed, we enjoy. I love his father. I love him. We have a great, great personal relationship. We talked a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I've seen things like sometimes you're looking some. I, it has happened to me that I'm looking that way and someone goes like this. And you think it's you. No, they're looking on the other side. Or sometimes you think they're going to shake your hand and they want to shake the other hand. Perception, it can be leading, misleading very bad. So absolutely nothing. He was not mad at me. We joked and, and smiled and were very happy. Mauricio, I want to bring this up. But credit to my producer, obviously, for reminding me. But... um. This is something that I hope that you can actually mandate that you brought up uh, implementing, is it six judges for the Fury Usyk fight? I think we need that. Um, you can't see from every direction, you know, depending on where the fighter's at, a judge may only see the back of one of the fighters. Um, where are we? Can you give us an update and how soon can we start to see it? And will it be more than just Fury Usyk? It's needed throughout the sport. You know, uh, boxing, human beings are, in general, with a resistance to change. Nobody likes changes. Nobody likes to explore how to do things better, very unfortunately. Uh, the idea of the six judges has been dropped by everyone else. Uh, so Furiusic will not have the six judges that we had proposed. So the WBC is going to start... Uh, doing only in WBC fights. Uh, we're going to start implementing a, a pilot program. And, and I mean, we have seen so many uh, controversial decisions lately. One judge going completely this way, the other one completely this way. That range is incredible. And it happens, and it has happened to very good officials. Something is happening. And... Uh, there's many things to do, which is training, which is monitoring, which is appointing the best officials for that specific fight. So we're going to start in the jurisdictions that accept uh, uh, this type of uh, trials. We're going to start doing six judges uh, and we'll see where it goes. But uh, it has always been like that. The WBC changed from 15 to 12 rounds. It took three or four years for the other organization to change and a couple of deaths. Uh, we changed the way in to a day before, same thing. Instant replay, we started 14 years ago. 
and still some commissions do not accept instant replay. Uh, open scoring, it's a great success worldwide, but only the USA, a few commissions have used it. Uh, New Mexico uses it, but most of them do not accept any change, especially when it was not their idea. Now, uh, for the instant replay specifically, um, if you made it a rule uh, that any WBC fight, the promoter needs to ask for instant replay by the commission, can that maybe help things? Because we certainly need instant replay. It's uh, it's just not fair. Obviously, it wasn't a WBC fight because it was a prospect, but I remember Lorenzo Medina had a fight on MVP prospects. They stepped on his foot, and they called it a knockdown, and he had the fight back. Luckily, he got a knockout, but, you know... He had the fight thinking, I'm down on the scorecards, when we could have just went to the monitor. Um, so, yeah, how can, how can the WBC... You look in the giant screen in the arena, you see it's different from what the referee ruled. Exactly. We are human beings, and maybe many times the referee is in the right, wrong angle, or the action is too fast. You don't know if the cut came from a punch, elbow, or headbutt. So many instances that uh, you can... You must secure the correct and just decision if it has to go to the instant replay. But some commissions simply do not allow it. And that has nothing to do with the organization or the promoter. Now, just to be clear, uh, it's not a financial burden on the promoter, right? The commission pays the commission officials, even if they're WBC officials, or does the promoter have to do that? Because I can well, see them saying, I don't want six judges. I'd rather pay for the three. Are we talking about instant replay or the judges? Judges. No, the judges, if there's something about May 18 that is not a concern, is money. Is well, the, I mean, I mean, the, moving forward, if we can't get it with that fight, let's try and implement it with other fights. And, and, and I'm just trying to make sure that that's not going to be an issue for a quote unquote promoter to say, well, we're accustomed to paying for three officials. Why now we're going to pay for six? Well, promoters can promote at Madison Square Garden or at the Hulu Theater. Promoters can promote a huge fight or a small fight. And the fees for the judges go accordingly to the magnitude of the event. If what is more costly, paying additional small, it's nothing major. I mean, if you were talking about economics, it, it's nothing to be concerned about. But what is more costly, a bad decision, losing a champion to a bad decision, losing the crowd, losing the sponsors, losing the credibility, or a little couple more bucks to pay for a good system? Very simple. Absolutely, absolutely. You're right about that. Um, since we're talking judges, I I'm sure you're familiar with Joe Cortez. He came out with a, I don't know what the to call chair. it. The chair? The chair. The chair. I think that works. What, what, what's the issue? Because it takes up space? Like, why don't we use the chair? Well, it, it's, it's understandable because... That it, like in tennis, you have a, the judge in a very high chair, you can see better. If, if the judges were situated, because the judge position in ringside, down in the ring, is not the best seat in the arena. Uh, if you have the judges in a high chair, four, five rows back, he would sit perfectly. But how to install those big chairs? Where do you get them? Where do you construct them? You put them there. You take the space of several ringside seats, which are very expensive. You block the view of some fans. I see that is the, the logistics problem. So my idea has always been no judges ringside. Can't we just put them in a room? No ring noise. Because I believe the fans sway judges' opinion. You know, like you said, we're humans. I can lose my focus for a split second and hear the ooze and think I saw something versus being in the monitor uh, in a room alone watching the fight on television without any outside influence. If that makes sense. Good, 
good luck good luck proposing that change oh man <laughs> we, All we, right. we we have a noise reduction uh headphones in our rules we uh invite and we propose to the judges to wear them because certainly it has an influence the crowd noise the people next to you the television commentators you can even listen as a judge what they're saying or the commissioners talking next to you or if you go to thailand they would put four or five people around you and clap every punch that is thrown by the local fighter that happens in many countries but resistance to change my friend that's a key it's so sad man because uh no, i think we're uh, losing people because we don't get the, the 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 like if we see an outcome that should be the outcome but sometimes we watch a fight we think someone won and and, and that's not the person that won and that confusion is ruining the sport uh but go ahead danny i'm sorry yes i just wanted to ask i mean we mentioned tennis and you mentioned like, oh, uh, you know, obviously the money, we might lose money. Uh, you know, I just want to point out tennis, especially at the top level, far more expensive than any big time boxing fight, like by far. But can we consider maybe using tennis venues since they're somewhat set up similar? Can we consider using, I mean... In New but York that would alone, only be two I, judges, though, right? That'll go from well, no, three to no. two. I mean, obviously, now we would need that third chair, but at least, you know, the infrastructure of the venue is set up more. Like, the seating in the tennis venue starts a lot higher because of that, right? So, for the most part. So, I just think that maybe, again, I know you said a lot of people aren't willing uh, to change or are against change, but something has to give. And I think that's a smaller compromise. You know, te there's some marvelous tennis venues. I know you went yourself. I believe you were at uh, Haney Cambosis too, that they did at uh, the Rod Laver Arena, which is where the Australian Open happens. I think, you know, that was a great venue for a boxing fight. Yeah, but, you know, you can set up in any venue the chairs it, it's just a matter of uh, the high chairs will be uh the promoters will be against it and even the fans will be against it if if the judge is blocking you you're gonna start throwing beer uh at him it's a complication i mean there's never a right answer what uh you say you i know you're very passionate and you watch the fight and you can be biased. The difference between the judge watching a fight and every other person is several, several things. You, judge should not have a favorite. I believe in the honorability of the judges. They should be completely concentrated the three minutes of the round. Fans, media, you're talking to your friend, having a sip. Uh, there's a fight in the in the audience or somebody goes, a beautiful girl, you're with your friends, uh, maybe you gambled, you bet on the fight, uh, nationality. Uh, many circumstances are different from the official judge sitting there and the fan, the media, the, the other people. So it's not easy. It's a sport. It's only mathematics. The more judges that watch a fight, the more uh, possibility of getting the right decision. That's it. Math. Mauricio, Mauricio thank you, obviously, uh, you know, for at least being open to the question. Uh, the second thing for me, I wanted to know uh, status on Charles Conway. I know he's fighting next weekend uh, in New York. Um, just wanted to know he is your, you know, obviously he's re representing, um, the WBC, WBC silver. The silver champ, if I'm, yeah, silver, if I'm not mistaken. So just wanted to know he's been inactive. Just want to know, uh, you know, the latest on him. Are we talking about super welterweight Charles Conwell? Yes. Correct. Yeah. We had ordered a fight 
and uh, he had been so inactive that they contacted us and they said, please let me do a tune-up fight first. So he's doing the tune-up mm. fight. Then we will go into what is next. Got you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I got James Benitez in Atlanta. Good afternoon. Why are fighters allowed to remain in their ranked positions when they turn down a title shot? Your, pre your prestigious belt doesn't deserve that. Fighters should be removed or pushed back out of the top 10 rankings altogether from that division if they avoid a fight, i.e., Isak Cruz did not fight Shakur Stevenson. Yeah, it, it's it's a situation that is very complicated. Uh, we ordered Stevenson, Isaac Cruz, for promotional reasons that have did not happen. Then Martin was going to fight uh, uh, Stevenson. We did through the whole process, then that fell apart. Uh, like you just saw, uh, Cody Crowley, the number one contender, may not fight for the WBC. It is conceptually it's easy to see it in reality and injustice to the fighter is not as easy so we try to take every single case separately and particularly and rule on that but i agree with you completely um i have stefan smith in toronto suleiman it's time for three minute rounds in women's boxing Good luck, my friend. Go and try to get girls injured, permanently injured. Do you like blood? You should go to the Coliseum in Rome in the past. The WBC is for safety. Women and men are different in body, in the neck area, in hormones, in the process of uh, the monthly period. So don't come and try to get women hurt. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't be brutal. I respect your opinion, but no, absolutely no. There's no accidents in women's boxing. Very little. Mauricio. Now, obviously, this was a topic that came up uh, when we were fortunate enough to be at the WBC convention a few years back and i'm not opposed to the two minute rounds so i don't want what i'm about to say to be confused but as somebody who is in boxing gyms on a regular basis throughout the country i cannot say the world but throughout the country i never i can count on one hand the number of times i've seen women spar two minute rounds I always, 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 always see women spar three-minute rounds. And let's not talk about the top women because they're sparring three-minute rounds against men. Is there any – I just want the proper information that the WBC receiving. Is this also being shared with the, you know, with the women fighters? Because obviously they spar a lot more than they fight. So I don't, you know, uh, injuries can happen in the gym. I just want them. Are they receiving the same information you're receiving? I mean, they can spar. Women, of course, they can fight three minutes. I'm not saying they cannot. The risk of an injury goes from here to here. That's simple. When you are fighting, you're, you get dehydrated and you get fatigued. And uh, women have a higher percentage tendency of uh, concussion. This is all being studied, and we are not going to put women at risk. Men, many of them spar five, ten minutes. Floyd sparred 40 minutes one time. Of course, they can do it. We're not saying they cannot. This is not about equality. This is about safety. Um, so we will not change unless there is completely medical, scientific evidence that they are not at the higher risk. We will not change to two to three minute rounds. Absolutely not. 
And no, no, you know, and I don't want that. I just want the women fighters to be informed because, again, injuries can occur in sparring, and and I just want you know everybody to be properly, you know, informed on what they're doing because again, I see it happen. I we see had it the happen. Woman. It's not about capabilities, but a safety thing. We had the women's convention, and many fighters were there. When they heard the doctors explained, they were at awe. And they, they said, thank you, WBC, for letting us know. It's just a matter uh, people don't... Boxers are willing to do whatever they need to do to get in the ring and to get paid. Boxers would fight 50 rounds if they were asked to. I mean, look at this. They're fighting bare knuckle. They're doing the slap thing, which is, I mean, it's incredible. So I'm very sorry, but I have a, a meeting. No, no worries. No worries. Oh, did we lose you completely? He must have been running late to that meeting. Word. Well, could have been that Saudi call. You feel me? We definitely appreciate him. The only last thing I wanted oh, to ask. He's back. He's oh. back. Yes. No, I no, just no. wanted to say good day. Yes, no worries, no worries. We seen Muchas gracias, Mauricio. Gracias, como siempre. Thank you. Gracias. Bye-bye. Bye. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. WBC Presidente Mauricio Suleiman. We are going out to what we left behind. We got... Oh, I, I, I just got to say the last question that I couldn't ask him that I wanted to. I, I can't to. hear you because I can't see you. What the fuck? Your ears got to do with your eyes, my All friend. Right. Joseph with the fat $20. Oh, fucking guy. Drop a bomb for the dub. See? He says, matching mac and cheese. Shout out to mac and cheese for starting the $20 match gang. We got Isaiah with the $10. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Shout out Boxing Voice. AB, the baddest woman on the planet. Tell Clarissa her 48 hours is over with the Rolls Royce. It's time to take it back. No self-proclaim over this way. Bomb, Gardner, time emoji. The work going to speak for itself. Mm. That's Danny's burner account. <laughs> I, know oh. it ain't I know it ain't funny to you, but everybody's going to think it's funny because they love trolling you about it, so... Bro, that's our brother, man. Chill out. Word? Yeah. Oh, shit. Shout out to Bumgarner's brother. What up? Yep. Daniel Navarrete, $2, says Garcia is A-side. He call out everyone. Word. Joseph C., $5. Counterpunch, Timboski. Timboski! I don't see him around here at these parts. $2, Lake County. Bro Rogers, calls always end up shitting on bud. <laughs> it's true. Lake County, two more. Lake County, two dollars. So, Bud won't be on this year. Ballot says it's Biden. Mm. Rocky, five dollars. Pitbull has a huge Pit Filipino following because of the Pacquiao connection. Yeah, Sean Gibbons, man. I, I thought I was gonna get him on. You know, they they also wanted some of that Mauricio Fueguillo. See what I'm saying? Lake I, County. What you got, Danny? $2. No, Common. Common is the GOAT from oh. the Midwest over Jigger. I mean, shit, yeah. Definitely. Ew. I mean, I heard, I mean, I, I heard people say like, like Common. Common, at least in Chicago, at least in Chicago, like Common. But... Common. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying like Common definitely was one of them guys in Chicago. But like, bro, what was my we, man? What we was, was having Jay a discussion. We was having, listen, we was having a discussion in the chat, bro. Like, Bump J was like, probably. Bump J to us in the hood was probably what Jigga was to y'all. Like, you know, Bump, he, he just got booked. You know, that's, I felt that's really what fucked him up. But like, at that time, bro, think about it. Early 2000s, yeah, he, he had a fucking McDonald's commercial. He was, he had a fucking song in, 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 in Madden or Grand Theft Auto or one of them hot ass games back in the day. Like, and then obviously, you know, his, his rap, 
really spoke a lot to the street, so people fucked with him. Um, Lake County, though, two dollars. He said LEP bogus boys were kinda on drill for man. I don't know who that is, champ. Chief Sosa at 15 years old put drill mainstream. Like he is responsible for drill. They go to line. Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense, but I did five million. I ain't been rhyming like common sense. Woo! <laughs> oh, boy, man. That boy was always on people's head, man. I tell you. Lake County, $2. Uh, Lil Zooty, is your name spot by Lil Zane? <laughs> James Benita, that's $2. Drill wouldn't exist if not for Gucci and Waka. Get it, what? So has it evolved? Cause I used to listen to Gucci and he ain't never sound like he made no drill music. I mean, I feel like Waka might have. Even Waka shit that hard in the paint don't sound like the drill music of, the, of today. Yeah, like Waka, like closer, like he might be like a step cousin. You know what I'm saying, but. Nah, champ, like, tripping. Um, Julio Guzman, uh, WNBA is averaging losing over $10 million a year. The NBA can't pull the funds because it would be a PR nightmare. Bad business. Um, Yeah, again, I don't know how true that is, champ. I mean, they just got another TV deal, which, I mean, like ABC and ESPN, I mean, which, like, boxing can't fucking get. You feel me? So, uh, like, together, right? Because that's national ABC is, uh, parent network. Julio Guzman back again, $5. Says, Marco needs cataract treatment. GoFundMe is coming. <laughs> uh, start that's, that's Marco. $2. He smokes, y'all. He smokes. He don't want to tell the truth. I think his mom watches the show. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to lie. No, no, no. Hey, I ain't going to lie. When I start smoking... Like, my mom don't watch the show, but, like, my uncles, they're tuning in and shit. It's like, I ain't want them to. And then I'm like, man, fuck it. I don't even get no fuck, if I'm being honest. Uh, Julio, $5. Your uncle just heard that shit right Shout now. Out. He going to give you a noogie when you get back around the town. <laughs> like, yo, I heard you on nah, the show. Nah, shit. Hey, hey, it's funny because uh, my mom, right, when my mom found out I smoked, uh... I guess they at the dinner table and my mom like, yeah, you know, she's just like trying to go in on me. Whatever she's saying, I'm not there. Mm-hmm. And my brother stopped her like, ma, you might as well just stop because cause, cause I smoke I, and I've been smoking before him. I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. you just outed yourself. Damn. Shout out to my brother. Who though. What? Ten dollars. He retracted. Did you see it on yeah, your Yeah, I end? read that. I read that. Oh, it was no, retracted I didn't, on but I, I my. Yeah, I did point out that it was retracted. Wes, ten dollars <laughs> celebrating their first ever super chat on a live stream. That's what I'm talking about. Showing love, yo, mac Just and cheese, love. mac and cheese with the twenty spot. <laughs> Tip Bellis is scared to death of Devin, fade, Devin facing Tank. He'll find any reason to keep away from Devin. Damn shame. Uh, we got Drew. What it did to do? Drew. Giroux. West, welcome to the prospect level. Shout out to West going crazy right now. Let's go. Let's go. Drew. Drew, what it do? I was about to go to J. Billy, but he dropped off. He picking up my fucking coffee. Uh, Bro, I lost my Contigo. Can you believe that shit? Damn. That's tough. That's tough right there, bro. I got to buy another one. This is my third. This is about to be my third fucking one. Unbelievable. Bro, you, 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 you lose a lot of shit, man. Yo, Drew, what it do? Drew, what it do? What's up with you? 
Let me check out over here. Yo, shout out, shout out to the community, man. Y'all, y'all helped us make it all the way to the Mauricio. We thought it was going to be a motherfucking Bro, 12 o'clock. We thought it was at 9 uh, Pacific. That yeah. shit ended up being 10 Pacific. Uh, I'm going to Army Mike because, Drew, you ain't connecting. I don't know what's up with you. And what to is- anybody that missed the show yesterday, I know it was a long one. You might have missed it. You might have not seen it. There was so many fucking interviews. Head on over YouTube.com forward slash The Boxing Voice. You got to smash the subscribe button. It don't tell you that, but you got to do it. It's like the unlock code, right? And then once you do that, once you do that, you click on videos, right? And then once you click on videos, you're able to see the interviews that we had yesterday, right? So Elvis, so first we had Elvis Rodriguez and his manager, Benny. So that shit is on there, right? And then... So Brill Matias heard the shit they was talking, so then he jumped on the show. So you could go check that too. And then of course we got the Dominican Ali Feliz turning pro this Saturday, tomorrow. Corpus Crispy, ESPN Plus was sparring Jared Anderson. That's on there too. And once they send me the thumbnail, I'm gonna be able to upload the second part of Benny because he felt the way. You know what I mean, so he called back in on bullshit, and it all went down right here on the boxing voice. You can head on over, check that out. Yes, sir. Uh, Yo, what's up, TBB? What's what up, up? Ness? What's up, Danny? Hey, what's, what's happening, you? gentlemen? I say, hey, so I just, hey, Sid, so I just have a question on the opponent for Morel that, that you guys have in your topic. Is he a pretty tough opponent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty tough. I mean, he's been knocked out by Better Beef, but Better Beef knocks everybody out. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So he is he a rank pretty good dude? He's a pretty active fighter. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah he's active. Okay. Gotcha. And, and so Canelo too. Canelo's still fighting. Got a top uh opponent coming up, right? He may not be a champion, but uh but um Mungia, he's a, he's considered a pretty top level com- opponent. Um I wouldn't use the word top. Level, I would use uh, the word. You know, he's a guy that multiple mo- multiple people in the division want to face. Gotcha. Okay, he, he kind of a sought after person. He he's trying to push his way up there into the top kind of. Yeah. So, he, so he needs where, to define where, and win. So so where I'm rolling to is is this? I feel like this is going to be David Benavidez's second fight in a row, where he's either. Like against Andre, he pulled somebody up. Uh, uh, Andre was a, is a great fighter, but you know, right after he admitted he was too small, we know David Benavidez was quite a bit bigger and heavier than him. And so now he's fighting uh, Godzik. Uh, I, I know I'm probably saying the name a little bit wrong, but you know, the dude's been retired for several years, right? And then he came back last year and his five, three gentlemen on a rank between one and 200 or so. In the rankings, so so why are we pushing for Benavidez to? Why well, I don't understand why he's taking this route. If I feel like he's picking and choosing, just like he's complaining other fighters are doing. You know, he got a good win over a little man in his last fight, and now he's getting ready to fight a a dude who's been really out of top level competition for what three ish years, if not more. Uh, we talking about Vazdek? Yeah, he's been out of a good competition for about three years. Yeah, so, you know, I, I don't see where David Benavidez is talking about, you know, we got Morel fighting a good opponent. You know, he's also chasing Benavidez. And yeah, I mean, Morel, fight. Morel's fighting a good opponent, but uh, Benavidez on paper is better. He's a former world champ. No, no, I definitely feel Benavidez is better for sure, but I'm I'm trying to understand why he's not fighting these other top-level opponents in his weight class around where he wants to be at. I mean, there's no one left for him to fight at 68, and and the top guys at at 75 are going for undisputed. But, like, what about some of the other big names that people are talking about? Like, in Billy, there's Morel, there's... And um, Billy got a fight, but listen, and Billy... And Billy got a fight, but none of them dudes want to fight each other. Only dude that's willing to fight everybody is Morrell, and that's because he's behind everybody. He only got and 10 David, fights I mean, with no name. I mean, we, could, we obviously see that with David because he fought Caleb and he fought Demetrius. Yeah, but David ain't trying to fight David. Like, he feels David is behind him, so he ain't trying to fight David. Word, word, word. 
and I think that's that's my thing too. Is I oh, feel champ, like that was the bell. That was the bell. Play a play a play 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 play. That was the bell. We got Drew trying again. And then I just heard yo, 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 my, Daniel Vegas. Yes. Oh, he's on. Shout out to Ness yeah. for trying to figure out how to pronounce Guanajuato. <laughs> Good shit, y'all fellas. Mauricio dropped a gem right there. So Adamus is going to fight for the strap in June. I don't know. I, I immediately I immediately contacted uh, the voice of Dominican boxing during that interview. And he says that Adamus told him he's not fighting in the UK. He's currently in Las Vegas training on Silas. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but but like Mauricio also said in that, the managers have the story and the fighters have a different story. So he's obviously talking to the managers. He's more tapped in on the situation. I, I would agree because he told that to Crowley. Like, bro, we have two processes. But I'm – it sounded like the 160 belt's going to be on the line soon. And that, I guess, Charlo's not going to be the champ no more. No champ in recess or nothing like that. I mean, I'm, I mean, if, 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 if you're right and, and Adamas don't know – what his trainer, I mean, what his manager's negotiating for him, it would be Adamas and Heaney. Heaney? Heaney? Is it Heaney, Danny? Nathan Just Heaney? And who's Heaney with? Uh, I think yeah, it's Heaney. Yeah. He's with Frank Warren. Uh, Frank Warren. He's with Frank Warren, correct? Mm hmm And is Adamas, is Adamas one of those guys that he's talking about? Something? I mean, again... That will be up to Eddie's interpretation of pound for pound. You know, in his world, the diamonds could be pound for pound. In his world, if promoted properly, he could promote a diamond. And into regardless, a pound for pound fighter. and regardless of pound for pound, uh, it doesn't mean that he's exclusively only going after pound for pound. Like obviously, you're gonna talk about the big ones, but he might go after those top contenders as well. Um, so, but, but at least we get a movement on that 160 bell. I think that was the most interesting part of the. Are you there? Yeah, you broke up. You know what? Uh, Y'all yeah, yeah, did a poor job not dropping more questions uh, with, with with substance. Like, no one ain't asked, what, what's up with Oshaki? Don't Oshaki got to do, like, two mandatories? Daniel Vegas says no, we get a bet and show it today. Champ. He Ray Vargas was a champ, no? Ray Vargas was a champ. He took it from oh, the yeah, champ. Oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> Daniel's saying, are we getting a, a bet and show? I think we gotta officially move the bet and show to Saturday and just bite the bullet that some lines might not be Close. available. But uh, we just gotta do it early Saturday. There's just, just no do it early. way. Uh, yeah, Danny says he's gonna wake up early. Remember, it's six a.m. for him on that on that time. It's only nine for me, which is well, well, well. I ain't say how early. I just said let's just do it. Early. Yeah, it's got to be that early. Actually, the earlier. better show that is. It got to be actually earlier. Uh, but you know that's difficult to do. But it certainly should be earlier because uh, you know on big fight weeks I do a nine a.m. show. Like I'm gonna do a last minute picks for Haney on nine a.m. Eastern time, six a.m. Pacific Standard Time Saturday morning. And then I'm going to come back live and do the live while you, you know, you're not going. I forgot. Uh, you know, we're going to do the live then I, I, unless you're doing a fight party or some shit. Like not like a live fight party, like attending one since you in Las Vegas type shit. Um, type shit. Luna Glider, $10. <laughs> Salute, TBB. We're the betting show today. Your interviews are always dope. Danny's translations are giving Jerry Oyala vibes a run for his money. Nah, nah. I think Jerry Oyala is not as good as Danny. Isn't Oyala the one that's always been around? Yeah, with Golden Boy. N right? He's been what's with the Golden one Boy, that, no? What's the translator that has the most time? Or HBO. Yeah, so that is him. Yeah, no, ain't he from Canada? Yeah. Nah, bro. I'm trying to tell y'all, the only one that could fuck with Danny probably is Bernardo Suna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, he's yeah, from Canada? Bernardo. I thought that's no, what he was doing. It I, ain't no, popping no, up. No, I'm saying Bernardo, like not Bernardo Nice. 
and audio. he's educated. Audio. Yeah, nah, Bernardo's good. Bernardo's good. But audio. You straight. straight. Yes, sir. Great interview, man. I just wanted to speak on what James said about uh, Gucci and Flock. Danny and Ness, y'all just got to know that trap music uh, that was created down in Atlanta, that was the foundation for drill at the end of the day. So you feel me? Like, I think that's where James was coming from. You feel me? They, they I don't know. The, the, the shit that I, the shit the that I listen to played. that's considered trap, I mean, that's considered drill music today, don't sound anything like that shit y'all was bringing up. I mean, of course. Yeah, 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 of course. But that still laid down the foundation. Like, if you ask Sosa or uh, Chief Keith, who's his favorite rapper, he gonna say Gucci. Or that, that's the most, that's the rapper he took the most inspiration from to, to lay down that drill. So, yeah. Just, 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 just Yo, a little. Yo, I, you know, I ain't even start the bell, but did y'all, since y'all talking this, this drill music, did y'all see the little kid This a drill rapper? I think it's like well, uh, Lil, Lil King Rory C. Or something like that. Nah, I think it's King uh, C with two K's or some shit, bro. That's hilarious. You talking about? He wow. Talking about King, the one that's with finesse. Nah, the one that be with Belanga, the superstar in, in boxing. <laughs> hey man, stop attacking you ain't, that. Uh, you ain't see Belanga get man. walked out by that kid. No, I didn't, but I did hear you say, good thing these 168-pounders are moving up so the real superstar 168 can thrive. You mean, good thing these killers are moving out the division so your boy can boy, swim boy, in the water. Boy, you know I mean? nah, no thumb, man, no thumb, man, no thumb. See, look, see, Berlanga, he had to wait till the, them hitters, them steppers got out the division. So is they really steppers or is they stepping out? Hey, man. Huh. They, they they stepping right now. They stepping they, they on stepping out right now. They stepping one, on out. One, they see Berlanga getting. One, one they Tony. see Berlanga getting one. seasoned. They like, yo, it's time to go. Shit getting hot. Nah, man. Nah, man. Look, Shit get too hot at sixty eight. We moving up to seventy five. Nah, That's what they <laughs> said. Seventy five. Hell nah. See, look, the thing with Berlanga, he has all the tools, but he don't want to use it. Bro, he young. How Them you, dudes you running. Him, he he young. He young. If Tank was young yeah. when, when when Loma wanted to fight him, Belanga, baby. Okay, but still, you you got to work something out in your fights. Like, his Bruh, we about, fight we about still to... looking like he's relying on the power. Bro, because that's what that we got. That he had. Don't be why mad. Don't we got... Yo, did you see... Perfect jab? Did you see all why, the why girls... keep using that effective Did you jab? see all the girls... Fuck, fuck the females. Fuck the BBL. Did you see all the, the girls out there with their phones out? They, yeah. Recording them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, did you see how that motherfucker got lit when he knocked out that dude? <laughs> okay, we following the tank green print, man. Let hey, us be, man. My boy, my boy, listening. He said Berlanga the Ja Rule of one sixty eight. <laughs> yo, yo, Danny, what's the Spanish name for? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Berlanga, oh, Berlanga. Shit. Yo, tank is tank. Berlanga's el tanque. You know what I'm saying? We following the uh, the oh, tanque no, route, man. yo. As long as we get knockouts, tell that boy to put his two. Tell that boy to put everything together. Tell him to use his jab. You feel me? I like the Perry game that he got, but tell him you to put it out, all together. Sam, you like, cut out. You, you, you in his... You got, no, you got I, hear, I hear you fine. You know I think saying? Danny going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got to talk uh -huh. to your boy. You know you down there. You down Bruh, there the next we time. Gonna smoke, we going to smoke McCumbie's boots. We going to smoke McCumbie's boots. McCumbie, the, the fake Jamaican. Okay, who else? And Who's then, next? And then they going to line them up. What's the end goal? What's the end goal? Is it Canelo? I mean... You know, we we ain't chasing Canelo like everybody else. We making our own lane. Yeah. I mean, man, the stuff was going to step in the, the the pretenders. They're going to pretend to be who you think they're going to be. So, you feel me? But, man, I hate to do this because y'all know I fuck with Rwanda. You know we fuck with all boxers, man. We hardcores. We ain't trying to throw nobody away. This is a niche sport. There's only so many top boxers. I love the elite skill, but at the same time, man, tell Rwanda to put it all together. Bro, you, you, heard, yes, you, heard, you heard you heard what uh, 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 Matias said yesterday. He would love. It would be an honor to have Berlan going on the card together with him, bro. Like we trying to make man, history yeah, and movies and events, hopefully. man. We try, you know, we yeah. we we we, we, el tanque. we need that. We need that. We we need that Canelo versus Berlanga and then the Matias versus Cruz. Now we talking. How that sound? Now yes, we talking. Sir, you know? Now we talking. But he 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 has to put it September. all together to get to that September. Point, Let's he, get that shit done. September. Uh, Yo, that's a show. That's a show, that that's a show right there. I swear, that's a show. Put hey, the pressure hey, on let, Canelo. Let you know who brought it up? Put the let pressure you know on Canelo to yeah. make Berlanga versus Canelo. 
with Sabril Matias, Pitbull Cruz on an undercar, a PBC event, Amazon Prime, distributed by the Zone. Oh nah, I, I can smell that. I like see. that. Yeah, he, I like he that. gonna have the Emma Cumbie in three. If he Emma Cumbie in three, we gonna get that man. But y'all keep on putting in our work. I'm gonna tap back in. Yo, we gonna end them in three. But if we go to eight, it'll still be great. You feel me? You feel me? No, like, no. See, you already made yeah, excuses. Man. Yeah, no. Nah, do I'm just saying. That's the time. I'm just saying. Yeah, we'll end them in three. But if it go to eight, it's still going to be great when the Puerto Ricano knocks them out. You know what I'm saying? What up, King? You see, we bringing them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Huh? King, yo. Berlanga bringing them yo. out. Berlanga yo, bringing you, you out. Me? Yeah, you know we hear you. <laughs> Puerto Rico Shout stand out up. The, the monster, baby, Berlanga. I don't, you know, these guys is moving out of the way. Like you said, it gets hot at 68. We ready to go to 75. You know what I'm saying? Shit getting real around there. Uh, shout out to Ness. Bro, he, he got Danny. focus. They yeah. see that he's so and, focused now. Like it, it was, it was Playboy <laughs> Berlanga. It was New York City. You know, the city never sleep, Berlanga. Now we, we, we locked now. in. It's a different we story in. now, man. But yeah, man. Uh, Bro, you uh, ain't seen his new show, Danny. man. My, my man was send him two dollar just... super chats for Danny. Um, Bro, you ain't see that though. Know. He got a TV <laughs> show coming out. It's a reality TV show. They did a commercial on it. It's Damn. sending his girl. He got a reality show. Yeah, nah, what that work? Bananas, what that bro. Work? The stardom is crazy. Bro, I'm gonna I'm send it to you. Him and his girl, they in a strip Don't club. Don't tell me it's VH1, it's like, bro. And, it, and it's like, nah, it's a Spanish network. And okay. It's like, uh, okay, and we it's tapping like, into the fucking culture. Bro, and <laughs> it, he in the strip club on a Monday at like... 1 p.m. Yeah, that's, I mean, we got we doing it for TV. We we building the brand. Yeah, that, yeah, that, you know exactly. what I'm saying? You got to do it for TV sometimes. Man, you know, they throw him a little, little, he little bag the strip for, for the, hey, uh, for the him, cost he... of the show and the budget. You know what I'm saying? Make it look good. That's all. He throwing free bands, man. Free money. Um, but, uh, but yo, stop overpowering my call. Listen, check this out. I like the, uh, I like the Morel hot rod fight, in all honesty. If Morel's moving up to so-called Chase Benavidez. Um, I like it. it. It keeps building in that rivalry. It keeps building that story. You know, he's chasing this guy. I'm moving up divisions with him. I'm going to keep calling him out and talking that shit. And, you know, I want that fight. And he's moving up and he's taking a good opponent. You know, shout out to Pro Box. Again, y'all know I'm Mr. Pro Box. I'm always big enough Pro Box. And, and it shows, uh, again, what they're great at doing, which is keeping a guy like Hot Rod active, getting him good fights. He's coming off a good knockout over a solid opponent, Sullivan Barrera. I know he's old, but... He's been, in the, you know, he's been around for a long time. He's fought a lot of top competition, and that puts him right in line for a bigger fight with a bigger name than David Morrell. And, and if he beats Morrell, my goodness, that's huge for Hot Rod, you know. Um, so, so shout out to Pro Box, and uh, you know, I, I like that fight. I, I like what it's doing. Also, again, I, the fight is a good fight. It's not like great, but it's a good fight, and it's good for the storyline of the Morrell and the David Benavidez. You know, he's creating his own rivalry. He's trying to become his own nemesis to David, as David is that to Canelo right now. Um, you know, he's got he's got this young guy barking, and, and he's at his heels. So I like it. It's good. It's good for David. Because, um, I, like I've said before, I think he should just forget Canelo and continue to carve his own legacy, keep making his own fights, doing his own thing, and, and being his own man, his own fighter. You know, Wilder did it to AJ. He carved his own lane as a, one of the greatest trilogies we've seen and, and great fights with Fury and made a ton of money. And you just kind of, you, you, you need to, you know, stop chasing one guy and sitting around waiting for one guy. You carve your legacy. Um, and that's what David needs to do. And with, uh, with Benavidez, that is, and with Morrell on his heels becoming a nemesis, if he keeps winning, that's a, that's a huge fight for them. They're both young. So I like it. I like it. I like the whole, I like the whole situation there. Um, what else I had to say? Oh, on the music thing, right quick. I just t tapped in. I heard y'all talking about Boosie. Listen, bro, that's my, you know, I'm from the South, brother. Boosie, Webby, uh, before them, it was, you know, the Hot Boys, No Limit, uh, Slip and Slide Records. Like, that's what I grew up on, brother. That's my, that's my music. That's my era. That's, that's what I didn't grow up idolizing Jay and listening to Jay and all the New York rappers. And all. that wasn't my thing, man. Like, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a Southern dude. That's, it wasn't. It, it, that, that's what I listened to, man. So yeah, yeah. You can hit the record all you want. Um, but shout out to Sosa. I heard a little bit about Chief Keith. Definitely got on him heavy in 2011, 2011, and 2012. And uh, yeah, he kind of put me on the shot rack in Chicago and all that. 
But, um, oh, and uh, on the Berlanga Jake Paul thing, I don't know where the confusion came, but when I went to the Jake Paul fight, uh, like the bleachers, I don't know if you remember where you get your drinks and food, that stupid ass setup they got where you got to buy a ticket in line and wait in line and get your drinks and your food. That shit wasn't in there because it was the bleachers went all the way to the wall on either side. And then that, that middle bleacher where our wives were sitting, how you could walk behind that, you couldn't do that as a Jake Paul fight because those bleachers went all the way to the wall. You had to go out either of them side doors and go all the way down the hallway to outside where they had, like, artificial turf. And that's where they had the food and the drink area was outside because they had scaled it up to whatever it was, 5000 I think. Um, and Berlanga's was, like, 3800 or something. It was, like, 1200 less. So um, I think he could sell that out with the amount of people that were in there and the buzz that he's got. And, uh, you know, now that Morel's moving up, that, that's another piece of the puzzle that falls into place for Belanga and Canelo for the big fight for the Puerto Rico-Mexico. Um, so, so yeah, I like it. I, li- I like the whole situation going on. Shout out to Suleiman for coming on and answering questions. Cody Crowley needs some new management. Um, my man sounds like he's not getting the right communication, and he sounded confused when he was answered the question pretty simply. You fought in, in eliminator to put you in position for a final eliminator. Um, and now you get that chance at your final eliminator, and he was like, "Huh? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it." Uh, it's a pretty simple thing. So he needs some some help with communication and and breaking some of these things down when the, when the questions are answered for him. Uh, but I wish him the best, though. And uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all, Ness. Two dollar Danny, I'm out, man. Two dollar Danny is crazy, my boy. But speaking of two dollars, JBX eighty eight. So Suleiman said it's possible they strip Canelo. Absolutely not. Mm-mm. You heard him say it, they doing what's good for the business. Drew celebrating their first ever super chat on the live stream, Ness. Wow. Shout out to Ruben Drag Video fights this weekend on the Jared Anderson undercard. Tell Alberto Bambi Lopez stop ducking and take this L. Ruben, oh, Villa, yeah, yeah, I know Villa. Yeah, Ruben Villa, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, yo, that card is stacked. It's like 12 fights, right? Mm. It's a lot. I don't bro. know how many. Nah, Definitely a lot. a lot of prospects on the card. JBX88 with his $2 says Berlinga in September fire emoji. Morel and David Benavidez missing out. Shrugging emoji. Damn, almost Puerto Rico. Ten, 10 fights, my dude. I'm gonna be tuning in to the very beginning go because count, of go count, go count how many Mayweather Berto had. I remember I showed up for the first one. Tang fought at like 12:30 p.m. Las Vegas time. He was the second fight of the night. Damn. And, in and uh, out. In nobody and out. knew. Nobody knew who he was. He fought like this Chinese guy, you know. But obviously, I know he who wanted he to was. be dressed and, for uh, the main event. Get get all the ladies, bro. But uh. Y'all got to tune in to... The stops Berlanga. He out here in Arizona. Let's go. Fire emoji. Two what? He in Vegas. Arizona? That's what Daniel Vega's saying. Daniel Vega, DM me the name of the gym. I'm going back to the West in a few. Uh, So, yo, I need y'all to tune what? in to my Dominican brethren, heavyweight Ali Felice. He's, he's going to be debuting on Saturday. Four-round heavyweight fight. Jalen Walker, also someone. He out in Las Vegas, right, Danny? That name sounds familiar. Charlie 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 you. Suarez is back. Abdullah Mason is back. Then you got Villa. Consacao was also back. A couple dudes, you know, we don't really know, but yeah, it's a, it's a decent card. Decent card. What you got? Nothing else. For sure. We done? We wrapped up? We all caught up? We done? We done, Ski? Shit. Yeah, we definitely caught up. Definitely caught up. Okay, let me double check the phone lines. Last call for callers. If you want to call in, now is the time. That's GTO, Instagram, and Twitter. Back at you 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another one. Um, I should be having Roberto Diaz former matchmaker for Golden Boy on the show, so maybe Danny should leave me his questions. I got know, you, champ. I know you uh, not necessarily had anything you. for him, but, you know, there, there was an experience that needs to be talked about. Uh, where can they find you? Bring Woke Daddy, and they could find me once they subscribe to The Boxing Voice right here, youtube.com forward slash The Boxing Voice. We need that quarter mil. That's right. 
Arrivederci. Peace. Peace.